Oh, great. Wait. All right. All right. Everything is set? Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So we have then our oh, lantern Mark. control player. Hey, Mark. As well as Jago on mono red. So this is going to be interesting because this is this is yeah this this is a modern matchup that I saw so many times and wanted to like beat my head against a wall. Hey Mark, tell your lovely wife that the cheesecake is ready in the fridge. I took it out of the uh, springform pan and uh, this the cheesecake by himself. Yeah, these these are actually the tokens we have. Yes, which is great. Medicine University after P three two two. Very mature. That's actually his TikTok. I know he's like a so Brandon uh, B Curry is a uh, yeah I said uh, tell your lovely wife that the cheesecake is ready I took out of the spring pork pan all I need to get is cut and no one gets a slice until she gets it so I appreciate that it's a her thank you for your house gift yes um, so yeah so B Curry our uh, our person is uh, has quite a TikTok following yes like several thousand yes um, like even like enough to actually make money um, yeah you know? yeah. Yeah, hyphenated. Those those are our trademark tokens. Uh, Star City has their creature series. We have Doctor PP Poo Poo MD. Yeah. Yeah, forty k followers. Absurd. Yeah. All right, so we are off to the races. It looks like. All right, dude, I do not know who won the roll here. Yeah, I admittedly was not paying attention. Right. Well, we were, we, we they were getting ready before we. Oops. Over here, so. Sorry, guys. Oh, here we go. We're getting the roll in now. We doing. Looks like high roll. Yeah. Yep. Classic high roll. Can't see the die, but that looks pretty big on red deck. <laughs> Look at that side. Yep. Oh, that looks pretty low. I saw one. Yeah. All right. We are not cutting. This is a gentleman's game yeah. for minimal prizes. And that is a good point. We play by Don't Be a Dick Ariel. Yes. Um, yeah. Don't, so don't Be a Dick Ariel. You, you are good to go. Thumbs up, yeah, baby. Thumbs up. So you can ask, you know, there are minor take backs allowed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but basically your opponents get a lot of say in that. We do have several judges here. Eric yeah. Hagen, L3, Stephen Hagen, L2, uh, Kevin Freeman, L1 or 2, one. Mark Kyle Richter, L1, yeah. Mark Caterbury, L1. Yeah. There's there's <laughs> uh, a lot of judges yeah. here. Um, but, yeah, so, but we generally play, like, you know, it is kind of up to the opponents about, you know, general take backs yeah. uh, type things. So. so we have both fetch lands. In here, uh, by Jago, All including right. a lightning helix. Yes, good point. K. Rick, don't be a Richard. Fixes are applied at comp rel. Yeah. Uh, so we have a sacred foundry tapped All for right. Jago. So let's look at some main decks here. All right. So we have grids on the board. Spell. Uh, grids on the board. Emery is there. Stand still main the deck. Band. Yeah. Transmute main. Tez repeal. Ashiot There's Mage. the Servant on turn two. The War and the Mage. So he's going really in on the both the Lantern and or the Grindstone. So he's yeah. got two real ways and a lot of ways to set that up, right, with the Tinker yeah. and the Tez and the Transmute. That's a solid list. That, that is with, very. With two, with two ways. I, I think the problem with Lantern is there's a, enough. Is it, I mean, Lantern's Ooh. really, is it two-card combo, really? It is two. Yeah. It's better as a three-card combo yeah. because you want it to be able to remove two cards. So that, that turn was really good. It was Bolt the Servant and then Faithless Looting. Okay, okay. So yeah. we're already applying pretty good pressure here. So we do have some blue, and, and we have the Snapcaster main deck. So we do have some blue and white out in the main out of um, Jago. Barbering in the graveyard. Right. Interesting. The is, Ilan, that, is that a Snap in his hand? He has Snap main deck, so yeah. very likely. Light at the stage, trying to burn in Rage main. Uh, looks like Shard Volley, Barbarian Ring, and Ramana. There's Ring. the Inventor's Fair from Kyle. We've got a Helix, a Boros Charm that I can see for sure. No Chroma Angel of Fury, which is unfortunate. I was really hoping someone would draft that card. Anderson Shield does make a nice combo. Oh, you know, back oh recall. In, back in Old Extended, I ran... God, I don't even know how to spell this chick's name. Um, she's the Merfolk that does stuff with... Oh, uh, Luan uh, Cephalid yeah. Empress. Back at Old Extended, yep. I used to run painters with this. <laughs> Lava Spike and Skewer. That is really good. And we're going to play a Pixis and tap it. All right, so Pixis is one of the more convoluted cards out there in a lot of ways, right? PY. Uh, PY, yeah. Yep. So we now have an Urza High Lord Artificer on the field for Kyle. So Pixis uh, is each player, so it does give some inevitability uh, in that yep. way, and then you can 
sacrifice it, each player turns all the cards he or she owns exiled and puts the permanents onto the battlefield. Yeah. But you don't really need it. Okay, so we did just get our third mana here. So this is Urza's Jago. Pixis out, right? Yep, Urza's and Pixis is out. So, right, so we see a Helix. Urza's is a four button, correct? Yeah, he, he is a four button. Um, worth noting here that uh, we have Charm and Helix both in our hands. So right now that construct is a 2-2, two, two, so we can still helix it potentially. Uh, Urza being 4 butt is a little bit harder to take care of. Yes. But I fire have Blast, I think is all Yeah, that. Fire Fire Blast he has cuz he didn't get Unholy Heat. No one took Path. Yeah, no one, Oh wow. Path completely in deck. Okay. Yeah, Delicious Lantern. Last time I played Lantern was in, in Pioneer. Against Lantern was in Pioneer. Yeah. And I was running. You never played it yourself? No, I don't care. <laughs> I, don't um, I was running uh, Urza. There's the I was Academy. running uh, Yogg Combo. And I, 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 okay. I, I beat it. Yeah. It was close. Like, it was a close, close match, but I had a lot of, uh, had a lot of other stuff going on. So we have a Urza spin potentially here. We're swinging for one. The Academy, yeah, one, two. We're gonna borrow from. Which is what? Is it four to the head? Four to the face, yeah. Well, oh, there's a chain ten. lightning. Well, he's down to ten. I mean, yeah. that's, that's that's not. Uh, well, he's down to ten. We have a reveler, a snapcaster, a helix, and a chain lightning in our hand for red. So that's lethal. Yeah. If if we get there, that is lethal. I just don't want the biggest swing of the reveler pick. But let's pull her up again just to take an old good look at Bedlam there. I mean, Bedlam's got a full bin now. It does. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, so at this point, we're going to spin to win. Taking a spin on the Urza train. Oh, no, that's a whir. Oh, my. That's a lantern. That's a lantern. Yeah, but, I mean, lantern's not a hard lock. I mean. Yeah. Well, we're whirring for two, right? Yeah, Rebel Master not making Grim the main deck is very sad. Grim. Rebel Master didn't make the main deck? That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Yeah. That's a massive mistake. Yeah, that card's insane. I mean, Rabble Master Max, you know it, right? Yeah. What is it, like 2-6 two, two, game over? Right? Yeah, 2-6 two, two, game over, yeah. 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 Or 3-6, yeah. Yeah, 3-6. Right? Yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Like, somebody, somebody did it, just like, 3-6 yeah, game? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so the words for the Grim, is that just for more mana for I think Urza, that's just think? for more mana for Urza, yeah. yeah. We're, we're on the RNGesus train now. Right. There's a... Oh, slaver. Slaver. <laughs> With a buried ruin out. And uh, Academy. Yep. Uh, we need to helix that Urza or the token helix pretty quick. Yeah. Helix and Urza doesn't do anything. Oh, and token's yeah. too big now. Yeah, token's results. too big now. Oh, man. That's rough. There's a... You talk about the, the RNG is playing out as well. There's a song by him. Swing for four. At least we can't activate... Right now, so we can actually end step helix. How much do we need to activate slaver? Five. You can activate right now. Oh yeah, he has the model. Yeah, the model. Oh, but we get a codex shredder instead. Oh, getting, now, uh, getting greedy. One, two, three, four. But now you can activate it anyway. Yeah. He's got five again. Oh yeah, true story. Well, because you have to tap the. Sl oh no, because he's got academy. Yep, yeah. There we go. So we're gonna activate the slaver. We need so the he's helix. Gonna, he's gonna have to bring helix out. Yeah. You, you just got your because otherwise he's taking his head and he's getting calcium. So we're gonna helix to the face there. Right. So down to five, up to eighteen. Although we still have snap. So we've got a reveler, a snap, and some unknown card that we just drew. And then in the board we have helix, spike, boros charm, which can't be cast. So spike or lightning bolt are the two best targets, because he can dome in for three. Right. And then we still have a Buried Ruin activation for Mind Slayer. Does Buried Ruin go to your hand or top life? I believe hand. Or maybe, maybe play? Hand. Okay, yep. So Bolt to Snapcaster, not bolting to the face. Vexing Devil is what, what he ended what up what with. What did he bolt? Uh, did he bolt snap. snap? Yeah, he yeah. bolted to Snap. That's, that makes sense. Yeah. You don't want the, the Snap on the board? Yeah. You don't care about his life? No. Yeah, you don't care about his life at all? 
your mic slightly in my view. <laughs> so it's kind yeah, of yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, and we're at six now. So we do potentially still have lethal ish on board. Um, we're obviously going to mind slaver again. I have to assume. Well, I'm not sure if I'm Kyle that I'm necessarily milling here because he right. he stalled on three lands. Snapcaster is gone. You know he's got a Bedlam Reveler. Does he and have a way to look level. at the top card of, of the, the library with his trigger combo? Lantern. Lantern. He needs lantern. That's it. Right. Yeah, he right. needs lantern. Yeah, yeah he gets that. I was like, where's yeah. that? I know there's a part. Like, that's yeah. part of it. You know? Yep. All right, so he pops the rune. Or he has the rune. He has man over there for the rune to decide. Yeah, he's got to set aside. He's like, I'm just gonna keep this over yeah, there. Yeah, he doesn't know if he's doing it yet. I feel like you have to. You just I don't go, know. Yet. Well, no, because he may have grindstone in his hand, and if he has grindstone, he can just go for king or grindstone. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Get there. I mean, you know, you're. I, I. The thing is, it's six life. You're under so much pressure. Right. Knowing that he has like infinite ways that he can top deck and get close to lethal. Yeah, we're just mathing out. Of course you do, Mark. Of course you do. Yeah, obviously. Just All right, missing, so we're spinning. We're just playing missing the Doomsday. Game. Yeah. Yeah, he is missing Doomsday. So no one. Doomsday pick. Because it never should be. Yeah. Because Mark Caver is not drafted. And still. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, that is brutal. Oh, man. Yeah, we're just going to sit here forever yeah. now. I mean, you have to pop the standstill. Yeah, you always pop the standstill. You still, have to right. pop it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, that's why standstill spell out of favor. Like, it, it used to be, like, people with hard decisions, everyone learned you just always pop the standstill. Yeah, you yeah. just always pop it. What is that? Uh, in hand? It looks white. It looks white. Um, main death white token. Oh, it's Shrine, I bet, is the main rage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah. Nobody drafted a stifle to beat the standstill. Oh, Ragavan, okay. But we're dashing through the snow. Oh, standstill stand pops. Yep, draw your three. I'll take I'll I'll take an ancestral number two. In my yeah. <laughs> Turns out drawing three cards is always good, even for two. I, I actually highly question the standstill pick, but until I see Codex Shredder, and then that yeah. seems like that's that's pretty sexy. Yeah. You know. Pretty pretty all right, so we are going to refuel. Rip. And he's got fair out, and he should be gaining life off fair. I don't know at this point. Yeah, he's missed his triggers on that. So we're going to mill. Yeah, we're going to let the Varian Devil resolve. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we have to let that resolve here. Darcy. Okay. Oh, he gained the life. Okay, so he's, yeah, so he's, he's remembering. Almost his cat. Yeah, fair is so easy. Like I ran, yeah, I ran fair. I ran the side yep. fair deck in standard, and God, I missed so many fair tricks. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. I ran it in Eldrazi Tron for a while, and I missed a lot of triggers with it too. One of my buddies runs it in uh, one, yeah. of his, one of his commander decks, and it's just like fair is like the most missed trigger. <laughs> so. We still have a Barry Gruen that we can get Slaver back with. I feel like he, I feel like Kyle has to use Slaver here. I don't think he can wait. He's at what seven? He's at seven. He's gonna go up to eight, but he knows there's a Reveler right. in hand yeah. for Jago that he's he's close to dead. So we're gonna Barry Gruen. Oh no, we're just playing an Ashiok. Interesting. Mill a Lava Man, a Mesa, a Mountain, and a Mutagenic Growth. And then Exile the Graveyard. Yeah. Oh, Grindstone. Grindstone, there we go. Yep. That's why why we're waiting. But Servant is in the bin? Yeah, but now he's got to turn. Unless he's got double, double burn yeah. to the face, right? Like, yeah. 
we've got a, a turn here with blockers. You don't attack in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because we've got a 5-5 five, five and a 1-4, so we're right. fine sitting with Ruin and Zona Skin. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this this one's wrapped up then, just about. I mean, I don't know of any two, unless he just goes burn, like, uh, flame, flame Bolt. I mean. Yeah, but how's he drawing two cards? Right. He already, yeah, he knows lo what's looting's gone. Right. Yeah. He knows what's in his hand. Yeah, he knows there's a Reveler, and Reveler he knows can't one cast card now. Hand. So yeah, he's got, yep. We're going to yeah, he knows two cards in hands. He knows the rag. Too, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So three mana. You can go ahead and stone him. Just value stone at the end. Yep. Just probe him. Yeah. No repeat. Sorry. Shredder for a mountain. Takes us. Everyone exile. This is the mill deck Brandon wishes he drafted <laughs> last time. <laughs> and we're untapping a monolith. This this is just like maximum. Yeah. Nick, I think like, you're right. It is good for the red deck just because. I mean, no matter what, is it is it equal to yeah. an incinerate or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean. No, Helix is gone. Um, Helix, Helix was cast on the Mind Slaver at Tart. Snapcaster, or Helix was cast in response to the Mind Slaver and then snapped. Why are you spell seekering me? Okay, there we go. We're just scooping him up because you're DMing at this point. Right. Oh. <laughs> Alright, on to game two. So On to game um, two, then. Let me. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Felix Fire Blast would have been lethal. Oh, that's overall ranking. Where is that? Well, because uh, I think Hayrick is on it outside, changing. Kyle is up 1 0. We're, we're yeah. working on our things here. So. Oh, Lutri. We're revealing Lutri. Yeah, Palm, palm on Blightsteel, having a, literally been the victim of that once mm -hmm. is pretty brutal. Uh, it's, it's just demoralizing, really, for the whole team. Like, it just feels bad. All right, so sideboard wise here, uh, we've got. Bluster Storm dressed down. I mean, down lots of artifact hate coming in. Yeah, I mean, tons of artifact hates yeah. coming in. Um, Welding Jar. Spy Blast doesn't do much. Torpor Orb doesn't do much. Blue Elemental Blast comes in. Yeah. Witchbane Orb, maybe. It actually could. Um, yeah. Hexproof is huge. Yeah. Witchbane Orb, uh, maybe. Elixir of Immortality, yeah. I think, comes in. Um, obviously, a lot of artifact hate. Blood Moon might actually come in here. Yeah, it could. I don't know. Yeah, just to shut off the... Not because you're on a lock out of mana, but just to shut off Academy. Fairy, Ruin, right. and yeah, Inventor, Spare, that stuff, because that's yeah. an extra tutor. Ravel Master has to come in. That card should be main board. Right. I don't understand why it's not. Fury comes in. I don't in think Dress Down life. comes in. I don't think he needs Rise and Shine for this matchup. He's no. not going to switch between aggro. Um, doesn't need Druid. Mm. I, yeah, I think Ravel Master comes in. I think Fury comes in. Pa oh, Padim. Maybe? Oh, yeah, Padim. Because he actually knows, is really good. Like Kyle knows how much uh, artifact hate yeah. he has. So Padim comes in. Yeah, should, for sure. Like, Especially having a four butt, there's very few cards yeah. that will actually and, take care and of And Kyle will pay attention. Kyle's a good enough drafter. He's going to pay attention. He knows that yeah. he drafted a lot of artifact Spot. hate. I feel like Shatterstorm comes in, right? Oh, no, he ended up with by four. Well, and he did not grab Shatterstorm. Right now, that was Cody. He has by force. He has um, Shattering Spree. No meltdown though. Shattering Spree by force. He has Smash to Smithereens. Uh, he has Fiery Confluence. Mm -hmm. He's main deck already. Yeah. So yeah, he's got a lot of artifact. Too much by force. Rebel Master has to come in. I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep saying that. That yeah. card's gotta come in. It's too good. 
Why you're maining lava mans are overwhelming. You got enough dead space for it. Yeah. So it's so four more. It's probably only lava man for you. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Then you know. Courier I like. Courier I like. I, I like that courier. Oh, you know who does good with courier? Y'all know the bitch. <laughs> yeah. <it> sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to do the damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. He does have a few creatures, and I guess there's not a lot of planeswalkers. He's got a Tez, but by the time Tez lands, you're already yeah. Fury should come out. Yeah, I don't think Fury is mana. Yeah, Fury is side. Okay. Yeah. Goblin guide me. Oh yeah. Yeah, War for Witchbane seems super strong here. Yeah. So Jago takes the play here, obviously. Yeah. All right, we are off with the shuffles here. So it was, it was kind of surprising that Kyle didn't just go for the kill when he had it. Um, I'm wondering if he's just, like, forgot that he had it or if he was just trying to do too much at once. Yeah. yeah. Trying to walk back a little bit. Yeah. Take, take that for his turn. Yeah. Although Jago almost, if, if it wasn't for the Mind Slaver, yeah, I think Jago, Jago, would Jago would have won that game. Yeah. Um, which, you know, again, Mind Slaver turns out is good even without Academy Rules. Yeah. You, you don't have to just lock them out with it. You can still just get there. Hand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he was playing around for you. He really doesn't have enough dudes. Um, Ashiok, obviously, can get hit by it. Tez can get hit by it. But it's Ashiok gets hit by it. Yeah. yeah Ashiok it did his matter. initial job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Once once that's done, it's basically... I don't even know if I like Ashiok maining his list. I think... Yeah, I against the tutors and everything. I think yeah. I think Flusher Storm would have been better main. Than, yeah, than Fizzy Ashiok. Upheaval. Upheaval. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> Get me wrong, but it's okay. Cube, uh, cube All Star. Yeah. Upheaval. I think Spyglass is suspend even is just removal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't like Spyglass that much though. The hand the hand doesn't make it fun. Yeah. It's more manable than Needle is because of the hand. Doesn't. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, I love Ashiok. Like, I think it is a phenomenal card. I just don't know in this list if it, he needs a main. Yeah. Uh, though I think a lot of lists it would get too much for you. Ashiok is main just to try to end the matches. It could be, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Mind Slaver, again, it's just good. Uh, you don't you don't need the lock. You can just literally do it once. So we have a Plateau into a Vexing Devil into an Elixir of Immortality from Kyle. Who did not take the four damage off the Vexing Devil, which is interesting. You almost always see just like, yeah, I'll take four damage because that's better than taking 12 from the thing. We have a Darcy. We've got another land. Yeah, I would take enough damage. Yeah. He doesn't have any way to buy back the Vexing Devil. Ooh, smash on the Elixir. Yeah, and there now you. Oh, did he have blockers? I didn't get a look at his hand beforehand, so that's my bad. I'm going to say, land pass? Really? That is rough. Oh, last game. Yeah, last game he did. Yeah, well, last game, oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. We're repealing it. Last game you let the devil resolve, no problem. Yeah. Like, this game, I, I, I... Well, you repeal it, and then you just cast it again? Right. And this time he takes the four. And this time he takes the four. He's just trying to take the next card. But yeah. he's still at nine. Yeah. And then we've got Eidolon. Oh. Ooh, doogie. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, go go get some sleep, Nick. We'll have this up on YouTube. Yeah. And it'll be on the Twitch channel. All right, so Kyle then land, and it looks like he's just in the tank on what he's going to do. Uh, he's, he's behind the eight ball. Behind the Eidolon. <laughs> yeah, he is definitely behind the Eidolon at yeah. this point. That's that is a lot the of smash pressure. The smash of the elixir was really nice because that's yeah. a that's a massive life swing, right? So yeah, it is. It's not plus five; it's minus three. So you're effectively an eight 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 yeah. life life swing there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's huge. Uh, and this this again is why you know as, as you and I have talked, 
this is the type of thing the red deck does in our meta right. that is so different because it has so many ways to apply pressure. Like, okay, here's a spell seeker. Yeah. Fine. Um, we've got an Eidolon triggered here. Great. You're taking two. Yeah. You know, it's just good. And there's a blue elemental blast, but we're tapped out. Right. So you're going to resolve whatever counter spells you're going to resolve. Uh, or you're going to resolve whatever creatures you're going to resolve, and you're going to have to destroy permanent, which right. doesn't feel you're gonna great. You're going to pay three life, two life or three life to kill an idol. Yeah. There's a swift spear. We're going to take two. Here's a Darcy. We're going to take two. And that is so much pressure represented next turn now. We're going to block the swift spear, sure. We're going to do Genic Grove. Grove. Oh, pay dude. two life. Pay two life. Four life. Yeah, four. And this is why I think this red deck could work. It, yep. I think it, like it's Rabble Master's main, and yep. we don't have as much of the splashy stuff. Yeah. By like we have two more creatures to go into this. Yeah. Like I get the idea of the Devon Brother because you want to like you know you play your hand. You want to reload. And, and, the yard and, and it is an efficient dude right. when your yard yep. is full. And yeah. Like there we go. We scoop him up. Yep. We're at one to one. We're going to yep. game three. Yeah, I of the Great Ravel was just bonkers. Yep. I mean that is the like. That series of play with him, like, you get a little greedy, you want to draw the card off the root wheel, but you're yeah. taking an extra four, yeah. effectively. Yeah. And that extra four, and then into the, that, 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 that game, that game yeah, breaking. Yeah, it right? is. It's like, huge. Like, I get what he was doing, um, and trying to draw the card off the root wheel, but yeah. it, I think it's a mistake in yep. this matchup. Yeah. Yeah, I, I told you, Mark. It's great. I, this this deck is so good. I feel. Need some uh, Robert the Rich. Yeah. Need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hex is hilarious, but also since it says six instead of up to six, just dies. Yeah. Hex Sometimes is, if you kill your own dude. Sex is so bad. Yeah. Did I say sex is so bad? No. Sex yeah. Is not, sex is not bad. <laughs> what? Hex is so bad. Yeah. Sex is so bad. Only. If <laughs> All right. So we've got an opener of Ghoul Caller's Bell. Okay. All right. We're, we're on the laner and playing this game, but we definitely have lethal out there. Or lethal in hand. We've got, well, maybe not lethal. There we go. We're going to mill a skewer. That's, well. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. That's a good mill. We definitely have a helix and a bolt in hand. Emery. Oh, there's a Codex Shredder. Ooh, recall, that's right. And Academy. And Academy, yep. We also have a Bolt. So are we going to... We have to Bolt Emery, right? You can't not Bolt Emery. I mean, you get Codex Shredder. Yeah, but if it's allowed to continue for multiple yeah, turns, yeah, it yeah. just gets so out of hand. I mean, if I'm him, I bolt it rather than helix it, too. So we've got two types. Darcy not active yet, but yeah. we have land and sorcery. Oh, no, we're going to helix. Okay. Land sorcery instant, so we're at three. Prevail. So we're checking the land sorcery instant. Deciding on this prevail. Artifact. And we're we have on Darcy line. active. Darcy's good to go on turn two. Yeah. Booyah. So we're doming for three every turn. Yeah. Because I don't want that land. Mill it away. All right, and now on three lands from Kyle. Now, an Ashiok here would be good. Ashiok would be very good. Hopefully he didn't bolt. And then an Emma tank here, because that's a lot. Pressure. So we have a bolt and a bedlam leveler in Jago's hand. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna time walk. Yep. Not servant and not lethal. Just divide in time, digging for a card. So just time, yeah. time walk is explore, as we talked about earlier. Elixir of immortality. Elixir's pop is what? Two. Yeah. Yeah. It's two. Oh, yeah. 
step two, gain five life. Which I think Jago is actually fine with here. I mean, he's able to apply more than enough pressure. Let's go to step three. I'm gonna play a Ragavan. We're gonna dash it. That's a real good monkey. Yeah. He gets a treasure. He does get a treasure, and that's. I think going to be a pretty big deal here because we've got pee -pee -poo -poo MD. Oof, we have a lot of spike and a bolt in here. We're going to fluster storm the spike. We're going to trigger. You were aiming really good for a pod. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> chill, chill. There's no chill in yeah. this draft. <laughs> Nobody in this draft had any chill. Yeah. Not making the same decision. Yeah. I feel like I'd almost rather pop there than drop the fluster. Maybe that's wrong. Oh, there goes Whirr. I gotta wonder what Kyle's plan is with this bell since he doesn't have any way to recur out right now. There we go. We've got a land. Oh, that's a Witch Bane orb. Oh my. Oh my. And a shrine. But he doesn't have four mana for the Witch Bane. So it's true. Inconsequential. Yeah. To be honest. I don't know if you want him to have a shrine. Yeah. Yeah, again, Rage, we're comp the rule enforcement level is don't be a dick. Yeah. With fixes done at comp rel. Um, we're all trying to be friendly here. Oh, we, we are milling witch pain. Yeah, you don't have four. I mean, it, I, you want it. And you've Kadeem. got. Right. And you've got Elixir, so you can reshuffle it. Yeah. Right. Like, Ooh, a Git Probe. That's a good one. That's a free spell. He's just trying to keep him off of plays. He doesn't want yeah. Shrine. Shrine's a slow game over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Boros Charm, all right. <sighs> this is not looking good for No. Him. I mean, honestly. Because we can get Probe. Yep, pay the two life, sure. Honestly, I think this is probably one of Kyle's worst games. I mean, just because Kyle's deck's not fast. Yeah. And he tries, he's not just going to... There's, there's Other than, unless he gets the Tinker yeah. White Steel, he's not going to blow you up. No. Right? Like... And Burn can, as you said in the modern matchup, Burn can play around, you know, the... Yeah. We're going to Haste Monkey. Yeah. So we've got Trading Post, and I can't see the other card, Bottled Koi Flame. So Trading Post gains life, so that's going to switch to yeah. Brain Gain, because they can gain four life. Yeah. Pitch a card to gain four life. Oyster, I don't necessarily like, just because it's too slow. Um, what to bring in? What is... Oh, uh, we're shuffling. Okay. Why are we shuffling? Ghoul Caller's Bell, or Lantern. The fix should be easy, right? Vexing Devil on top, shuffle the rest. Because that was the only known information. Right, was that, there, that's a whole yard, right? Or I think it was Lantern, actually. Yeah, so it's not that Lantern. Yeah, Lantern brings that. Oh, he shuffled his graveyard. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah he shuffled his graveyard in is the issue. Oh, okay, yep. That's right. That's the issue we have. Yeah. I didn't see that he shuffled his graveyard in. Yes. Yeah, this this is recorded, so we can fix this. Well, I, I it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a ruby, we had a helix, we had Kyle's some... mark on this. Please let us know. Oh, I hear Mark talking, so I assume he's on this. So this this is a perfect example of how how it works. Don't be a dick. Fixes are done at comp rel. So luckily, we have this recording. We can go back. We can see what's happening. Yeah, but is it going to? I don't know if we have the. Do we have the recording right since we're streaming this podcast? Is the recording just going to go back immediately? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I'm I don't think, sure. I don't yeah, think I'm not can. sure it is. I mean, yeah. It's not. We're not. Yeah. We're not recording on one. One. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. line. Yeah. Streaming, streaming on the other. On the other. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Until all said and done, I don't. Yeah. think we have the ability to. There was a lot of lands. Yeah, there were a lot of lands. Hey, look, we got. Oh. What is this? We have a clipper. Someone just posted up a clipper of uh, what was in the yard. Oh, dope. Thank you. Look at that. Thank you, Nick, for staying up when you should have been sleeping. All right. 
we are we will be right back. We're gonna pull up that clip. Thank you, Nick. And we will fix this. All right, we are back. Thank you for the quick fix. You are a saint. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right, so we are fixed and good to go. I mean, Kyle might as well scoop it. Yeah, he, he needs to at this point. There's not much he can do. Yeah, um, yeah there's, at, at this point, this is basically game. Yeah, yep, scooping him up. All right, well, Byrne gets there. Um, yeah. As I said, I, I think this is not a great matchup for him anyway, um, but, you know. Um, There's no chill in this draft. Right. Because no, because nobody has any chill. I don't think people respect the, the draft of the hate. Yeah. People don't respect the Byrne deck enough. No. That's really good. So. Wait, is there no Goblin Guide? Oh, no, Goblin Guide is main. Okay. Ooh. I was worried. Yeah, burn, Burn's not a matchup for any of these decks because they're so, like, all-in combo, right. right? That being able to attack life total directly, which is one of the reasons, uh, you know, that as you and I had discussed, we think it's really good for this meta I mean, because it operates on such a different axis. If Nemo reanimates the owner, it's just... Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, Cause he, cause, uh, there's no brittle effigy. John would grab the, the path. Yeah. The yeah. I think Eric's got a D match up with it. Yeah, you Eric does. You can't burn out those two for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's great, but I think it's decent. No, it's definitely decent. Yeah. And he's got good removal for all of the roadblocks right. that he would have to face. But like cards like Thalia, both of those Thalias are very good against that. Yeah. Abolish is really good. Um, his dudes are just so fat, yeah. you know, that it's not super easy. Um, he has Purge. Yeah, he has, he has Purge, he has Sword of Fire and Ice, which yeah. it turns out is insane against Red. Right, right. G. Yeah, which is also insane, timely, out of the board. So, I mean, yeah, Eric's yeah. definitely got the best he's, matchup. He's definitely got the best matchup, for sure. Um, All right, so we're picking up. And yeah. let's see who we are. Kyle, Kyle Richter outside on Logistics will update our people at the bottom normally. Yeah. So we will take a brief break, then. Yeah. We're going to be right back and give us about five. Uh, on camera is going to be. So let's We're back. We're back. And we're back. Yeah, I thought DRC was main. It's it's kind of hard to tell on some of that stuff. Um, yeah. Eric's on the left. So we have Eric and Kevin. So this is Eldrazi and Taxes versus Cheerios. Uh, Eric has drawn his seven and is keeping his seven. Kevin is outside for a moment on the phone, but he will be right back. Yeah, glad to be back. So, yeah, I think... No, it's not Mason. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Kevin, 
There we go. All right. We'll get Mason on next round. Hopefully this one will be over quick. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Cheerios versus Eldrazi and Taxes might be mind-numbingly long. Oh, okay. Wow, we're going that. Step up. Yeah, sure. Grab a drink of water. Yep, go for it. You need something? No, I'm good. Thank you, though. Fun facts about this match that's about to happen on camera between me and Kevin. Yeah. Uh, we've already drawn our hand. Well, I've drawn my hand, and I, I've kept right. uh, Kevin. So Kevin is mulliganing to six. Now, this is going to be interesting because I feel like Cheerios has always had a problem where it doesn't mulligan particularly well, but it's worth noting that Kevin is not on a tr traditional Cheerios list, really. Uh, he's got a lot of the zero-cost stuff, obviously, but he doesn't have a whole lot of ways to bounce it, and he doesn't have a whole lot of ways to, like, draw extra cards. So it's almost like he's dependent entirely upon having critical mass sacking them all to Ravager or some other outlet, which I don't know if he has aside from Ravager, and then just getting there from there. So this is going to be interesting to see. Uh, especially, you know, Eric's deck is set up incredibly well out of the sideboard for this matchup. Having extra Thalia, having Kotaki, um, having Rest in Peace, which shuts down both Sunrise and Rally the Ancients, which may not seem like a huge deal, but that's probably one of the most effective ways that Kevin has to win the game, not to mention he's running the Heliad combo as well. Um, so there's just a lot of really good ways for Eric to favorably interact here. Uh, so it looks like Eric got the hair down. Yeah, we do. For sure need that to happen. Let's try to get him next round if we can, Mark. Mason? Yeah. So Eric is 1 and 0. Oh. Yep. And Kevin is 0 oh and 1. Which again, hair down, not really, because it's a round robin right. tournament, so everyone has to play everybody. <clears throat> All right, so we have. It looks like Kevin's debating. Oh, Kevin down to five? And he's already down to six. So um Ooh, yeah, he's down to five. And real quick, take a look at what we might have missed. Yeah, update we have Eric, Cody, and Jago all in the one oh bracket. It looks yeah. like Mason and Brandon are still playing each other. Right. Uh to figure out these brackets. So Rosa, interesting interesting fact. Um they were on Kevin's shortlist prior to this draft without Stoneforge. Right, so he's got Workshop. So I think he's just trying to go for the, I'm going to you know, ramp up and just be able to drop these manually. Uh, yeah. That plan, right? Which, you know, it turns out turn one Workshop into Signal Pest and Ginger Brute <laughs> is one way to do that. That's some beats, right? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, honestly, if he drops, like, uh, all the glitters right here, he can't because he can't do the Workshop back. Yeah. Uh, Frogmite. We got a froggy boy. That's Affinity Beats. I mean, yeah. that will... Yeah, we're we're in the old school... Yeah, turn one workshop. It turns out feels really good. It's even better when you can run four of those, which I still think the way to fix vintage is to restrict workshop and unrestrict all the pieces. Fight me. So Ginger Brute is unblockable? Yep. Oh, if you pay one, it is unblockable, except for records with haste. But it's a hasty little dude, and Signal Pest, it gets bigger, right? So Signal yep. Pest did Ooh, not display. Displacer. Around that time, Signal Pest has Battle Cry when this creature attacks. Um, and it can't be blocked except by creature with flying or reach. So is that. Dis That's a Displacer. Mimic and Displacer? Mimic and Displacer. Now which is mimic, very good. Of course, is a two drop that whenever another colorless creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may change Mimic's base power and toughness to that until the end of the turn. So it is a 2-1, but when he drops Reality Smasher, it's yeah. going to swing at the 5-5. Five, five, and right? there is a Thought Monitor from Mr. Yeah. Freeman, so that's drawn so two cards. We have a lot of cards in this match, right? Yeah. So just in case you're not familiar with Thought Monitor, it's going to draw two, um, and it's a 2-2 two, two flyer. So yeah. Really, it draws two, and that's a big card. Yeah. Uh, and Affinity for Artifacts, obviously, pretty big deal here. Right. We've also got Workshop. 
there's a pedal, and I feel like Kevin's almost hellbent. Yeah, I mean, Kevin is pretty much held like Seabold pretty well. Yeah. I mean, he draws a golem. He can almost ca he can cast it with gas at this point if he draws yeah. that. Is yeah. he main decking that golem? God, I hope so. Uh, please tell me he. Michael synth golem. Where yes. Are yes. Good. Okay. All right. So he's main decking the golem. And we are swinging all in for 13 here. So Kevin's got a nice little backup with the walking ballista heliad combo. He does. Doesn't have that much draw unless he gets the Esper sitting on out to get to yeah. it very reliably. Um, but, you know, he's got dispatch. Ooh, that's a jitty. You don't know that, Nick. Okay. It could get there. He can catch that golem right now. Yeah. I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, five 6, six seven, 7, 8, 9, 9 10, 11, yeah. 12, 13. He has 13 available affinity mana right now. Yep. And we've got Jitty counters, though. Yeah. So this this could get... Bye-bye Brute. Bye-bye yeah. Pest. Pest. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Jitty is at one point the best equipment in the game. Mm -hmm. It has... Hands down. Probably been on Clans at this point. Yeah, I think so. But right, in a creature, too. in a zooish creature type gate world, yep. it is still a top dog. Yeah, right? oh yeah, it's absurd. Uh, and yeah, correct. Now, now Golem is not yeah. being cast. Right. The workshop is still pretty close, though. I yeah. mean, so we got one, two, three. Don't forget, each of those artifact lands count two, four, yep. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, it, Golem is still passable. Yeah. Uh, what's better than Jit? Cauldra Complete. Batter Skull. Yep, there we go. Uh, Feast and Famine. Feast and Famine is better. Probably Fire yeah. and Ice. Yeah. I don't know if... I think in most constructed formats right now, Fire and Ice is better. Georgia Cardinal. Yeah, exactly. The problem now, is, is a, a lot of your best equipment decks, other than like the Hammer Time aggro decks, yeah. which are kind of like... Yes, G can totally be invaded modern D5. 100%. Yeah. Um... I agree, it's worse than Creature Heavy Metals. Ooh, Metamorph. What are we copying? What are yeah, we copying? Thought not Seer. Take another card out of his hand? Nope. Oh, Thought Monitor draw thought two. Thought Monitor draw two, yeah. Nice. Well, what's really nice is he can blink that oh, with the Displacer oh, and draw cards every single yeah, time. Yeah. Take five. Yeah, so ah. I, I think that the. Um, you know, a lot of the best equipment, other than like the hammer time combos yeah. know, nowadays, are actually running control decks. Yep. Right. So it, it's that's why Stoneforge is like the third best blue creature ever printed. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Nick. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And had been banned for so long. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I Stoneforge has never been in the discussion because no. it's just. Uh, yeah. But right. yeah, I mean, equipment's kind of become a control game. Uh, yeah, other than like the Hammer Time decks, which are basically combo decks. Yeah, for sure. And there's another Ginger Brute. You got Ginger Brute back? Yep, we all we have Academy of Ruins. Okay. So. Although it seems like a losing game of attrition at this point to just yeah. time walk yourself to get back a Ginger yeah. Brute and have well, it I mean, killed he, by he's helping. Counters. I mean, what else is he going to do? Oh, yeah, that's I mean, fair. He molded five. Yeah. I mean, he can sack it for three life. Yeah. He can give it haste. And, yep, We're going to kill Ginger Brute. Yep. Yeah. Sure. And taking four down to four. Good thing we're gonna have jit counters. Yeah. I mean you can just gain if you're worried right now, you just gain gain two, two to six. Yeah. You can gain four more next turn if you're really worried about it. You don't have enough to blink, you don't have enough to displace this time. No. You do it after the attack. Yeah. Although not entirely sure you need to do Eric's that. Eric's got excited hands. Do you see that? Yeah. Do you see, do you see the expediency? <laughs> okay, there we go. We're, we're done here. Like, those were excited. I, I yeah. know those hands. I've, yeah. I, I've been those hands. You're just like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that, that was, yeah, that, was that, that untapped draw was fast. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, bitches, please. <laughs> yeah, Jit, Jit is real good against creatures. Yeah, yeah, who would have thunk it? The, the, the dude decks can't beat it when it kills their dudes. You know, you know what would have survived Jit there? Michael Sense Gold. It would have. Best card in his deck? Probably. <laughs> Does, uh, doesn't die to Jit. Esper I mean. Sentinel wouldn't have. That's yeah. for sure. Oh, definitely not. Yep. 
Adder Skull. My last VRD, I had the fun of um, animating Carl to complete with Karn. Yeah. I dropped Karn, and they dropped Carl. It was off camera. They dropped Carl to complete, and then I was like, okay, animate it. It falls off. Yep. And it was like, all right. They were like, okay. And then it was just like, okay, that's great. That's great. They're like, oh, you have a 4-4. Four, four. I have a blocker. I have a bitter blossom token. I don't care. I'll block yeah. the 7-7. Seven, I'll block seven. it all day. Yeah. I'll block the 7-7 seven, seven for one round. Yeah. I'll take a life. Sure. Yeah. Gain six every turn. It was only one turn anyway. They only animated it for a turn. Oh, but yeah. the, but the yeah. thing was gone. Then they had to, yeah. they had a way to recast it. Yep. Telling stories of crushing me over there was it against Swifty? Yeah, it was against Swifty. <laughs> Dude, your matchup was heaven for me. Like every other matchup, whatever they were like, whatever reason, your matchup was just oh, thing of beauty. <laughs> Crushed. All the strip mines. All yeah. the. <laughs> all right. So sideboard wise, I feel yeah. like Kataki comes out. Three sphere definitely comes out. Right. Kataki three sphere. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you really care enough about rest and peace here. I think yeah, abolish. You don't care about rest. Uh, abolish does what? <laughs> What's abolish? Yeah, you can bring in abolish. Yeah. Uh, you could also just bring in. He had another. It was uh, fragmentized. Yeah. You probably don't bring fragmentized hits four greater, right? Yeah. Or four under. Four under. So you bring fragment. You can bring fragmentized yeah. if you need it. I mean. Yeah. I think he's got pretty good matchups anyway. Um, um, let's see. What do we get? We get Spell Skite and the board for Kevin. Right. You bring in the Revoker. Uh, it can stop eat and off. Yeah. It's not bad. I think you bring in Bobble. If you're Kevin for the... Oh, no. What am I talking about? It's Relentless Rats. <laughs> That's, we're just going Relentless Rats. Just going to switch it out. Go we got to go Relentless, relentless rats, rats, right? All right. So let's go Gideon of the Trial. Gideon, of our many dead Hembo of the Gods. Yeah. So you get it's the, the one worship. you get an emblem where right. you can't the worship, yeah, emblem. worship emblem. Yep. That's pretty good. It is. I mean, especially this matchup. matchup can't deal with, uh, yeah. you know, Gideon. And one of which is this deck, really. Although, you can it attack. can get, I mean, Relentless Rats kills Gideon. Right, like you can I'm attack Gideon. This deck actually is probably okay, just because you can yeah. attack the Gideon. Down, yeah. But. I'm just gonna say, if we didn't board into the relentless rats plan, yeah, I'm gonna be a real mad on camera. Big yeah. mad. I wish I could see his hand. God, I wish I could see his hand all the time on this map. Yeah, well, him didn't get drafted this time, Swifty. So no, no one him, no one's yeah. griefing. Ink Ma, Dothy Voidwalker is not main. Mogul dead. Pearl, that's an explosive open. I'm just trying to look at what uh, that was a fragmentize fragmentized. on the pearl. Yeah, that's why. Okay. So we're gonna swing for one infect. Oof. That's a legit clock, in fact. That is a very legit clock. Um Do you hold the fragmentize for the ink mod? Or is it just still the main Sorcery. Thing? Oh, it's a sorcery. Okay. Yep. As we discussed that. Kataki, there Ooh, we go. Oh no! boy! Oh, oh! So this, again, this is, effectively, he's sacrificing. And he turns it to read. Yeah. Oh, he's like, oh, what does that do? Oh. Yeah, so Mo Mopal's gone. My crotch. <laughs> uh, Ink Moth can stick around, but Citadel taps, taps for itself. Yeah. Uh, and Mopal is just gone. Yeah. So, and it, worth noting, Kataki is not a destroy effect. It is a sacrifice. So yeah. Darksteel has to tap down to save itself. Oh, so good. I have not seen this good of a Kentucky since like extended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. no, this is this is pretty brutal for yeah. Kevin. I have not seen this good of Kentucky and since extended. Uh, yeah. Uh, like bringing in the board out of the zoo. I mean, I guess you can tap the ink moth to pay for the mopal, but then you're not doing anything on your turn. So it depends on what else Kevin has. You in still do game. it. Yeah. You still do it. That's fair. Because otherwise you can't tap the ink moth. Yeah. The ink yeah. moth does nothing. Yeah, that's unless true. you have a land. I mean. Yeah, Eric is having the time of his life right now. Oh, there we go. We got a land. Yeah, they would be. Oh, we're tapping for something here. I'm going to go ahead and animate just to get the color, color mana. To dispatch. Dispatch. The that's a, good, that's a hot play. Yep. That, was, that was sweet all around. That was play. a really good play. That yeah. was a good run of plays there. Good job, Kevin. Yeah. So 
he, he activated the Ink Moth to get the artifact yep. to be able to get the color mana off the Mox. Yeah. That was really clutch. Yeah. Very heads up. So we've got a Caves from Eric here. Uh, and looks like we are going to... Drop a fatty. Three mana. What do we got? Is it a Displacer? Caesar. Reshaper. All right, Reshaper's pretty good here. And now Kevin gets to untap and get do back stuff to his clock. Right, right. Yeah. Do, do, have a game again. Yeah. Yeah, that, that dispatch play was clutch. That was a smart string of magic. Yep. It's almost like he's a villain. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin's kind of a villain. <laughs> we got 2P. Yep. Two cores now. And Eric up a game here. So this Ink Moth represents a game three pretty quickly. At this rate. So, no, he did not play at EOT. He played it during his main. He used his Academy Ruins to animate the Ink Moth Nexus to give him a third artifact, which he then, that turns Mox Opal on. Right. So he used the, the Mox Opal to produce a white. Or the dispatch. Uh, Ray Shaper's got Jeet, so or there's, a, yeah. there's a Jeet on Ray Shaper, and Ink Moth is now. Non-factor, right. okay. yeah. So again, Jeep's going to run away with this one. Uh, yeah. Right? So this is the reshaper out. Uh, when he dies, you immediately can get all four cards back. Yep. So that's fine. Memnite, that's a blocker. Yeah. Turns out, Jeep, good card. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I think that might be game without a way to destroy it, which I don't think Kevin has. Cheerios list was was good though. So here we've got a bunch of lands out. We are yeah, Mopal. Excuse me, is permanently on now. All right, so we're gonna dare you to wipe my board with this drill. Uh, all right. Uh, seven P. I didn't say Jit should be on Vandal and Bottom. I did. I think Splinter Twin should be on Vandal. Because you need to free the political prisoner. Sure. Or is that Wasteland? I don't think Wasteland is. Did he get both? Yeah, he got Wasteland and Strong. Okay. When did he get Wasteland? I didn't see he got Wasteland. Yeah. Hmm. Mason right. edged random out. All right. Uh, so Cuddy got there. What round did he get Wasteland? Uh, scroll up. It was pretty early. Oh, he went. Five. Okay, wow. Yeah. He was not playing around. No, he was not. He's all in on his plan. Yeah. Oh, and there's a Mystic Forge. That's huge. Oh, uh, with with the snap. You guys couldn't hear it, but we heard the snap yeah. when he laid that battery shaper down that says, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. We've got Kevin now at 14. All of those dice moved up next round. Yeah. Um, down to seven. Okay. Yeah, he did the double pump on Yep. The, yeah. The and there's an endless one for four. Five. Five. No, yep. no, no. Oh, yeah. No, the four doesn't make it cheap. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So Eric takes him up. Home. Eric got him down 2-0. 2-0. And Eric's 2-0 oh, Eric's two oh overall. Yeah. So I like this deck. This yeah. Is, uh, now, we haven't actually seen it. He could have run waste. Did he, did he, is he, does he have any in his deck? I haven't seen any waste okay. yet. I mean, he's got enough color stuff. He might. He, so here we've got... Fragmentize, Abolish, Kataki. Yeah. As he kind of expected. I mean, he's got enough color stuff that maybe he, he, him just, he did take a lot of pain lands. So yeah, he made he it did. Yeah. Did. Finally. Finally. But you do need, to, yeah, I mean, you should have an amount of wastes, I feel like. Yeah, but I think I got one or two. Yeah. All right, all right. That is good. We're going to try to get Mason on camera next. All right, so we have a tradition uh, started uh, back after Elaine's second win, maybe? Yeah. Uh, called the, the Giant Slayer. Yeah, the uh, Giant Killer. Uh, giant Killer. So, of course, you have um, this card. And if on camera you drop um, the previous champion... The most recent previous most champion. Most recent previous champion. It cannot just be right. a previous right. champion. The most recent previous champion, uh, they you sign a giant killer card, yep. and yeah, so you are the giant killer. Uh, we still need to do the champion's invitational once Elaine can get back down yeah, here. Yeah, that'd be... Let's 
to, to have the ultimate giant killer. Like a lane versus a lane versus a lane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once once we get eight unique champions, yeah. we can say, all right, you guys are our eight. Right. Let's do it. The giant, there we have the giant there killer. There we are, the giant killer. Uh, signed by the current giant killer, I think. Was the most John Ryan? Yeah, I think it was. Got John dropped Ryan. by somebody. Yeah, John Ryan dropped a lane, maybe. I, yeah, I, I can't. Who is your question? Madison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Are we playing Cody? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mason. Mason's Mason defending. has begged for mercy. Yeah. Yep. Mason is playing Cody. Okay. So this this will be good because this is hard control versus Valakut. Hard control slash storm. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Brain freeze and underworld breach. One Cody is first match okay, according okay. to Karen. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Which is pretty good. It turns out. Uh, so yeah, this is this is gonna be interesting because there's not a whole lot of ways like most of these decks are fairly non interactive in this matchup specifically. Yeah. So let's pull up our our lists. Let's look at here. Uh, so Cody with the time vault combo that doesn't kind really of a backup. Much. It's yeah. just kind of a backup. He's got D tutor. I mean, he can get to it. Um, he's got ponder. Looks like Dak Fade's in the board. Yeah. Uh, got brain freeze and some stormy stuff. Press of iteration can dig. Uh, says more witch is main. Um, okay. but lots of counter magic, right? So yeah. Cody has a first. If you just tuning in, right? Cody has pretty much a first thing we've ever seen here, at least St. Lotus, and probably ever, yeah. which is all of the free counter spells. Yeah. Other than uh, Middle Misstep. Yeah, other than Misstep, yeah. Has Force of Will, Force, Force of Negation, Pact of Negation, of Negation, also has Mana Drain, yeah. right? Like, has the power of the counter world. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's all there, him. There was not a lot of blue drafters this time. No, there was and, not, surprisingly. Uh, it very interesting. And that lets Narset go like ninth, tenth pick, whatever it was. Yeah. And Which is still mind boggling to me that it went that late, but hey, neither here nor there. Right. Uh, so we've got Blast Zone. So Cody's 2 0 well. overall. I yeah. mean, so I mean, we've arrived at deck, but. Nope. You know. And a quick mole to six from Mason, who had Mana Crypt, Tolarian Academy, Blast Zone, which, or Tolarian uh, West, Tolaria West. Not Academy. Urza's Saga and Cody's main. So we see, yeah, we see Urza's, we see a Mystical Tutor. So his hand's a little shaky there. A little, a little yeah. shake, shake, a little nervous. Yep. First match on camera is always a little nerve wracking. Yeah. I remember my first match on camera was against Eric Levine. Uh, ah. It was uh, a. The game. Raging I Levine. Won. Yeah, I won it, I beat it, but it was the uh, first match. I was like, uh, yeah. Crop Rot, Ancient Stirring, Dryad, Dryad Arbor. Arbor, Blast Zone. That is not a good. So I see a blue spell at the end. Yeah. yeah. But I don't I don't think he has a five that's better than that, does he? No. Cody's nails look faster. They, they do. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So we just play on back. I really thought he was about to cast Summoner's Pact and just go to two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the play. I'll take the play. Summer's back. <laughs> yeah. Game two. Dryad Arbor pass. And Cody. With the draw here. Going to play an island and pass back. We'll see. Tyga. All right. We, we got there. Yeah. We we improved drastically. Burnings. All right. Dig, dig before you play your land. It's a fast five. So let's see if Cody's nerves, you know, come out here. I mean, obviously, Cody looks a little nervous on camera. Ooh, that's a tracker. That's really good. Can't or can't get it. Can't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little bit of a tracker. Yeah. Gotta be the the island on this, I guess. Oh yeah, no, we're we're good. Uh, we're good for beverages for now. That's what it is, I guess. If you could get hyphenated one, he's owed one for the spreadsheet. I yeah. feel. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just how I feel. Tutor at the end here. With for Tutor? Tutor for Tutor. For inf he has to have LED in his hand, though, right? Yeah. That's it. So if we're going to Mystical on end step for Infernal Tutor. Uh, we got a Mystical Tutor for a Tutor. Yeah. So remember when that card was legal and... Oh, yep. <laughs> we're, we're getting there, boys. Press iterations in that. 
Yeah. We're going to grab an Underworld Breach. I have to assume. Yep, there's the Breach. We're at Storm Count 1, boys. And girls. And non-binary viewers. Well, look at that. He did. I, I, I said, "Do you get rid of it?" I think you do. Yeah. I feel like you have to, though. What do I know? Two, one, two. Storm count should be three. Uh, that's that's not storm count. That's that's floating. Yeah, that's, that's floating count. Because that one is a black and a red. I think he may have math fit wrong. Yeah. Yes. Now no, uh, no success with <laughs> yep. that happened on camera on, t on, Mad on, on Tia for me. So yeah. it's like, oh, and they announced it online. So yeah. I had to go change my damn password. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Mark. Appreciate you moving those for us. Uh, so we've got mana. Yeah, D tutor now. Yep. Tutor for a tutor. he doesn't have tendrils. All he has is brain tube, right? Right. And the LED is not exiled. Yeah. There's no new mana. Oh, and Mason's over there looking at his sideboard now. Yeah, he's bought now. Makes sense. Might as well, you know, yeah. he's masturbating. He yeah, well right. Yeah. <laughs> if, they're, if they're stroking, you're just like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this anyway. Sorry, guys. So, what, what has he got? Primal? Yeah. Primal. Hmm. Like a lot for one card in hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did he get? He didn't have a card in his hand. No, he, he clearly did not. He, I just think he played this out. And then, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you start it and then you realize you, you stop it. halfway through, yeah. Yeah, it definitely really was a really good thing for him. No, and I, I think that's very good for Mason now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've got a Dryad. Oh, that feels good. Why, why, why does the Dryad feel good? Because he's got Crop Rod in hand oh, for okay. Balakut. Okay. So what did, did he just play? I didn't catch, I can't tell what that is with what the is glare. What is that card on the table in the blue? I cannot... Is that Hall Breacher? Yeah, maybe. Oh, and there's, ooh. He's got Time Spiral in his hand. Dryad. There's a Girl Turf. Playland for turn. Oh yeah, he's he's gonna time spiral here. Is that Breacher? That is Breacher, because he flashes in the end step. It is. It is. Yeah. It, it kind of looked like a spell whatever voltage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're imp sealing next turn. Did we just tutor for a tutor for a tutor for a tutor, or did we just like? Oh my lord! No, I think he top decked that. Okay, top deck the imp seal. Yeah. Gotta wonder what he's going for though, because he's a turn behind now. So if we get a land, if he gets a land, and we're Mason, we're just time spiraling, yeah. right? You got a land in hand? What's the card in hand? That's summer spiral. Yeah, summer. Or if we can crop rot for mana positive, but I don't think he has I don't think cradle. He's got cradle. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't have cradle. Yeah. Yeah, a turn behind and missing a whole hand. So not not a great spot to be in. There's a time bomb. We're gonna take an extra turn. We're gonna take. Yeah. Oh, is Volt is Voltaic key on top? Maybe. I bet. Let's what's your, what's your win con now? You can't storm out with frame freeze now. You blew your storm. Does he have creatures? Got it. Got to consult the list. What do we have here? So if we're Cody, and we're looking at our main. Twin Flames in his board. So he board, uh, so, so is Brazen Borrower. Do you want to cast your Mage Beatdown? Yeah, because Twin Flame isn't in his main. 
But dual caster doesn't get Sedgemore there. Witch. Oh, yep. Good call. Sedgemore. Yeah. That's fair. Oh, no. We get an untap step now. That is huge. Because if we still have the tutor for whatever is on our top deck. Oh, and that's a Valakut. That Valakut doesn't cast. Yes, it does. Dryad. Tons of play. Tons of play. Oh, yeah. Right. Tons of play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's rough. I forgot it comes into play fast. Yeah, so you can see there, you were asking earlier about notes, Nick pulling a, or uh, Cody pulling a card up yeah. there for just, what does it do? We're going to Summoner's Pact here. What are we getting? What gets us mana this turn? That doesn't get us enough mana. Sure doesn't do it either. No, no. So there's there's nothing there. We don't have mana positive dorks. That's the thing he was missing from last time. Uh. Yeah, Azusa and a bounce sand off crop rot would work. Because mm -hmm. you can Well Pat doesn't put it in play though, so you have to Yeah, so you cast Azusa because he has a Karu out. So you can tap those two, sack one for a crop. He doesn't have amulet, so. Yeah. Boom. Tap for green. Crop rock. I agree, he should get blast zone. Just went right by Blast Zone. So we haven't Somewhere seen Austin Jones is like, yeah. Is it? We, yeah. <laughs> Austin's head is like, exploding. His senses his yeah. sense is going his, off and he's like, his, his prime spidey prime senses, senses. Yeah. yeah. His amulet titan. Wait, what happened with the Taiga? Oh, we returned the Taiga. Right. We tapped and returned. Right. Ah, uh, yep. Because you know, Taiga. Taiga. You're the girl I never yep. had. And I want <laughs> to get to know you better. Ah, uh, there we go. We got there. We got there. Got there? Yep. This turn? Yep, this turn. Because Dryad lets you play the extra, right? Oh, Dryad does let you play an extra, yeah. Yeah. I forget that part. So we've got six mana in pool now, and guess what? Boom! Time spiral. Uh, I, I, I was thinking oh, Dryad was just I was thinking yes. Dryad was just as a, um, yeah, as a chromatic. Yeah. Not the extra no, it's it's yeah. extra land too. So and okay. we're scooping them up, baby. Damn. Woo. That was a that was wild. Oh, that was good. Mm. So Mason up one zero. Oh, that was so good. You gotta flip over those uh, Brandon Curry tokens. They taunt me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> They're so great. It's <laughs> just like the mustache. Just yeah. There, just looking up at me, taunting me. All right, so you, Brandon thought sees. So it looks like he's not. Is he main decking? Not main decking most of his. Uh, I saw he will one cost. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. For a little load. Yeah. Yeah. Thought sees and IOK are in the sideboard, yeah. along with Marsh Flats. It's always a weird world when your second, and third pick are in your board, and it's, right? But I mean, he was there, and then he started right there. Yeah. No one's really a strong discard deck. No. Yeah, the board, but uh, Cody um, could bring in Twin Flame. Pocket Deluge. Oh, Deluge definitely comes in. I think Chaos Warp does too because it answers Valakut. Yeah, Remanding. Yeah, Remand. It's free Storm. Yeah. Um, Drown in Sorrow. Maybe. Op Agent. Yeah, Op Agent seems really good. So does Pyroclasm. The Fetches. Oh, no, because he's got his butts are too big. Yeah. The op agent? Yeah, op agent seems real good. Brutal. Here. Yeah. With all of the fetching and the summoner's yep. pact. Um, crop rot. Yeah. But op agent will void mana. Yeah. Or if it resolves. Which it 
should. Yeah. Well, it was all of it. Yeah. yeah. If, if he just gets it. Yeah, if, if he gets an untap yeah. with it. Yeah, op agents. So we're boarding out. You don't have to get an untap with it. You just got to. Literally, all you have to do is, like, on the first bench, invert the DP list to throw Rain. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, just, you just blow him out. Yeah. Yeah. On a Titan trigger, it's real good. Yeah. Assuming we see a Titan trigger. Yeah. Uh, so, Ma- Mace played tight there. I mean, that was. Yeah, that was I, very I, I'd good. I'd given up. I, I actually. I, I mean, yeah, I thought I forgot over. that yeah. uh, they, they get double land. Off there. Yeah. But, I mean, that was some strong sequence. Cody wisely scooping up, knowing that Hall Breacher was about to do some serious work yeah, I mean, all, all with time all spiral. Time. Yeah, I mean, even at that point, even if you know Mason's just like, all right, well, you can go now. I mean, and you have like, no cards. Cody has no, I have no hands. Yeah, I have a full mess up. Yeah, like you're you're done. You know. So the big thing was Mason had the Hall Breacher out, so Cody would have been hell bent. Right. And so Nick would have stayed held. Or uh, Mason would have had everything. Right. And the key would not have been on top of the deck any longer, assuming key was what he searched for, since he has what? to shuffle. Because he has to shuffle, yeah. yeah. So the shuffle gets rid of the key. Yeah, the that shuffle the gets rid of the key. Part. Right. And then he's just hellbent for whatever. So if there's not a shuffle, it, it's, if it's just a wheel, yeah. it doesn't do the same thing. Yeah. Then you just draw the key and just win, right? Correct. You, you could have done he, he, he could have naturally yeah. tied I mean, the key, but I think he probably should have like, stayed that long just to yeah. see. Absolutely. Yeah, at, at that point, you're so far behind that I think it's almost impossible to catch up unless, like, right. you've got maybe two, three turns, especially because at that point, and he doesn't have Nick Malakut's online. So he doesn't he have any key to, redundancy. Either. Yeah, so it's, no, like, it's just, one, just the key. one key. Yeah, and Mason took the trinket mage. So, he doesn't even have that to tutor up the key. Yeah, it's right. definitely worth the draw, but it, yeah, it, it's I, not... I, I think Cody just valued his time more and was yeah. like, all right, well, you're going to have a grip and you're playing extra lands every turn. Yeah. And they're all mountains and Valakut is online. Nick, I see what you're doing. You just wanted the game to end in Valakut winning. Yeah. And that's fine. We can still see that. But Valakut still won the game because that was the last land for the mana. So <laughs> it got there. Debating. I don't think he can play Dryad Arbor out. You need those lands, man. I think Mason just loves Leovold. Well, I think that's just it what it is. I think that's true. Yeah, I, it's I, I, any deck that runs Leovold, he's like, all right, I'm just going to jam this in and see how it goes. I think this list is really hard to sideboard with, too, though. Yeah, it is. I mean, like... You you have so many pieces that interact in a way that's like, all right, I need yeah. them all together. I mean, I and there's very little... Aimlet Titan's hard to sideboard with in modern, right? And I mean, yeah. I think this list is just really, really hard to sideboard with because it lands plus wheels and you run them all. Yeah. Right? I mean, that... He's making hard choices right now. Yeah, what am I taking out here? Yeah. Well, I, think, yeah. I guess it shuts off on the Vulture. Mm-hmm. Oh, didn't see what he took and out. Tracker. Oh, yeah. yeah tracker. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Because that's kind of your backup plan in this yeah. deck. You know, if it is Tracker. Yeah. I love the spoils. Watsy R and D, like come on. Yeah. There's so many stories of that just littered throughout Magic. That's like we tried this last second and it was too late to change it. And I will say I love Sam Black's honesty when they talked about Urza Saga, <laughs> and they were like, "Look, man, we didn't test any games on paper, okay? Yeah. So Urza Saga fell through the cracks. You know what, Sam Black? Kudos to you. Yeah. I I appreciate the honesty. Sure, I Watson, wish Wizards sure did that did. more often. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure Watson did. No. <laughs> like, yeah, you got Don't a, care. You got an NDA, and we're yeah. pretty sure you broke that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Mason up 1-0 here. Yeah. Um, what are our standings looking like currently here? Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's quick look at what this deck is. Yep. So we have... Eric's still 2-0. Eric's here. still 2-0 Tried playing. 2-0. Mason here's 1-0. Okay. Shadow's 1-0. Chicago crew representing pretty well here. That's good. Like to see it. No, no, no. They had their time last time. <laughs> Go away, Cubs. Ah. Or White Sox. I don't care. Yeah. Either. Take your 
pie shaped pizza in the truck. <laughs> pizza cake is great. I don't care what anybody says. Ooh, we got the turn one green sun for zero. Ooh, with the fast bond? Ooh, spicy. Spicy. Wait, does he have fast bond twister in his hand? Oh my god, he does. With green sun? That hand is insane. That hand is nuts. You can't <laughs> not keep that. Good lord, that's good. I mean, you just got to play all that out in the wheel, right? There's no way you don't. No, yeah. The wheel straight ahead. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure, you top deck tutored or whatever. I'm just going to shuffle it away, and you can maybe draw one of your tutors again, but really, I'm just going to do my thing. Fast bond. You got your counters? Do you have the, do you have the counter? Nope. Oh, hang on. Some dual lands or maybe Holy some basics. Cow. This is insane. Oh. And this this is this is the power of fast bond. Oh my this God. is why this card is insane. I don't think yeah, he can't green sun for zero here because he's yeah. He can't twist it. Yeah, he had another land for it. Yeah. Oh, he does. <laughs> oh, force will. Force pitch intuition, sure. So he, yeah, yeah, that's smart though. Yeah, well, fact, but I mean, still, you're up right now that he got to prime dimension or whatever. Yeah, course, exactly. You're fine. You still, you let the fast bond go, and then yeah. you go for the other vault. Vault. Yeah. It's a shame the dude doesn't have a green sun target that hits artifacts like a caustic caterpillar or something like that. You know, Rex Sage. Yeah, Rex Sage would be a good one here. What did he draw? Let's see. Got a, got a little greedy there, but. I do you, do, you, I, do you maybe run the green sun out there just in case? I don't know. Because I, I don't think he cares about the green sun enough. And no. Although green sunning for two for Scoos is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it depends on which, which play he's on. I mean, he's got the two That's plays. Fair. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's on time vault now. I mean, do you, so. so do you think you force the fast bond and just try to slow the roll from, from, from the jump, or do you hold off and see what he does? No, you let him fill their guts oh, that's out. That's a lot of mana in his yeah. deck. I mean, that's true. I don't know. Yeah, that's, he's so I, far ahead. For, for me, that's what I do. Oh, we've got a relic. Okay, so relic and green sun. Right, he's so far ahead now. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know what you do. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, what do I what have do you, on what my do you next think, turn? Chat? What do you do? You, do you force the, the fast bond there? Yeah. Or do you hold it for the big for the big gas for the end of the turn? It's like forcing the tutor or not in this case. So yeah. We're gonna. But I think this is different than forcing the tutor. And they draw a card. Two. Progress. Right. Yeah, Bane is really good here. So if we're green sunning for two, you're on the train doesn't matter. Yeah, I that's I'm. You Jake know what? Says force fast bond. So yeah, I, I think I want to force fast bond. I mean, it's just like it's fair. It, fast bond because you're so far ahead. Yeah. Does he not have a target for two? Yeah, he doesn't have two. Right? Is this? I mean, Harbor oh yeah, Cobra. Yeah. Did he not bring in Scoo? There's a key. Wow. Yep, you knew that was coming. <laughs> Showing. Yep. <laughs> I like the shortcutting here. Yeah, I like the shortcutting a lot. Yeah. Show me the win. I'm gonna make you have it. Don't cast stand still. Yeah, he doesn't have stand. Oh, that's right, he doesn't. Twin flame pact. Yeah, we'll we'll scoop him up here. So, yeah. So, all right, one on one. Yeah. Yeah, I think the thing is, if whether I fan whether I force the fast bond has no, to do with what I tutor. That's for. true. Depends on what you have in hand. If he has the key in hand, then you're probably or on top, right on top, then, then you're, fine. you're probably gonna give a yeah. shit. That, that makes sense. Yeah, right? I I want to make you have it. You know. Yeah, that that makes yeah. sense. Like. If you if I know I have it, yep. I make I'm gonna make them have it. If I yep. don't know I have it, I'm gonna be digging for a while. I do not want to let them get that far ahead in yep. the mana race, exactly. right? Especially yep. when he's got prime time, yeah, and things like that. Well, was dual caster enough? Because oh no, he had the twin flame too. Yeah. So yeah, that is enough. 
I was going to say, because Dualcaster gets blocked favorably by the Lotus player over the last, you know, he had a twin flame win too, so he just right. gets twin flame Dualcasters. Um, so yeah. that, that just as quick as last game. Yeah. That force <laughs> was beautiful. I yeah. mean, because that that, otherwise that was a... That was game. That was the most beautiful turn one I've seen yeah. in BRD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it reminds me of the last in-person Eternal Weekend. I remember my friend was on camera with Rich Shea, and Rich Shea dumps his entire hand out mm. uh, and then plays a 10-10 walking ballista. Did you find a boombox? Is Eric a 3-0? Yeah. Yep. yep. He's 3-0. And my friend just goes, all right, uh, creeping corrosion. Wiped his whole board. Air to on turn one. 3 so, and yep. Oh. Ooh, after beating Jago. So Eric beat the mono red Told you it was probably the, the best yeah. matchup against it. Yeah, it, no, you were you were absolutely right. That's the most favorable yeah. matchup for us. Uh, so we had an amulet in our opener along with an Azusa, but so we la- are last night to six. in uh, the VRD uh, committee chat, I said yeah. Eric was my was what I wanted. It was yeah. my winner of my heart. I didn't yeah. know he was drafted. Yeah. I just said I wanted Eric. Yeah, no, that, so. that was and he's he's almost above five hundred. His goal was to be above five hundred. One more win, he's above five hundred, and one more win, and he's there. Yeah. So he's he's getting there. Yeah, I yep, saw the bane. I saw late. the bane, but yeah. But one turn too late. All right, so this is St. Lotus VRD, folks. If yep. you're just tuning in, uh, I, did we get catch Joe coming in earlier? Joe the plumber? Yeah, that was three hours ago. We yeah, we, we caught right. Joe. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I am Stephen Hagen. I am Jason Thurston. And we are here. Uh, these are, we are past the draft. Um, you can find, is Mark, can you share up the draft in chat real quick so people can take a look if they want to? Um, we are in the play stage. Uh, this is the second on camera match. We have Cody versus Mason. This is 1-1. One, one. Cody is on a Time Vault slash Storm hybrid yes. list um, with a lot of free counter spells. Yes. So, um, all of them, yeah, except all for Metal Mist. Except for Metal Mist. That's there. And Ooh, we got a Fast Bond, and I okay. Uh, Mason is on lands yes. with uh, a Time Spiral Leopold, um, yep. Wheel of Fortune, shenanigans. So, Fast Bond and Fast Bond lands with Valakut and Prime mm-hmm. Time. Top end, um, so pretty strong lists here, both of them. And in a way, Cody's was all over the place, but seems to be playing better than I thought. Yeah, like, I, 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 Co- look, Cody is also a very good player. Right, so, right. looking at the list, I was not impressed. I thought yeah. it was a, a, too far in different directions. Um, but you know, obviously, it is two and zero, and maybe three and zero here soon. Yeah, um, he's in a you know playing it pretty strongly here. Ooh, we fetched the Triumph off the catacombs, so we're not going turn one discard here. Yeah, so we, we have relic and IOK in hand. Mason picked really good discard early on. Second pick probably yeah. his third pick um, A-OK, but ended up boarding them both. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were able to come in for matchups like this. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it also kept them out of the hands of Eric and other people. Yeah, and, it did. Um, Which I, it, Eric said so was... Eric's list would have been very different. Eric yes. was going to be yeah. a white-black grief ephemerate yep. stuff with his Eldrazi boy. Yeah. Um, we're producing black with our that op agent under there? Yep, that's op agent. Uh, I don't like that. Op at all. agent's so good in this matchup. Yeah, with all the fetches, and that I don't know about that. But yeah, if you've got a quick plan, you got a quick plan. You know. Yeah. Um. Wow. So we have interesting. So we're already in sealing. Yeah. What are we grabbing? Can't see. Don't have do we, do we have that. Volt Key? Is that is? Do we already have Volt Key again? We might. This has been every game. Game one, uh, Cody tried to go off with Mandal of Reach and yep. really early and kind of whiffed. Yeah. Uh, miscalculated. Dropped a key, or dropped a, a, a vault. A vault, but then uh, Mason was able to, uh, oh, um, time spiral. Uh, Hole breacher. Hole breacher time spiral, and Cody saw the writing on the wall and yep. kind of scooped him up. Uh, game two, Cody, or Mason had a beautiful game one hand, uh, turned one hand, and was able to fast bond in. Time Twister on turn There one. we go. Because there was a force as well as there. I okay, so we have Intuition Infernal Tutor. That's important. Okay. So we're on the Breach plan. So then. what do we take here? We take Infernal Tutor, I feel like. Because um, I'm guessing he probably yeah. tutored for LED. So if you get if you get Tutor, then you can Taiga and Relic to exile the MCL, obviously. Okay. 
but that Does keeps he have him off. In hand? Yeah, yeah, he has relic. Right. Okay. Mason has relic in hand, so he can exile a card, which isn't ideal, but right. it's fine because next turn we're casting intuition and that's it. Right. You know, we've got LED as well, but we can't do anything else with it. If he mm. tutored for LED and not like an imp seal or something. Right. He's a lot of tutoring for two. Yeah, so he, he loves to tutor for two. We're going to go there. Relic to play Lappy. Yeah, and then we're going to bounce a land. Thank you, Absolute Rage. Appreciate the follow. And then play the land. Take That's a point hey, of damage. Hey, hey, hey. Absolute, Absolute Rage is. is. Yes. Yeah. Get right. So we are going to exile one card from the deck. And then we are going to draw. Yeah. So we make a card of Cody's choice. Yep. So we get three green for a land. We get the hand yep. when he's... Hate here is going to be really good, especially as he's on the, the, the storm. The three mana, so this this feels like breach then. Nope, not quite. We're passing back. He's got the intuition in hand, plus one. Yes. Oh, that's a thought seize. That is brutal. That is brutal. That's going to be that brutal. Now, intuition is an instant. Thought seize and trinket here. Yeah, uh, you've got to cast the thought. Even, even not knowing what's in his hand, you know he tutored for something that's a combo piece, mm -hmm. and you have the ability to get rid of it, and you know how explosive the deck is, right? because he has so many tutors. And, well, you know the intuition's there, yeah. because you IOK. Yeah. So, so we're going to end step intuition, or in response intuition. Response. Really. Yeah. You know I know what the other card is. It's not, it's not as big of a deal. Yeah. You think Cody's going to do the, the good guy thing and put two in his graveyard, and then... Keep the worst of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he will. All right, so let's see. We've got. So we're we're thinking here. I feel like. I mean, with that relic is just so oppressive. Yeah, that's I, I I I don't huge. think there's anything that he can get that lets him go off. I think this this is a game where Mason has had. The appropriate hate pieces and it's going to make it cards. very yeah. Three sideboard. It's going to make it yeah. very difficult for Cody to go off on the board. So we've got Path of Negation that he's working on. We've got Force of Negation that he's working on. Yeah, three sideboard cards and just a really good draw. Yeah, especially being those specific sideboard right, cards. Right. Yeah. Is top brutal. two discard spells. Yeah. So he's just going to go all packed force narset. Yeah. Is what we've got. And we keep the Narsa. Mason picks one to go to hand, right? Yeah, Mason picks one to go to hand. So we have. We can pack the count the discard then. Wait, no, because he can't pay for packed. Yeah, you're right. We give him packed. He gets LED. Yeah. So LED's in the bin. So obviously, we're thought season the LED. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. I I thought he was on enough mana for that. And then we will pop the relic to exile all of them. Yeah. That's a bad list. Yeah. Well, it's it's especially important because you know at this point we've rid him of the combo that relies on the graveyard, mm -hmm. and we're reliant on our other removal. So now we're gonna trick to it up probably uh, Time Vault. Yeah, I think we do that here. It's a shame that he doesn't have Needle to main Time Vault or Voltaic oh, Key. Yeah. That would be brutal. And Amulet's a different card. Yeah, yeah. Amulet. And because it's oh, Zoran Orb. Yeah. Is it one or is it just one or is it one or less? I think it's one. Yeah. It's been so long since I played with Trinket Mage. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it's one or two. Yeah. One or, or less. less. So okay. He could get Zoran. He, or Mana Yeah, because you get you get uh, Mana Rocks. Oh yeah. That, yeah. You can get the uh, Mana uh, Mana Rocks. <laughs> yeah. That's why I used to run one artifact land instead of. Is that a Summoner's Pact? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, so we have to play the Summoner's Pact, right? There's no way we don't. We play the Amulet out. Right, we play the Amulet. We swing. Okay. And then we Summoner's Pact before he gets enough lands for the Pact. Well, what are you going to Summoner's you? Pact? Oh, oh, yeah, I guess you can't. He's out. So he's just drawing yeah. in the hope at this point. Yeah. Doesn't have enough lands for the Pact. I was gonna say you can prime time, but you can't cast prime time unless the next you draw turn because you yeah. have to pay for the pack. Yeah. 
Mana Crypt, Crypt gets so there. Now you pack. Now you can pack. But then, then he you doesn't. Still, you still can't cast Prime Time, but he doesn't have mana for pack. pack. Yeah. You can't. Pack so pack. yeah, as, yeah. As, long as, as long as he's off pack mana, I feel like yeah. you just go for yeah, it. And if can't. he top decks the land, then great. Yeah. He loses a turn, and that's fine. I mean, Bane. Bane, Bane, Bane oh, Bane. Bane is definitely the play yeah. here. You're right. Yeah, Bane's the play. Not pack yeah. Pack. You go to a Bane. You both. Yeah. You don't, you don't care about your fast body, you don't care about your amulet, you don't care about your crypt. No, because you're just on the aggro. You're on the key, and he's got no effective mana yeah. at that point. I mean, he can go into the brain freeze, kind of, yeah. but that's going to take so much work to draw into that. Yeah. And the bane's going to be such a big clock. Yep. Yeah, so he just... Are we, are we scooping him? He's going to brain freeze. And yep. Some amount. Brain Freeze is got packed, Bane, Freeze for 12. Yep. Because we're milling now. Sure. Yeah, like whatever. Yeah, that is backbreaking. That's a 9-9 nine, nine Bane. <laughs> Bane of Progress, a Commander staple. Yeah. Tonight. And one of the best sideboard options in this uh, format. It's a 7-7. Well. Yeah, 7-7. Right? Seven, so, seven. Okay. It's a 6-drop that destroys all artifacts and enchantments and you get the land. Grease one destroyed one. And there we go. Up and, oh, the last two cards were Force and Mana Drain. Too late. All righty. Oh. So Mason takes that one down 2-1. Yeah, 2-1. Which, there you go, Nick. We saw the Valakut deck. It won. And the Giant Slayer. Go Balaka. Yep. Giant Slayer still the Giant. Yeah, the Giant Slayer Giant is still. Giant Killer still, still out there. Yeah. So, all right. We are going to go one moment. Of give us about a four, and we'll be right back. Uh, we're going to stretch our legs and find out what the next match is, and we'll come back with details. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be back in about five minutes.
All right, folks, we are back, or I am back temporarily, and Mark is going to be joining us. Jason is doing a run. Um, where is our stream? There we go. Wrong, wrong camera. Let's go stream incoming. You don't want to see me. You want to see these folks. So we have, not streaming incoming. Ah, we want gameplay. There's right. There we go. Um, these have not been updated, so let me update these. Or, you got them? Okay. Mark is joining. So we are going to have Kevin with Cheerios, you said? Ish. It's Ish, more of an right, affinity. Right, right. Affinity. Kevin with Affinity. And who is our other one? Uh, we have, I believe, I, I don't know. Let's find out. Let's double check that. Oh, we have pink sleeves there, so that seems very promising as Brandon. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna call this one Brandon based on the nail polish and pink sleeves. Okay, yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, look, it's even being updated for us. All right, there we go. So, uh, so we have Kevin and Kevin I think Nick one one, and then Brandon is sitting at zero and two. Uh, Kevin Brandon was zero and two, I think. Did we? Let's go and check that. Actually, let's go check that. Let's so. check the standings over here. Like I mean, we I know we have Eric Levine sitting in first place. Right. Uh, we have Mason, uh, Jago, and Cody, and Kyle. Man, we have a lot of people sitting with two wins. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin is currently sitting at one and two. Okay. One and two, yeah. Because because okay. he was he was zero and one when he played uh, Eric, uh, gotcha. and then lost on camera there. So okay. Mm -hmm. So I made my burnt Basque cheesecake. It is a you don't, you don't uh, it doesn't have a crust. You use parchment around it, and it kind of burns the outside. You cook it at a really high heat for a shorter time. It's pretty exciting. But it's really tasty. It, it looked perfect. We're like, hey, that's burnt, but it, it's not. It's really tasty. Yeah. No, we really try to lean into the de degeneracy here and mm -hmm. allow for all the things. Well, degeneracy. Also, also, I've got to bring Neem stuff. So Neem is Mark's wife and does uh, amazing things, you know, like, you know, helps host and, you know, doing all this and giving up her home for a day. So, you know, we always, and Neem loves cupcakes. And so we always got to, you know, yeah. go out on there. So Brandon in his hand there had uh, had a beautiful looking hand, obviously without mm -hmm. lands. That's always a difficulty with those kind of hands. Mm -hmm. uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor was sitting there, and it looks that that card I was amazed to see as late as it go as late as it did. Uh, and then in the early days of BRD back in 2014 when they were running these for Shock and Lotus, yeah. this was a card that would take into the second round pretty regularly. Yeah, we discussed that on draft. It's 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 just it doesn't keep up with the rest of them anymore. You know, I mean. Yeah, it's pretty depressing. I mean, it, yeah. it's such a strong card by itself that you'd expect it. To but also there was less blue. Like even Narset went really late. I mean sure. this time. I mean we were saying that Cody is the first player like that, that we think probably in BRD history to have all of the free counter spells other than Mental Misstep. Interesting. Yeah. And Mana Drain. Yeah. Right. I mean it's got Force Force Pact and Mana Drain. I mean that's wow. just yeah that's, that's crazy. Un un very wild. Right. Um. Yes. So. Uh, I, I was disappointed to hear that Mason lost. Obviously, Ma love him. He's incredible. Mason but won. I wanted to, oh, he did win. Mason won. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I wanted. Cody to was two and zero, oh, and yeah, there he, we and, go. And, but he he lost that one, so now he's now um, two and one. So, so, so Mason uh, not killed on camera yet. Ma Mason Oops. had the um, the sideboard card, so he hit Thoughtseize, Inquisition, and uh, Relic out of his board, yes, and was able to just dismantle um, Cody's game plan in game three, in match three. So it looks like they're starting right now. We got a power core out, just uh, artifact, you know, land tap for extra stuff. <laughs> yeah, it taps for any any color. Uh, as long as it's an artifact, maybe artifacts, and then it has a modular one. So if you're able to sacrifice ah, yeah. it off the Ravager, uh, it's power vault That's core. I think. Power core. Yeah, it's power core. Uh, but yeah, th that card I hadn't seen drafted before, but it is very good. Sylvan Library from Brandon. A really, a really. Uh, it's power core. Oh, we'll find it. Let's see, let's see the power of Scryfall. We're gonna be able to find this card. Our depot. Yeah. Home Depot. There we go. So okay, so uh, Sylvan Library, as pairing up against, uh, of course, Vintage All Star Ginger Brute. Right. And Crick out there, of course, is uh, our our own Kevin Richter, our great logistics helper, who does an amazing job and a uh, really good amount of knowledge out there. Always dropping it in the chat and keeping us straight. So thank yeah. you, Kyle. That's doing great. So this Ginger Brute er, er, play earlier um, didn't work out against the GTA, <laughs> uh, but uh, not probably not bad here, right? I mean, uh, Frog Might and a Ginger Brute feels pretty good as an early aggressive start. Um, so is Ginger Brute just good because you're loaded up with, this, with uh, something because it's so evasive, or why is this card good? I, I, I don't think it's necessarily great. I think it could be okay. any other creatures. It's hasty. 
Sure. And that's nice. And you can drop all the glitters on it. And it can be unblockable other by, other than other bike creatures with haste or flying. Right. Like, you know, I, I made the joke on camera earlier when he drafted that I was going to slap him because he could have got it 46. Of course. Um, and, and he could have. Um, but it, it is not bad in the deck, actually. Like, you're dropping all the glitters on it. It becomes a very hard to block creature. But it's a 1-1 one, one hasty guy that carries equipment, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, that's not bad. Oh, wow. Okay, so Brandon is paying four life in order to keep two of the cards. Okay. So that's that's a dangerous thing to do against an affinity match. Right, right. Uh, Brandon's deck seems like to be... Like a plating on a gingerbread seems really good. Of course, yes. Uh, same as all the glitters, as you right. pointed out. Uh, so Brandon uh, Brandon has a pretty straightforward... It, it, super friends. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be super friends with balance. I think he went more green than he expected to. Um, yeah. So you often you'll see draws like this. Uh, but the, the premise when he told me about it was that you would uh, rush out a walker and then slam a balance. Right. Um, difficulty there is obviously that in order to rush out the walker, he has a lot of these creatures that he'd want to be balancing away. So hopefully they can, like, chump off or something in order to oh, keep there's the plating. Right. Yeah. That's definitely going to be a little bit more difficult to deal so with. now we have a one, two, three, four, five currently. Cause depot, no, six, because Depot is an artifact. Correct, right? yeah. And what is that and underneath? Every, every card is an, art is an artifact in play. Is that, an art is that, oh, that is. So every card is an artifact. That's a seven swing win. That's, that's a big one. He's got path. He's gonna have to path. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So it's actually nine nine damage coming his way. Right. Oh uh, no, sorry, ten damage because the the gingerbread is one power itself. Right. So he's gonna path. Swords actually. Swords, yeah. Path that's, did not get picked. Yeah, interesting. That's that's a little strange. I guess yeah. the the prevalence of those new two mana mm -hmm. uh, removal spells in white makes Vista, it a little or, easier. Uh, in green mana. Yep. That's yeah, definitely very. So very that slows the roll a little bit. Right. And new cranial plating has the instant speed equipped. Well, and he's got Karn, so he can drop Karn now and lock out to where um, he can't equip. Oh, interesting. Yeah, if, right. he, if he can get that Karn done, that's actually a big game. Yeah. Uh, so Karn, what do, what do you tutor for out of his deck? Do you know his sideboard closely enough? Um. So I mean, his his side, no, he's got Lattice. He's got. Um, he's playing a lot of his cards main deck because he's running so many non basic. Right. So the only cards that he really can pull out of the board are Helm of Obedience, Magus's Lattice, Winter. Tangle wire, right, and then cards that don't matter like chalice, right. So I That's mean, it, really. yeah, I mean, I think the big thing here is the shutdown, and then like grab the lattice. Uh, you know, tangle wire is not bad, but mm -hmm. without the ley line, so that's why I liked I liked the the Karn when I had um, Dothy because I was able to grab the helm to go Dothy main board without having to vanguard the ley line, sure. and then I could bring in the ley line when I wanted to extra. Yeah. Um, so here, you know, the helm coming out of the board. Sure, that makes sense. Right. Um, but but I mean, him for him, uh, all he has to worry about with his Karn is that it doesn't die to this rod line. Because the null right. rod effect that's already on the right. Karn... It, it, it shuts off it. plating, and actually shuts off his mana base. Wow, you are completely right. Yeah, Let's like, Karn here and just like, yeah. look at how devastating this is. Right, so I mean, at this point, this it's Karn... I mean, and Karn Rebel, can take Rebel one hit. And Kevin's sadness. Right, here. Karn can take one hit from Frogmite. Fine, like, that's fine. And then you can drop something after that. But yeah, every you're right. Every mana source mm -hmm. that Kevin has is offline. Yeah. So literally, he just shut him off, other than attacking with that frog bite. Um, so you can roll up the Karn for a while, and right? Be okay. And Karn rolls up one, and you know, on nothing because right. there's no artifacts to work. And actually, uh, if Karn also can start pocket, pe uh, picking off his lands. True. Because you can do it on his stuff. That is very strong. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, we talked. I talked about it earlier where I did it to... Oh, uh, he actually went down with Karn. Oh, th that's... Uh, well, he went down by three. I don't know why that is. Yeah, that should... There yeah, we go. Okay, it. okay. So he has those big two-ton Phyrexian dice. But, but, I mean, to your point, right, what is he going to... What, what could he even draw? Uh, the only haste out of Kevin's deck that he could cast for one mana, which would be often basic, is uh, is already in the graveyard. Yeah. I'm not fully sure. Maybe his brain realizes all the artifact lands. You know, maybe he doesn't realize the full extent, but... And smart enough, he probably does. Well, but I think he just doesn't care, right? Because right. there's nothing that can actually kill Karn this turn. Right. At well, that point. yeah, and that's weird because I mean, Lattice there doesn't do. At least he's got a planes. Yep, and that's the one yeah. mana source. So now he's got an Esper Sentinel that can draw cards, but it's an artifact uh, that it can attack. Yeah, and and it can draw cards, but you need to be able to pay mana for it. Right. Of which you have one. Esper Sentinel is one of those new cards that I know we talked about a fair amount. Yeah. I expected it to do more than it does. Yeah. It's fine. It's never bad. I think it's, it's good just, in this deck. Yeah, it, it's totally fine. It's yeah. just, it's not a powerhouse like I was hoping no. it would be. It's just going to draw cards. 
So we got another card now. He can get a block, drop a blocker. But the issue here is he's got to protect that. That card's at one, and yeah, he needs he needs a creature in play. That uh, monastery mentor might be good as a two two. Uh, yeah, three mana two two is fine. He also can just use the birds. Just I mean, if you drop if you if you drop the other card, right? So you you block the birds. You drop the other card. You make the blocker. Right. You block the frog might with the blocker, yep. and then the sentinel card can take the sentinel and the roll up. So. Yeah, I, it is interesting to roll down. Wh which card did he? I didn't even. He, he kept the land. Uh, but he did. What did he get? A microsome Oh, he's got a Dovin in hand. He got lattice off the deck. Okay, but so the lattice is strange. Yeah. It doesn't. It, it, you're already doing that. Effectively. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he's just worried about new right. lands that can be coming. Yeah, 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 his yeah. Deck. I mean, it lives in the long run. You want, but for the, that turn, you, you don't necessarily need the lattice, right? Like, right. In the long run, you for sure want the lattice. Totally. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think it's. It's a matter of uh, is destroying a land right. uh, from a player that useful, and when it's already all rounded off, maybe not. Yeah, I think that if he rolled it up, I wonder what he targeted. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think this might just be one of those that maybe you assume it can only hit your own right. permanents or something. And, oh, and this that's one. that's a strong card. Yeah. And I get he's got a blocker. He has a blocker, but only for uh, only for the frog might the. Sentinel, I sentinel it, can get to for one. That's fine. It, but it will also chump. It'll also force the uh, the frog mate to be dead. Right. Yeah. Overall, Brandon seems to play a pretty commanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the Dovin in hand. Yes. Because the, the, the Dovin can actually. I would have played the Dovin over the Nissa because it can just target the frog mate, which it can't be dead. Sure. I, I, I think it's kind of sisters at this right. point. It doesn't particularly matter. So okay. So, what what could Kevin hope to get out of this with? <sighs> All right. Artifact deck. Playing against a Karn that resolves seems like a pretty insurmountable problem. Right. Um, he needs a fatty um, that you it know costs two mana, or has affinity. Sure, that's fair. Thought monitor. I mean, that's not even a fatty. That's a two. That's a two two. Uh, Michael thinks Gollum that not bad enough. Um, yeah, I don't see much here. Um, yeah, I mean a big hanger back walker, but all I can do is. Yeah, the hanger back walker's not even big at this, at this point. No. Um, I don't know if I like a rally main deck this turn for him. I think he has a lot of... Uh, so, okay, in this matchup, knowing that Karn is going to be on Frost's Wheel for mm -hmm. you, and you're Kevin, do you side into Rolanda's Rats? Yeah. Especially being on camera. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel like I, gotta, I, I, might, I might do Rolanda's I mean, Rats. <laughs> we really... Did we print out enough rats? We gave him 23. 23, okay. I was like, we really need a second set of brown sleeves for him so he can just pick <laughs> it up so he doesn't have to, have to sit here for 30 minutes on sleeping and yeah. re-sleeping. <laughs> He'll probably have to go get some swamps if he doesn't yeah. do it. So yeah. if there's a long sideboard break. No, yeah, it will be very obvious. There's no shenanigans. Correct. Really yeah, it will be very, very obvious. That there's a okay, so Stone Quail Serpent for two is what happened. Yeah, and it's, it doesn't do much. You know, it's a 2-2, two -two, and that's great. Uh, hyphen is very obviously not from the St. Louis area because he didn't recognize the arch. Ah, there we go. <laughs> the long tradition when you're in St. Louis. Oh, there's the arch. the arch. You say, oh, there's the arch. Yeah. Every time you drive by. I have a nine-year-old. Every time we drive by. Oh, the arch. <laughs> yep. Okay, so Brandon's top decking here. Looks like a land. I think it's a plane city. Group. Yeah. Uh, but his hand is already sealed. He's got lattice. Okay, so tapping... Uh, you have to include the ope. Yes, it is. <laughs> I think if you're from southern Missouri, you might be able to exclude the ope. Uh, but anywhere... Uh, St. Louis or above. Yeah, Mason, Mason Dixon line, I think, yeah. is the division for the ope. Yeah. All right, so, I mean, at this point, do you just get the mentor out there so you can start generating tokens from your walkers? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of plays here, and all of them seem pretty close. I, like I mean, he's with the, he, well, don't forget the forest tap, double tap, tap for two mana. He can grab the the, the he can grab the mentor and the Dovin. That's fair. And now, does mentor trigger off any non creature or just sort of interesting sort? So mentors off any non creature. Right. So you do you can do both, right? And then it has prowess. It creates mentors. Those mentors right. also have prowess. Right. So he can he already tapped floated two green right now. Yep. So he can tap a white, play mentor, and then do the other one and play. You might just be able to do, uh, fire off all three. You keep want to keep blackers back though, so you don't want to do. Yeah, that, that's true. That's fair. You want one, one, at least one of those. Is. But I mean, every every creature you cast creates a blocker along right. with it. That's true. Uh, the stone coil serpent. I want to take a look at that one. I know it has 
reach, trample. Trample. Tra- so I'm trample pretty sure. The, and no uh, reach. Part there. Uh, so and protection from multicolor. That one for sure. Yeah. So the, the trample is going to be relevant, even on a 2-2. Right. The fact that it will walk across one of the elemental tokens is a big deal. So you're going to go two of the fours. He's just going hard. Right. They have the joint support. Right. Because he doesn't care. Like, if he loses one, that's fine. Let's also pull up this Vista. Is this who shakes? Yeah, this is uh, Beyonce. Okay. Yep. Who runs the world. Yes. Uh, so her minus eight, which I believe she is. Mostly irrelevant. I mean, he goes and gets every force in his deck. Correct. And lands head indestructible. Uh, yeah, it's probably not important. Lattice comes down. And with the Lattice doesn't the do anything particularly. I mean, Shuts off his other two lands. It does. He, he has nothing now other than his board. So basically, whatever is on his board at this point is his game from here out. And there's one of those physician tokens that has prowess yeah. coming out. Yeah. Uh, and he animates the Microchip Lattice. Which is now a seven, man, a seven, uh, seven, seven Microchip Lattice in play. Until next turn. Correct. Uh, luckily, creatures with affinity for artifacts Might don't have to have tap mana for. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god. What is this, uh, a- what is this axolotl that's in your tap? It's the Sojourner. It's the one that was banned in Popper. This little cutie. Uh, yep, that's a 4-4, four, four, all right. Yep, and then Golem's a 4-5. Okay, so neither of those cards are going to do anything. Uh, are those lands... Oh, he, he, okay, so he yeah. tapped the lands afterwards. Right, to play the lattice. Correct. So he, he just can't... We're confirming that I guess his lattice does, in fact, work with right. Karn. Right. Uh, this is a combo that, I mean, it kind of feels like it's been around forever, but it's actually fairly new. Yeah, VRD2 was the first time you could do it. Drafted it last time <laughs> with great success. In fact, let's uh, let's ask Ninth Seed about about this for a minute and see uh, how uh, where Karn has been uh, where Karn has been falling. So Karn, on average, twenty out of twenty. Uh, yep, round six is its average pick. Yeah, but it's always been taken. Yeah, I took him in round three okay. on the wheel with a uh, Narset. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this card, I, I feel like you uh, you often don't want to get sniped, so I do see you taking cards very early. Yeah. But usually the cards you take very early do end up becoming staples, even if they are not that early in the pick, right. usually. Alright, so, here we have uh, Oath of Nature sitting in hand, along with Karn that has pants, and Karn and Urzen. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I just, it, it's a spot where you have... So you can put play. the you can take the oath and put the other two back and then get cards that has pants off the oath. Sure, or you can just pay eight life and not right. be a coward because the game is already over. Right, right. I uh, I I very much understand where Brandon's coming from though. He drafted an incredibly powerful deck. He started off o two after a couple of really crushing defeats. Right. Uh, that were close. Right. Uh, none, none of the games he's played have been shutouts. But I mean, five two gets you there. He can win through to the backside. Absolutely. I mean, five two will win a win, win a tournament. You know. He also started against two of the hardest matchups. I Mason think. and. Uh, his second one, Eric, maybe. I don't believe so. Okay, that'll be a tough matchup for him. Um, yes, it will. But no, I think Brandon's basically starting from a from a pretty hard spot. Uh, but I think his deck is good enough to get there. Yeah. Um, he he told me after finishing drafting, he said, "If this deck doesn't win the tournament, it's only because of my lack of play skill, not due <laughs> to my lack of drafting." So, and I, I think that's pretty spot on. Okay, so deciding how to tap. Uh, I, I, maybe does he have to block the the frogmite with his uh, with his physician token? Yeah, I think so. The monk died to that. Yeah. Okay. Let me double check. Yeah. Hi, Ellen Mills. And just as, for anybody that's watching, in case you do have Amazon Prime, if you want to drop your uh, Twitch Prime sub here, we'd really appreciate it. It's always nice to have additional followers. We saw we got a bunch more people that are following today. Absolutely. Really appreciate everyone. So we got pants, Karn. Probably, I think at this point, you don't dig with it. You just make a make a Karn struct. Yeah, there, there's no reason to be drawing more cards when your opponent can never cast another card for the rest of the game. Right. He just wants to make sure he doesn't lose it. Yeah. So and how do you think Eric is representing the commentator? Well, that, that actually, that trigger was the um, mentor trigger first. He hasn't even chosen yet, so that was the mentor sh- Oh, sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, no, Eric's, er, you know, Eric's seems to be representing strong. Uh, you know, the deck looked good, and... Uh, he was definitely playing with some zeal, and uh, yes. <laughs> at one point he was just like, "Oh, I'm about to win!" And you saw his hands moving fast. It was a thing of glory, you know. 
at one point I asked for a variation of a ruin, uh-huh. and he shouted back, not now, I'm trying not to die to fire blast. <laughs> and I think that, that like, properly uh, describes the situation. And yeah. he avoided it. He, he beat them on a red deck. So, so here's the Carnage Drugs. Right. Oh, so there's another token here, right? Yeah, so he's got the one off the Monastery Mentor and yep. then the Carnage Drugs, right? And the Carnage Drugs is currently only a 1-1. One, one, no, right? his Lattice. That Carnage oh, Drugs is sure, sure, freaking sure. huge. Yeah, everything is an artifact. Yes. Dear God. That Carnage Drugs is monstrous. <laughs> so Brandon played Kyle and Craig. Kyle's deck, I think, is one that really has explosive potential, uh, and you could see Kyle on camera feel really frustrated. Yeah. Uh, I think it was mostly at the mistakes he, he knew he felt himself making. I think everybody's been out of paper magic for a long time, and it's easy to make mistakes, especially with a deck that has as many interactions as the uh, Lance Archer deck does. Yeah. Uh, and Mason, I think, is, of course, the seminal, the seminal uh, juggernaut in this format. Kind of is uh, if Elaine and John Ryan are not around, then uh, Mason is by default going to get five to six wins. Uh, so we'll, we'll hope we'll hope see. to uh, we'll hope to see him uncrowned, but only in order to uh, to spread the love around. But no, Mason, Mason is an incredibly powerful player. Oh no, Kevin just asked for a, a a pile of swamps. I don't know exactly how many a pile is, but it's probably seventy. I mean, Kevin's probably just screwed up this game, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I can see the, the, the fear, right? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are there, and you have a ton of power on your side of the board. Mm-hmm. In fact, literal power right now. <laughs> Some German swamps over there. So, Relentless Rats. What are your thoughts on this? Is, is, is Relentless Rats the, the choice if you had to pick one of the, one of the infinite cards to draft? Um, I think I mean, Persistent Petitioners is the other choice. Yeah. I think either is fine. I think Petitioners will do okay, but yeah, it is. I feel like it's way easier Here, to sideboard uh, Why don't you pick up that microphone there, Jason? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we, got a, we got a guest mic, so hopefully okay. we'll talk to what I'm talking about. So I, I think the thing for me is that Petitioners is so much easier to sideboard against because you can just splash an Eldrazi Titan and it doesn't matter. Right. Whereas you're much more limited in your mass removal that effectively takes care of Relentless Rats. Right. It's like Wog, Damnation, Dam. And he takes it with the last pick, so no one... No one, no, no one, one knows, yeah. yeah. No, one, no one's planning for that, right? Um, like, and, you know, additionally, Eldrazi Titans are the kind of thing that you can just draft in the middle rounds right. because they fit in your deck. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the Petitioner's pick is, you know, not viable against at least that specific deck. Right. Which, granted, I think if you're drafting that, that's not your plan A. That's your plan B... We're going for, you know, the sideboard similar to the Relentless right. Rats, in which case, all right, yeah, that makes sense. The difficult thing there is, is, is despite there being a mill deck in this format, Cody playing his Brainstorm combo deck, yeah. there were zero Eldrazi Titans or Guy's Blessings. Mm-hmm. Right. I, yeah. I don't know why necessarily. I think it's kind of there was a lot going on. There was a lot. People and didn't necessarily see that as a mill Cody's deck. Cody's deck was also going in a lot of different directions, and I'm not sure if anyone really knew what it was coming, which way it was going to come out at. Yeah. Well, and, you know, we saw it on camera. It's incredibly effective, and he's he has a, te- a proper tutor density to be able to say, all right, I'm going for my plan A this game, or I'm going for my plan B. But as we saw on camera, he has to not be disrupted in that. Right. Yeah. Because once he starts going and starts using those tutors for a plan... So we have a giant car instruct swing, and he's counting the number of artifacts at this point, yeah, which is right. everything. It's, yeah. it's silly. So, so There's a lattice out. We have a lattice car instructed. Oh, nice. Yeah, Kevin's not casting any more spells this game. Uh, Brandon's figuring out if he wants to play this turn or well, a couple turns from now. Funny, before the lattice even hit, Brand, K- Kevin was actually locked out of mana because his first five mana sources were all artifact mana sources. Oh. So the card hits, he was already locked out. Yeah. And then he hit two non but then the, the lattice hit to lock the rest yeah. of the game. So with this, uh, with, with Cody's deck, uh, question for you two. Do you think this is the best Storm deck we've seen drafted so far? Probably. I think so. Yeah. I, it's it's incredibly consistent. It's, yeah. It is, and I think also it's in a game where there are so few counter spells drafted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has them all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nobody else was Brandon's the other one that has I'm them. I'm assuming Kevin is standing up and getting swamps for the sideboard Correct. and he's scooped, and that's why Brandon's picking up his cards. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I'm probably. Mark, mark the right winner, yeah. uh, just just to, in case that wasn't clear. Oh, how do we do that? Oh, right here, there's these two little uh, oh, okay. choices. And it, Left one, right, I see it now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can see whether it's a winner right. or a winner. You're going to take a break for yeah, a bit? Yeah, I'm going to just get another glass of water, and then you two can sit for a few, and then I'll come back in. Sure. 
So while they're sideboarding up, why don't we jump back over and uh, take a look at these, the draft a little bit more? Because I, yeah. I didn't get a chance to talk about it. Oh god, something horrible has happened. Uh, seems like it uh, may be here. Yeah. There we go. That looks mostly better. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's let's look through this draft, and we can be watching the uh, we can be watching the match occasionally as well. Uh, so Kevin's deck. He really leaned into that whole artifact thing. Huh? He really did. Um, and I, I thought for sure he was going Cheerios. And then he, it looked like he audibled away from it and went with traditional affinity. Uh -huh. But then later he goes, all right, second sunrise rally the ancestors. Yes. But the thing is, he doesn't have a way to draw extra cards. He didn't pick Skull Clamp or anything like that, which right. was surprising. Um, he pretty much, like, his sack outlets are Ravager. And right. that's basically it. Especially with something like Power Depot, that kind of pushes you pretty hard. Yeah, I actually like the, the all that glitters play, and I think that there was kind of a there were kind of three decks here. One yeah. of them is like a sacrifice modular kind of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, one of them is this like I'm gonna load up on a on on uh, ginger brew yeah. kind of play. Uh, and then there's also there's this like I'm gonna go wide and kind of beat down with a bunch yeah. of artifacts, robots type of style. And uh, I I think that he has those three strategies, but none of them are enough he doesn't have enough cards to support all of them you know and that's why it's like all right well that's a little yeah, i don't know how i feel about that yeah i i do i do really like the uh the idea of having relentless rats though that yeah. i don't i don't think of it i don't think it's the best deck but i do think it's a really interesting one and a in a different avenue to attack decks when you don't have other choices right yeah for sure because sometimes you're just stuck and you're really you have nothing else you can do yeah and this gives you an out yeah no for sure and i I will say that, you know, had more wrath effects been taken, uh -huh. sure. But he he is going against you know by force, shatterstorm, creeping corrosion. So for his deck specifically, there's plenty of wraths. Uh, I think the pick by Brandon for settle the wreckage oh, was yeah. a very clutch pick uh, for the exact reason of you know it gets around second sunrise, it gets around rally. Yes, because being able to exile is huge. And honestly, I don't know that he has enough like lands for it to really do anything sure. like you're gonna get a couple lands sure but by and large you're kind of hosed yeah true true uh let's uh let's first of all fix our names yes i i certainly don't want to be known as sagan uh, and <laughs> i'm sure you don't want to be be known as me either i i i like being me that's, that's no offense no it's all right i understand yeah. everyone has their own preferences let's i like that we're both jason though. Yeah, it's true. If, if, if I could be Jason, I would definitely tag <laughs> in at any moment for that one. So, uh, but yeah, so it looks like they're still. Uh, they're st I think that at the end of this process, we're gonna have one incredibly well shuffled deck by Brandon, yeah, and one deck that is barely put together by Kevin. That yes. includes a lot of relentless <laughs> rats. Uh, Which the transformative board is not something we've seen a lot of here. Never, in fact. Um, and I think that it's you know. Typically, and I know you and I have talked about this, the uh, World Gorger combo and Legacy that transforms yes. into bug control. Uh -huh. uh, so, you you know, when you have, you can have four ofs and stuff like that, I think it's a lot more common. I feel like in BRD, Agreed. it's literally Petitioners and Thrumming Stone or Relentless Rats and Thrumming Stone, and that's basically your options. Well, this is one of the first times we've seen it be possible. Yes. Yeah. Most, most BRDs at that's this true. point yeah. ha haven't experimented around those things we're going to. Okay, it looks like, uh, looks like they're already all ready to go. Oh, not quite yet jump back here and look at uh one thing i i, I want to figure out is uh is just as matches keep coming in i know eric had to run out for a little bit so he's probably not going to change but seeing other matches that are going uh seems mostly kind of staying the same nemo seems really disappointed with their deck at the end of this yeah uh so it, it's disappointing I, to see but I, th I think it's one of those new to the format uh had watched one but didn't really uh hadn't, hadn't really studied the format yet yeah well, and the interesting thing is, as Hagen and I were talking, like, their deck looks really good. Yes. It does the thing that it does, and it does it really well, and it's very concentrated in that strategy. Correct. And for that reason, we thought it was going to be, you know, nutter butter good. There's just, like, um, not a lot of, like, yes, it does the things that they do, but there's kind of a lot of cards that are second or third best at what they do. 
as opposed to uh, a really concentrated deck like yeah. uh, like John Ryan's that was yeah. a similar deck. Yeah, but just oh, had all was the, the best reason cards. we got rid of draft matters cards. <laughs> sure. Well, no, I mean the, the yeah. one last time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where yeah. it was the reanimator deck. Yeah. Uh, so hyphenated does it count as a transformative sideboard if you take out bad combo cards <laughs> and become a control deck? Yes, I think it does. Yes, I think um, that's that's definitely. I think that counts for sure. Having played a lot of uh, mean deck Doomsday and Legacy, uh, I, I definitely agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're starting off with an Oath of Nyssa from Brandon after Kevin started with a Swamp and passed the turn. I think Kevin's going to be passing the turn next turn as well. Yes, I think we will not see anything from Kevin until at least turn four, but I bet on turn four he plays a Relentless Rat. I, I, think I bet on turn five he does. Is it? Oh, no, you're right. It is three. Yeah. And after that point, I think it'll just be Relentless. Yeah. It will be a Relentless Assault of Rats. Yes. Playing with not the, uh, we're just playing with a different yeah. symbol here, but the same art. We wanted to go with the original border. Yeah. Uh, so, Brandon, ha, if you're Brandon, how do you deal with the endless swarm of rats? Uh, settle the wreckage and pray. Sure, sure. I, I think you mull for settle the wreckage. Um, you understand that he's only going to be he's going to deploy his entire hand the next turn. Yeah. And you've got to pray because there's really not much else you can do. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <gasps> and the first one. Hey. Oh, the assault begins. It came through. Relentless. All right, and we have Kraken of Fetchland here from Mr. Curry. Or Dr. Poo Poo Pee Pee. Yeah, Dr. Poo Poo Pee Pee MD. MD, yes. yes. Can't take away his uh, medical doctorate. No. So Nemo's draft looked really well, um, but Nemo is struggling, and they have said that they realized their mistake. They do not have enough things to throw the stuff in their yard without the red for the looting or the blue for the intuitions. Yeah. They don't, they, they're often casting three spells and then dying because they don't have, the one win they have, they were able to turn to Iona and then turn to Archon, the red deck. Um, Iona against the red deck was enough. Yeah. Right. But uh, they do not have enough to fill their yard for the reanimator. And I was surprised was the, there was no buried alive because we have way more things yeah. to reanimate than yeah. we do enablers. Right. There are only, only two enablers. Yeah. So. That is the, the shortcoming of their draft, they say. Yeah. They felt really strong about it in every other way, but now they realize they're, they're where they fell apart. Yeah. Nice. And it's going to be Nemo and Kyle on camera next. Yep. Looks like. And Cody is now 3-1. Yeah. Okay, so we have a tef uh, Teferi. And Eric is playing Mason at this moment. Okay. Excellent. So Teferi, the, the three-minute Teferi, just resolves. Uh, balancing one of the Relentless Rats. That's a really powerful effect, because Relentless Rats, obviously, uh, it, it gets better in packs, right? That yeah. the entire purpose of the card is to be able to Slam as many relentless rats into play. So if you have a three mana answer that returns it back to their hand and then also continues to do stay in play and do other things, yep. it's not a great spot. So here's the real shenanigan. You do a whole draft, yeah. you last pick throw me some relentless rats, and then you don't actually your relentless rats is your main deck. Yeah. The other deck is your sideboard. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you make that, the people do hate you make people do hate picks the yeah. whole time. Like play it, and then you don't even play it. <laughs> I do love that idea. I, I really what I want to see is Brandon alive for a turn or two against the Relentless Rats, and then slamming a balance. <laughs> balancing off the Relentless yeah, Rats. Balance would be another play for sure. Uh, so we're going to brainstorm here. We don't have a fetch land in play. I don't believe. I think you're right. Uh, uh, so, so Brandon and I were... Prism? Let's see what else we have. Prism and something else. else. Uh, looks like a land. Uh, in hand. I can breeding see. pool. Yep. There's one back. Like one land and something else. I think that's a mind sculptor. Okay. Is the other card. Uh, mind sculptor would also be very good for the yeah. rats. Yeah. What no, that card does is test. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, but yeah, the, the entire premise of Brandon's deck when we were talking about it was I want to cast a fairy and then instant speed of balance. And yeah. th everything else stemmed from that right. core idea. Yeah. So Dovin. Uh, Dovin, of course. Uh, really good against Rolos Rats. Yes. Yeah. One of Steven's favorites. <laughs> Uh, Dovin is one of those cards that I'm still very skeptical of. Elaine loves it. Steven loves it. Uh, it does slow things down, but it just it's it is not a card that pushes the game itself. It just it gives you time to do other so things. So the the, the static ability of Dovin in this match is not that great. No, uh, but the minus one most is. It minus one is, but most matches the static ability of Dovin is super powerful, right? Yeah. So that's the issue here is that it's probably actually a sideboard out. I mean, the minus one's good. Yeah. But it's not. It's the, you. I think Dovin's biggest strength is the static ability. Yeah. Sure. Um, on a walker. Oh, for sure. So it, now Kevin next turn could have six mana to cast Thrumming Stone. 
Yeah. Uh, Throwing stone followed by relentless rats gives him an arbitrary number of relentless rats. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that. I don't know where that is at. That's probably no way to trigger for it or anything. Is stone five normal? Five. Oh, yeah. So six with Dovin. Yeah, six with Dovin. Correct. So we are untapping a land and getting a blocker here, which is important because That's huge. Yeah. If with Nissa. Yeah, if Nissa goes unchecked, this blocker is going to quickly outpace whatever relentless rats um, that we have available. So we're going to minus on a relentless rat. Potentially have a blocker here to trade with. Well, it won't trade. Yes, it will. Sorry, this turn it will trade. I will yeah. This is the last turn that they're able to attack with the rats. Yeah. So it's offering the trade, in fact, attacking yeah. with the with the uh, vigilant. Right. Forest. Yeah. And that's fine. Uh, he's Which I don't think he should do since he already activated Dovin, and that prevents the damage too. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I think you want to activate Dovin afterwards. Yes, right. definitely. Why. But it appears that uh, Kevin either didn't block. Yeah. Kevin didn't block. So, brainstorm. He's brainstorm locked for another turn, right? Yeah, yeah. Turn. He's still he's still brainstorm locked. Okay. Because um, no fetches. Away. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the board as it stands is pretty strong. Uh, I would like to see some. Oh, thrumming stone! You can't because oh, Dovin, no. baby. Hold on, let me. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please go yell, yell real loud. Guys, you can't do that. Pause. You can't do that. You gotta wait a turn. So we're just gonna get more rats here. A third rat. We've tipped our hand though. We know what he's up to. <laughs> yeah, we need the hair dryer back. This I is know. really a shame that we have to walk out there like yeah. this. So we've now got three relentless rats, which makes them four fours. Right? Is it other relentless rats? It is for each other relentless rats. So okay. Two two by default. Yeah, so four four. Let me pull it up there. To verify that I can remember my janky cards that are really bad. Yes, one one for each other creature. Other creature. Yep. So four four. We are going to trade with a three three. I didn't see where that was swinging, so that'll be. So, it is a four four. How is it trading with a three three? What happened there? It's not trading. Sorry, it's okay. killing it's the jump blocking. Yeah, yeah, it's just jumping. Um. Interestingly enough, minusing to fairy here is a really bad play. Because he's got Thrumming Stone in hand. True. And I think he only has one other card, which we have to assume is a Relentless Rat. Well, the Thrumming Stone uh, is going to come down next turn, but it won't actually be able to go off until the turn after yeah. that. So, presumably, Kevin will draw another Relentless Rats in that process Yeah. over the next two oh, turns. Oh, this is huge, because now Brandon has ten now. Because okay. we have Nissa out, and Yabamaya makes all of his lands uh, forests. Okay, does it, what is that? does that unlock something in particular? I don't. I don't believe he can cast anything, but he gets to dump his entire hand effectively. Yes. Um, yeah, Yavamai has got a really pentad cool prism for two. This is a new card for this format, relatively, yeah. and I think it's a really cool one. I like it a lot. I mean, we've seen a bunch of Urborg and like Cabal Coffers. Obviously, that's a combo everybody knows. Um, we don't have anything like that here. Lion's Eye. Yeah. Yep. All right, so we have Teferi now at... Give me a grab the microphone and walk over here so you can see at the same time, hopefully. I'm going to grab your drink there. Oh. So Dovin, we're minusing again, hitting one of those relentless rats. All righty. Life Tap is an undraw undrafted uh, hate piece that doesn't really get picked up. That would have been interesting. Back in the days of generic color hosers for no reason. Yes. Are those, the, those are the blue the one that's... Uh, when, the fo when they tap a force, you get a life? There's a uh, Thought Leech. Is that Thought Leech? Uh, Thought Leech is the is the other combo. Because uh, the there's, oh yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, Thought Leech is is, is another combo, uh, or not Thought, Thought Leech. Leech. There it is. Oh, it's, oh, like, it's an yeah. island. That's no, the that's not the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, there's there's a blue one that's yeah. Uh, it's the crab on the guy's head is the art. It's a weird yeah. art. Yeah. Yeah. Thought. Oh, we've got six mana now, so we can definitely throwing stone here. Right. And Brandon does that. have counter spells. Is that true? He does have counter spell. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was life tap, but that could be the other one. Life, life tap is, is the green. One. Oh thought yeah, lash. It's thought car. lash. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the one I was thinking of either. No, I. It's the. There's it was from old, Ice Age. There's an alpha. No, it's an alpha. It was like. Uh, what the well, there's other? life touch and death touch, or the counter is spell one. Right. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Right, yeah. so, so there's a lot of relentless rats going on. Yeah. Uh, how does Brandon get out of this? This actually seems difficult for him. Settle. Is Set basically all he has. Yeah, sure. He's got to settle. 
Um, so is he just kind of sacrificing for us until he can get there, or is there another? I plan? feel like he might be. Yeah. Dovin presumably is about to die. Yeah. Uh, but in two turns, like Kevin chose to play two of the uh, two of the rats instead of playing the throwing stone here. I mean, yeah. I think that makes sense. The pressure's on. Throwing stone, he can bounce. He can yeah, kill. He can counter. Or, yeah, there's a lot of things bad, that he can stop yeah. the throwing stone plan. Where just you just two rats, the pressure is just yeah. really really on. That takes eats more of his resources. Definitely. Now I have to wonder if one of those was swinging at Brandon because I don't know why you'd chump with a land. Oh, did you see what he just? Drew? I did. That that Ooh. looks like a beautiful, a uh, beautiful pickup. To me. Yeah. Was that, that subtle? That, that, that was a subtle. Okay, that was a sexy pick too. Yeah, we, that was we were excited. We were excited about pick. that pick. So now he needs to somehow bait Kevin into attacking with all the rats. Yeah. Oh, does he have double white? Yes. No, He's there's a. It. Yeah, he has triple white. Has actually. Triple white, yeah. There's a, there's a scrubland and a pinted prison. Yeah. yeah, and a pinted. Yep. So he is he is golden here. So he just has to figure out a way yeah. to to act weak enough to make Kevin attack with everything. Yeah, you just play land and plus pass. This is where I, I, feel I like the one moment I wish we were playing on Moto so I could see how many cards Kevin had in I hand. Know. I mean, this is lethal if he swings all out. Yep. Does he have to? So he has five of the, or yeah, five of them in play right now. Oh, he bounced he one. Bounced one. Interesting. I don't know why you do that. Well, I mean, you don't want to make plays that seem bad. That's fair, yeah. It'll also probably force him to play the fifth one, but that isn't necessarily yeah. good for you. But yeah, with five in play, that means each of them get plus four, plus four. Mm -hmm. So you have five, six, sixes. Yeah. Uh, you could leave one of them back in that world, uh, but the Dovin, Dovin's gone, so yeah, you could leave yeah. one of them back. So, so maybe that's why the thinking is that this forces him to play one anyway, Yeah. because an ideal play from Kevin would be to attack with all but one. Yeah. Although it'll be interesting. Okay, so we've got... Oh, that costs... Well, oh, no, Dovin's gone. Dovin's, Dovin's gone. gone. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to pay five for Thrumming Stone. And then now the bounce is really bad, because we Thrumming Stone after Settle now. Uh, you see what all the oh, cards in his hand? He has Spell Pierce, yes. He does. Yeah, so we're going to fight the fight. If you can um, even get him to attack with three of the rats, you're, you're yeah. pretty good, right? Because the rats are still building on themselves. True. That. And they're all going to attack this time. I mean, if, if right. you're Kevin, why would you... There's one card that stops you. Yeah. Yeah, so, so as Kyle points out, Saddle only has attacking creatures, which is why the, the key is to force yeah. him into attacking with everything. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow, even better. So Spell Pierce it to force the extra mana to go away. Yeah. Clear the way for your Spell Pierce. Nice. And then Nature's Claims. And then the Nature's Claim it. Yep. We're up to 24 life for Kevin. Yeah. yeah. But life total, I feel like one of the rats are taking care of. Now, yeah. He's only got two up, but he's still got the Pentad Prison. Nope. Yeah. So. Oh, there he goes. Well, they're, oh, all, they're, all, they're all, all forests, coming. though, so they all right. double. They're all because coming they, in. They, they do the green and white, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So now we're going to settle the wreckage. Yeah. Boom. And, oh, yeah. They yeah. with the settle. So, yeah, Kevin's going to have all of the lands. And but he's only drawing a card. He even, turn. he even tapped too much mana for it. <laughs> he did, yeah. No, no, he tapped two of the planes. No, because the, they're all forests. So, he, each that taps oh, for I green see. and white, that yeah. taps for green and white. Gotcha. Nissa, Nissa doesn't require you to tap it for green. No, it does no, not. Okay. It's all your forests when they tap. Yeah. Yeah, so Brandon took two damage of mana burn there. That's a real shame. We yeah. need to tap uh, it for for mana. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. strong. So, yeah, settle the wreckage, allowing Kevin to go find four, uh, four basics. Pretty good. So, I mean, the, the downside for Brandon is he still needs to deal with a, a growing relative threats every turn. Yeah. Presumably he can do it, but, I mean... I mean, but how many cards does Kevin have in hand at this point is, I guess, the question. Uh, like, if, one. Even if it's one, right? You draw, yeah. Every turn there's going to be a 2-2 two -two dropping. Right. That's fair. I, Brand, Brandon will drop a 3-3 three -three every turn. Especially now that he's land thin. Now it's four lands thinner. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be more rats. Right. I, I think Brendan will be fine. He really needs a Karn Lattice to shut down the lands. Yeah, that's that's what he needs, True. is Karn Lattice. If he gets that, then he's golden. What is that above the Pinted Prism? Above Oath of Nyssa. Oath, okay. Yeah. Which we've already, you know, right. obviously drawn plenty of benefit from. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a Relentless Rats. Ooh, it's Shocking. Passing after that. So do you think Kevin, I haven't looked at this list closely enough, is he... Really running one throwing stone, the rest rats. I, I feel like he is. Yeah. yeah, maybe, maybe. No, you don't run plating because you have to dilute the yep. relentless rat plan to do that. Did we just yeah. emblem Anissa? What's her emblem even do? Goes and gets, it gets all your forest, all yeah. your forest, and makes all your lands indestructible. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it is relevant with the three three creatures, right? Because you have an yeah. army of three three indestructible forests. So, with yep, okay, yeah. making sure. indestructible is fine. Yeah. 
I mean, I've lost many a game because I could just never get through the blockers of an army of three three lands. Yeah. You know. So is that what happened? There's no more. Yeah. So he grabbed. I think he grabbed a breeding pool there. Yes. Maybe that's his last forest. Yeah. So we're gonna play a land tap. A forest. We're gonna suspend an ancestral visions. Uh, and it's worth noting now that every turn, Brandon is gonna get an extra indestructible three three. Mm-hmm. Yes. And. Yeah. So we're we're effectively the second that then and they're vigilant obviously. Right. Yeah. So we can just swing indefinitely. Yeah. So we're basically on pace so, I mean, to just hold even. The the yeah super relevant here. The yeah. Indestructible. I mean it basically indestructible means that yeah, yeah. heaven has no outs anymore. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Because even though even though his rats are probably going to get bigger eventually, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have yeah. yeah and, he skips see, and there we go. Every forest is a land. Yeah. You know every yeah, because yeah, of yeah, every land is a forest yeah. because of Yavamaya. So I just have all of these indestructible three threes that you can't. Yeah. Do. And that nice. gets Brandon the 2-0. That was, that was beautiful. That was well played. I, I honestly think if he hadn't found that settled, the game would have gone the other way. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Big, big, and I I haven't asked him, but I have to assume that settle was for decks like Kevin's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Draghi. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's, there's an absurd number of aggro decks this time. Brandon, Compared, played, that, Brandon played that really well. He I did. Honestly. He did. Yeah. I think yeah. there's a lot of ways that you could have not found the edges, especially in that first game where there would be easy to get overconfident and tap out. Uh, in the second game, it'd be easy to uh, to just to, to try to like yeah. bounce the little tempo game that he was doing right. instead of uh, digging deeper for the. I, yeah. I think he played it very well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. All, All right, right. So I don't know who's coming on. Oh no, we we did hear who's coming on next. Actually, I I don't know actually. Uh, Cody and Kyle. Yeah, apparently Kyle has requested that this match no, be on camera. Nemo and okay. Kyle. Nemo and Kyle. Nemo and Kyle. Okay. Yes. Uh, so so yeah, I, I don't know what exactly uh, Kyle has in store for this one. But okay. Uh, Kyle wanted to maybe redeem himself on camera. Yeah, we'll I, I think so. Uh, do you two want to hang out in here? Sure. Or, yeah, uh, sure. One of you on a break? We, we got you, you, we got you it. You've been here for a minute. Oh, I'm good. I went to the gas station. Mike, so. Mike me up over there. Hit this one down. Yep. All right, well, good to talk to you all for a minute. Yes, and, for sure. Uh, I'll be going back to listening. Yeah. Uh, did you get some of that cheesecake, Mark? I didn't. I'll talk to you back. Alrighty, so we've got Nemo and Kyle. As we said, uh, so let's pull up standings real quick. Let's see yeah. where we're at. Let's see what we got. As I said, Nemo definitely uh, realized the the flaw in their plan. Um, uh, Not enough enablers, but yeah. tons of. So Eric's still in chaos. game four. Eric did his three games and then took off to go home real quick. Yep. Get some meds he needed to get. Yep. Uh, Cody is now three and one. Uh, Mason is two and zero, oh, and then playing Eric right now. So one of those is going to get knocked into a loser bracket. Not yep. loser bracket, but well, yeah, one of them is going to lose their right. first round. Uh, I'm assuming Jago has another game since the one and one hasn't yeah. been updated. Uh, so Kyle, if you can see if Jago has another game, uh, that would be my one. Kyle is uh, one and two at minimum. Brandon is one and is one and two. Yep. Is that anything that I hate? Nemo is it? Said? Nemo, no, Nemo won one. Oh, no. Nemo okay. beat um, Jocko. Okay. So my understanding is that Nemo turned to... Um, yeah, oh, that just scrolled down. Uh, whatever. My understanding is that Nemo turned to uh, both um, Iona one game and then Archon. Oh, uh, that's Archon right. Yeah, yeah. and Archon right. the next game. Right. Yeah. It was it was turn two Iona against Mono Red, turn... One Archon. Right. And okay, sure. You, yes. you got me. Yeah. What can I do? Nothing. Actual nothing to that. All right. So you've got Kyle on the right then, it mm-hmm. looks like. You can tell by the hands. Yeah. It's it's bad when you've played enough magic with people to recognize them by their hands. So this is, I believe, the first match of this. Yeah, I think they're coming in. What was Kyle's record? Uh, one two. I have that right here. Yeah. Um, oh, I think we got him reversed. That's Kyle. This on the Kyle. right. Okay. Yeah. You are good to go. Where are everyone's Kyle? Is 
Kyle, is Nemo 1 3 or 1 2? Nemo? Okay, I think we're going to be close to gold. So, yeah, I guess we're, we're golden then. Let's see. Yeah, 1 2 is going to be. 1 3. Okay. One, three. okay. And then Kyle is 1 2. Okay. Is Nemo the only first time VRD player we have this time? No. Okay. Um, first time ever? Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I know there's a few that are, it's their first time here. here right? Yes. Yeah. But yeah, but Nemo is the only first ever. Okay. All right, so we're off to uh, land Island Lantern start. Oh my God. There's the vamp tutor. So we're drawing that, and Nemo's going to reveal the top. We're going to land. Less relevant, I suppose. Get an Emery and a recall. Oh, World Gorger. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I want to see you mill uh, No. We've got Dark Rit, Vamp Tutor, Necro. Just mill it, and then just go. Yeah. <laughs> just mill it, Kyle. Just mill, mill it. it. Mill it. Do it, you coward. Crook. Do it! Do it! Oh, we've got... Oh, no. That's bad. That's Tinker Blightsteel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've got Lantern out. The Tinker Blight's nice with the Lantern Blight, because you, you, you got these little dinky artifacts. Oh, we've got some bang going on. So. Yeah. Sun Shower Generation. Sun Shower. Yeah, you've got these dinky artifacts that you don't necessarily need oh, to call. use. <laughs> Got a reveal from Lantern. Yeah, yeah you, you reveal every card, Kyle. Galarian Academy. Okay. So we're going to play land for turn here. Do we drop another artifact? Just tinker two or three? Three. Yeah, we got we got to tinker next turn. Which means World Gorger needs to happen yesterday. Yeah. I, th I think we end step... Vamp Tutor or Entomb? Because we have Dark Rit. Um, well, yeah, we can land Entomb. But you have a kill to go to. No, you it. don't. But you know Blightsteel's getting you in two turns. Right. So I guess knowing you have two turns, you can kind of... Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, because you have the Lantern. Yeah. Vampiric seems really bad against Lantern. Yeah, right. <laughs> Real bad. Although, harder to mill. Got our Entomb in. Oh, we're sacking Lantern here. Shuffle it. Shuffle him up, buddy. Cody is now 4-1. Right. But so, Cody or Eric is probably going to be champ here. Which, so we lose the, um, you know, he loses the lantern, so he doesn't have the artifact to do the tinker with next round. Yeah, that's true. Right. So that's that, true. Is, that is something. Right? Yeah. I mean, Which, it seems like a very much a fear play there to go for yeah. shuffle, because we know you've got tinker coming up. Man, I'm still mad he didn't take oath. He thought about it, he said. I, w I wanted oath into World Gorger Dragon so bad. It was a well-played <laughs> game, Brandon. So Brandon's just yeah. joined us for a few, sitting in. Hey, um, everybody. Yeah, that, that was... Clutch. Yeah, that by was the a, way, you, you you played that settle perfectly. I don't know you. if it was intentional or not, but that was oh, yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah of course it was. Yeah, I mean, uh, just the skill level that I possess. <laughs> how else could I have done it? Yeah, uh, Ooh, but no, I appreciate trophy it. Trophy on our Emery there. What a what a handsome looking token they have yeah, there. Yeah, that is. That's great. Doctor PP Poo Poo MD is probably the I mean the most storied and skilled physician. <laughs> Uh, this or any this side of the Mississippi. Fart hospital. Yeah. So Eric, are you saying that um, he they're in the third game against Eric Mason and Eric, or in the th game three? Um, I don't know. Third match at two. Oh, okay. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say this side of Sacred Sacred Heart Hospital. Yeah. Easily. And the other side, probably. And the other side, probably. I, I yeah. bet. I mean, I just I don't know. So he's got a little one one from the uh, Forbidden Orchard. Forbidden Orchard there. Repeal. Oh, we're going to repeal to draw, draw a card. card. So we're digging at this point yep. for Shredder. And now he's got another Tinker target. Yep. 
which is what we were looking for the entire time. Yeah. All right, so this is pretty quickly getting out of hand here. Yeah. So how, how now that you've played a few rounds do you feel about your list? Uh, it's weird not doing a meme pile of garbage. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. <laughs> um, I think that it's handling pretty well. The mana isn't as good as I would like it to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's just on me not getting the right numbers of yeah. basics or whatever. Uh, I've dark th- written to entomb here, by the way. Yes. Um, and, you know, uh, I, th- I feel like now that I picked up my first W, uh, going forward, just probability speaking, uh, I should, I, you know, given the fact that that end of that first game against Kevin, uh, was the first time I saw my soul ring. Yeah. I feel like there's, you know, increased. <laughs> You're probably okay. Yeah. I, I own an Amy blue. Yep. I am dance of the dead on. I have an Amy blue. How do you feel about your burn? Uh, I don't feel terrible. I don't feel great about it. I think, so um, I would really love to be on the play for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a lot of things that I'm going to have to sideboard out, but, yeah. Uh, Who did you, know, you lose to? I lost to Kyle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, got got comboed out as one does. Yeah. And then uh, I went to a dramatic game three against uh, against Mason, where he got all of his amulet titan right. pieces nice. right before yeah, I it was a tight, tight game. Yeah. Right, right yeah. before I was able to drop my uh, Karn into Helm. Or yeah, yeah, I had Leyline in Helm, and I. Right. Oh, name in blue here's strong, right? So he shuts off the team. He knows we've got the team to play. So um, now we're on the lantern playing without lantern. Right. Because lantern's gone and emery's gone. Right. Oh, but spell we have a pyrite spell bomb. N- not, not pyrite. Or aether, aether rather. Spell aether spell bomb. So this is brutal here. Yeah. We can bounce the Iona and Amy Blue. Yep. And, uh, Pretty much out of, out of luck at that point. We can yeah. just tinker from there. Yeah. So... That, that was your other loss, Glenn, was Amulet and Free? Uh, yes. Yeah. Right, that is a brutal spell bomb. Yeah. Like, having that spell bomb there. You want to put a uh, spell bomb up in the P and oh, yeah. P? Yeah, so spell bomb is... Uh, I think we're fine. the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, One part of Bomberman, but not really part of Bomberman at all. I feel like... It, you know, at this point, Assassin's Trophy's been spent, so the only removal that Nemo has it is an unsummon. Yeah, effectively, that is, yeah. you know, but it is not blue, and that got you. Yeah, that's the that is his thing. only answer to Iona. Yeah. yeah, that is a very clutch play. Yeah, yeah very. Uh, I feel like if I'm, so we got servant oh, down, so we can tinker for that too. Yeah. Also, with that Iona, you know, if he had managed to get that painter servant down afterwards, he can just change yeah. all of his stuff to yeah. a different yeah. color. Yeah, to a different color, yeah. So we're going to duress and grab the tinker. Yep. yep. That's, that still feels play. good. That feels, that feels nice. Yeah. Which, again, I'm still unsure why Kyle didn't go for the tinker. He's there. got Necro in hand. Oh, he does have Necro He's in hand. He's got Necro yeah. in hand. Oof. And we milled his other unmarked grave. So he has Necro in hand, but he doesn't have anything he can get rid of. Because Iona is in hand. Yeah. But I, you know, I'd tinker for Codex Shredder there and get Blightsteel and just flip it. Right. Would be. Blight steel is a pretty good card. Yeah, it's pretty good. Is pretty that is that is that the combo we used on you was blight steel? No, I never saw it. Okay. Uh, I would have, I would have gladly had him get the blight steel out because um, I was sitting on Hercules recall. But oh yeah. Just uh, just ashy me, ah. in, into uh, into mana screw. I just yeah. you know I had my Couldn't fetches. Yeah. No, nah, they they don't they don't work. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, Painter is an addition, as my name is Bronis points out. So it does not. Yeah, that's true, right. yeah. yeah. So, thank you, Bronis. Uh, so we're milling Animate Dead now. Eventually, you're going to anim- you're gonna mill like an Archon, right? Oh, that's huge. Bizarre there. Bizarre. Yeah. So there's Iona in the bin. Yeah. So he's got... Oof. Well, how many cards in hand does he have? Because he might have to pitch yeah, the whole two. thing. Oh, he had to? He had, he had Iona. Okay, so he gets to keep yeah. one. Yeah. So he gets to keep it. Right. And it looks like he has enough mana to cast it. Yeah, yeah. he does. We're gonna get rid of. Yep. Yeah. Land two lands and an Iona to Necro Iona, naming purple. Yeah, probably. Or white. Right. Oh no, 
it's blue. Okay, shocker. So he can, I mean, he can roll draw into a oh. uh, grindstone. You know. Yeah, well, he can draw into it, and he can Urza into it. More importantly, right. Um, yep. So we're gonna spin the wheel. So do you think this is the strategy you'll use going forward then, or do you think you're in gonna... future VRDs? Yeah. No. This is terrible. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> I I need more altar of the brood. Yeah. Nobody drafted. He it. is going to grindstone. Yep, literally, oh, he hit oh, off the wow. top. He literally grindstoned off the top Ugh. of Urza. That but is uh, how? Yeah, he, he looks like he only tapped five for the Urza activation. Is it seven or is it five? It's five. five. Okay. Yeah, it's five. Um, oh my he, god! Hit the hit the grindstone yeah. off the top. Nemo fought back. I mean, Nemo. Yeah, tried. no, he, Nemo yeah. did good. Which I bizarre I didn't even think about if they bounce it that's a great way for them to get it back mm-hmm. it is bizarre into the bin so yeah you'll you'll go back to the meme piles yeah uh, so Mark didn't ask if I wanted to fill in until uh, like yeah, maybe a, like not even a week ago yeah and last time I just grossly over prepared and came up with too many cards that kind of fit and I. It, it, I'd taken way, paralysis. just took way too much time yeah. off to remember all the intricacies of drafting and, yeah. you know, yeah, feel good about it. And yeah. so this time I'm like, I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to show up. I'm going to generally have a plan to run a super friends list because planeswalkers yeah. are very, very strong. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you just get to a critical mass and dope, yeah. uh, I am feeling now that I'm playing it, that Bant is not the ideal super friends list. What? It, it feels very crowded, and, like, the Planeswalkers are very, very good, but the su- it feels like the support cards you need to make it run super smoothly mm-hmm. are, are kind of hit or miss, in, yeah. like, contextually. Um, there was a... This is the weirdest draft we've ever had, or, like, relative to the others in terms uh, of counterspells. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I yeah. think that Grixis... Because Grixis has much better top-end walkers. Right. That you know, like a lot, the, of, the, a lot of the nickel bosses, a lot of the walkers yeah. just don't like win. They do yeah. amazing things. The right. walkers win. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And so that's kind of why I was, you know, once I got, you know, the mock sapphire and the soul ring, I was like, let's just do Karn Micah Synth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the question is, how does that work against Painter? Was he able to cast that grindstone? Because um, Painter named Red. So he was able yeah, to cast. Yeah. Painter it. named Red. So it is the uh, paint the grindstone was a red spell, not a blue spell. Yeah, which heads up play. Right. Yeah, by Monsieur Kyle. Yeah, which again. Right. Now Nemo had, had Nemo had gone the other way where, because the painter was already out. Yeah. So Nemo probably should have named red. Yeah. Yeah. On the on the on the Iona. recast on and the Iona yeah. on the recast because right. then nobody casts anything for the rest of the game and your Iona. Right. Yeah, a pretty good clock compared to what you're looking at. Right. So uh, that, that there's you have a match ready for you, by the way. Tight. Well, uh, lovely talking to you, gentlemen. Yes, always okay. a pleasure. Good luck with the rest of your matches. Yeah, pull up Urza real quick. I can't remember if it's cast or play. I believe it is cast. For what? Urza. Lord. It's cast. It's cast. It is. Okay. It is cast. Yeah. You would think I'd know because I used to play Urza and C. It is 100% cast. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Okay. Cool. It's a mind spell. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I think that is the, you know, the mistake Nemo made there is that on the second cast, the painter was already out. Yep. It should have named the card. Have to ask Mimi about that afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh right, man. These days you need caffeine. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm off the coke. I don't know what it is. I'm just drinking more beer. Look <laughs> oh, that's worse. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> okay, we have some entertainment here. Look at Mimi was Oh yeah, that's there. literally the greatest music video oh, of all time. The He-Man. Uh, yeah, the He-Man four non blondes. Yeah. In the history of the internet, I can't recall a better music video ever. <laughs> I, I can't recall a better piece of pop culture. That's just it's so good. All right. I have a fun option for you. Yeah? All right. Hit us here, here, Mike, here. 
Yeah. Or just end with an update. What do we have? So we have a sideboarding question for a judge that just came through. So I'm going to ask it live on air, uh, which is, if I have an Iona on the stack from a reanimate targeting Iona, and in response I flash in dress down, what happens, judge? So the the issue there is that Iona has an ability that says you can't cast spells named with the color, Mm -hmm. and it has when it enters the battlefield you name the color. Uh, If you have dress down in play, Iona doesn't have any abilities. So the ruling is that when Iona comes into play, uh, it won't have any abilities, so you won't be able to name a color. Then even after dress down leaves, it's just a vanilla. It's a vanilla it's seven seven. Yes. Yeah. So so it's a. So it does work out the is way. Is Iona it a CIP? It comes into play versus a instead of as or is it an as the question I have. And, and this this is exactly the the question that. Uh, this is why I'm coming in to verify live on air to see if enters it enters the call. battlefield as, as, as it enters the battlefield. So it should, she does actually name. She gets the name of color. Okay, in that case, I'm going to go and fix the ruling yes, I just made. Yes, yeah. she gets the name of color. Uh, this, this again, not a big deal because he's still right. sideboarding, but yeah, right. But that is the shenanigans that we could have talked about, like when we talked about dress down yeah. as, as a pick, right? Like, yeah. In this case, um, had that been a comes into play effect, yep. Right, then it that we have a different answer. Looks like we're reaching for the deck and we're taking dress down out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> dress down still good. Archon, Archon cool, right? Oh like, yeah, dress down yeah, still yeah. Dress, dress down still very solid. Yeah. It would still be solid in this sideboarding thing. Yeah. Right. Oh, looks like we are just straight up taking it out. They might have decided the extra. Hand. I mean, yeah. there are times where I just like a cheap card like that that replaces itself. Yeah, you know, sure. Whatever. Yeah. Just, like, slide that right in. Yeah, the fact that it replaces itself is why I think it's a fine sideboard option. Yeah. Even knowing like, all right, well, fine, whatever. She still gets to name the color. Right. Like you still get that turn. Right, where you can okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and tinker blight steel while I'm waiting for this Iona to come into effect. Right. Yeah. Right. There you go. Yep. There you go. All right, so it looks like we are drawing our opening hand here if we are Nemo. Yeah. Kyle, probably not. So Kyle is up. We have Oh, oh nice. nice. That's a decent one. I mean, it's not bad at all. So several of those. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously yeah. you can use it aggressively in your own stuff. Right? Yeah. Like Thing of the Ice. True, it does get flying back, you're right. Yeah. This is the interesting things that you only see in EDH or VRD. Right. Although I guess, honestly, that's perfectly viable in Legacy if Reanimator was a deck still. Right. Rip, Mystical Tutor. Yeah, the Uro Stack Trigger is a big one, definitely. Like that yeah, that's true, does. too. Yep. Uh, Nobody picked Uro. Brexian. One of the stacks itself is what I was going to say. Uh, Dreadnought. Yeah, Dreadnought. Yep. I used oh, to run. I, I used to run Dread still. Yeah. 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 Was uh, back when you know, countertop existed and you could just float a stifle or a knot on top forever to counter all their spells. Anybody seen Joe Lossett lately? I no. Yeah. yeah. I think counters. I, I I think counters also do that. You just can't Turn one grindstone. Yeah, you can't rely like at the top. I guess is the issue. Yeah. I just feel like grindstone's bad here. Like I never want to activate it against the reanimator player. No. Oh look at that! We've got an enabler. They said that was the trouble with their deck. Oh. We didn't have a. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, when Joe when Joe Lassett was on his miracle stream and then got infinite free wins on the back of people just like sick of getting roped. So the thing about as enters is it comes in. Oh, grindstone's in the bin. Okay. Before you are even so making that explore. choice, right? Like it 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 comes in. It happens before it enters, oh, so it's not bridge. a creature yet. Yeah. Um. So bridge like something bad. like. Me- Met, Torpor Orb doesn't show up meddling mate. Yeah. Anime did. Are, 
Are we getting it? Is this happening? Are we getting a World Gorger? We're getting a World Gorger combo on stream, aren't we? We are. are We're we, getting a World Gorger. Do we have a kill of it? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, oh, that happened! I love Bitter Ordeal. Oh! I love Bitter Someone Ordeal. sniffed that. That was amazing! I love Bitter Ordeal. Oh. Oh. Man. We can... Oh. <laughs> we can say it happened. You saw it here. Oh, STLVRD. <laughs> Boom. Oh, man. <laughs> we we had the World Gorger Bitter Ordeal win, baby. We got there. All in hand. This is just when we got oh, the unmarked man. grave. Yep. Just I had it all. Day, pull out that world order. Oh. Boom, boom, go. Oh, Good now we see, some, we, see some, we see some change up in the hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, again, dress down looks solid match. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, I think dress down is solid match. So, Absolute, what did they win with? Uh, do you want to bring it up? Okay. okay. Bitter so, Ordeal. Bitter Ordeal, right? So, Bitter yep. Ordeal, a classic favorite of mine. I used to run it in fairies as a board tech <laughs> uh, for when people would damnation away and yep. stuff, you know? Uh... Or after big, big combats, uh, or you know, I, even though you can see control, I would damnation away their board and then do this sometimes. Uh, so you, it is Gravestorm. This is a future site uh, mechanic that does yep. not come back. Yet. Nope. Um, but when you play this spell, you get a storm. You copy for each permanent put into a graveyard this turn. Notice not from play, right? It's just for each permanent yeah. put into a graveyard. Into so a graveyard. you could mill yourself a ton. Yep. And do it. Right, like you could. There's a lot of things you could for each permanent put into a graveyard. Yep. You could mill them a ton and do it. Yes, and cool dark and art. Yeah, yeah. no, it it is. And it then is you wild. get to basically search a library and pick a permanent. So the thing about bitter ordeal is even if you're not full comboing off, like I use this really effectively in two on just like four creatures died in a combat or something, yeah. and I'm like, cool, I'm just going to go get your four win cons. Yeah, you exactly. Because <laughs> back in those days, five color control only had four like, win like cons. Like I did in Veer yeah. did the same thing. Like, yeah. yeah, it's just like okay, here. I sacked this to uh, Doretti. I sacked this. Yep. I sacked this. I'm gonna go get your three big win cons. I'm yeah. gonna go get your vault and yeah. like you can't your do yeah that. your yeah. vault and your Tez and whatever yeah. else and just get there. Yeah, I don't even care about Tez anymore. I took your yeah. vault. Like yeah. you have all your enablers. Yeah. Well, I don't care. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that was. I'm like I am so ecstatic right now that I yeah. got to see that on camera. Ooh, ooh, Mox, Mox Diamond. Diamond. Mox Diamond. Mox, Mox Diamond. Diamond. We've got we've got ourselves a ooh. Mox Diamond ooh. Lotus. So yeah, so this whole ooh. draft starts off with um Kyle taking the ancestral yeah. with pick one instead of the Lotus. And then we end up with no Nemo way. No with way. the Lotus, right? No way. Oh come on. Come on. Uh That's a good question, Ragers. Um, Interesting. Moof. Kevin. Uh, Kyle, can you send Mark in? Yeah. We're going to go on mute for a second to confer once Mark gets in here. Hey. Yeah. So, Kyle, for, can you for, send Mark in, please? If you hear it, listen. For anyone that didn't see it, what we just saw was basically. Sorry. We. We're investigating. Yeah. We'll be right so what what happened? Yeah. Please post the world gorger clip. Yeah. Um, so what happened basically was we had a lotus and a mox diamond for grave, which ooh, you may suggest this card in play. Should pick one of the cards. Yeah. Um, so clip that clip. Up. We're gonna go on mute. Check this clip out for just a second here.
All right, we we got a, we got a little bit of investigating to do here, guys. Because uh, here's the we, thing: we you get off, get the clip yeah. off. got so excited for nothing i'm crushed now that's awful everything is terrible okay we're calling that game a draw all right okay so everything is terrible draw. yeah that's what kyle said we're calling that game a draw yeah. and then we're fixing the iota issue yep so we had a whole lot of emotional explosion for bitter ordeal for, for not. nothing i'm so mad So we just, we, so we all picked up, we just called that game a draw, and it's just game game. Yeah. Everything is terrible. Yeah. We're backing up the, uh, to, to find the Goblin Dark Dwellers. Okay. Uh, Sorry, we're backing up to find the Goblin Dark Dwellers for this game, and the previous game is ruled a draw, uh, so they're going to be continuing on uh, with Kyle up 1-0-1, one, oh, one, yeah. technically. But Kyle's okay. up one game, uh, and despite the amazingness of seeing World Gorger happen, it doesn't actually count as a win this time. Yeah, I quit. Not really. I'm not going in. Yeah, I'm. I'm super not happy about that. Right. <sighs> good job, Twitch Trap. Yes, yes, thanks, guys. Really good job, Twitch Trap. Thank you very much. Dream crushing. I hate you all. No, I love you all. I'm kidding. That's, good match. Yeah. Don't let me not kidding. No, I, I, I'm. I'm kidding. Hey, we are. Yeah, Saint sorry, Lotus. no, sorry to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> We are St. Lotus, and uh, this is VRD7 uh, yeah. here. We, we do these quarterly. This is our we fall do. edition. Our next one is coming up January 8th. If you're interested in participating, let one of the four of us know. Right, Eric. Myself, Eric Levine, Mark Kederberg, Mr. Hagen here. Yeah, we don't guarantee a spot, but uh, we will talk to you and yep. talk through and see what we can work out. You know. Uh, so Clutcher's good here. He's going to put in a lot of work. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, I think we... Um, and we've got a decay on Lantern, and I have to assume. Yep. And we've got a Sadisi as well. Yeah, I mean, so the, the Lantern doesn't, you know, it get, reveals information if it is potent. Yeah. And in case he gets rid of the oof. Yep. Right? Uh, now, but obviously, like, Spellbomb doesn't work yeah. because of that. So, I mean, a lot of Kyle's removal that would get rid of it. Repeal. I think. Repeal is going to be It's basically all he has. Yeah. Uh, unless he has something that comes out of the board. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was basically the Unmarked Grave got Iona, which it couldn't. So, now we have an Emery. Ooh, that's really good. Spellbomb, a fluster storm, which I don't think Kyle is. I don't think he really cares about fluster storm in this matchup. That's a really interesting card to board in. I mean, I guess it gets rid of like any animate dead. It stops a loop on right, World right. Gorger, but I'm not sure. Does it stop a loop? Because you can fluster the animate dead. On the original animate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If they're if they're happy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of strange decks in this format. I especially in this draft, there's a ton of them. Yeah, so got some good spell bomb. There's gonna be an option to work out the repeal or spell and get yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, launch and surgical spell bomb, I think. Yeah, so we're targeting spell bomb with Emery and then we're surgically spell bomb. Right. So surgicals are interesting in this format, you know, mainly because it's free. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, it can't answer bitter ordeal. Very true. Yeah, surgical is interesting in this format because we do have so many. Like, I mean, it's obviously it's a Highlander right. format. Yeah, um, you could you could answer it with bitter ordeal. Like every copy of bitter ordeal is one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're only gonna get one unless you have, like the relentless rest deck, which is. Uh, ah. <laughs> but uh, but you know you do get to remove a key piece. You know, yeah. So uh, which is pretty, can be pretty strong. Yeah, and especially now. I don't know if I love it here. Uh, but no. you know, but it is a strong piece, uh, just in case he gets the um, uh, bounce or the dress yeah. down to remove abilities yeah. for the turn. Yeah, dress dress down would also be very for good for turn. Yeah. Okay, so we have Courser in our hand though, so we can Courser this guy. Uh, I didn't see what else Nemo had. Yeah, what? Uh, what Courser uh, recruit. recruit Wait, no, no, he didn't. No, Courser Mason has Courser. He looked like Courser. I do not know. I do not know. 
I don't believe so. We were just asked if the blue pill is fatal at this point. We agree with that, but we're not sure. Yeah. Right. So we got subtlety. We got tinker. Yep. So the artifacts are the artifacts are super super relevant because of tinker. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. can tinker for blight, blight steel, steel, which right. still is fine. Yeah. It turns out. Yeah, so we're we're probably gonna subtlety. Oh, and tune, that's what it was, not corpse of Right. I have to assume there's an enabler in there. And the other card in this is Gain Tune, so that's fine. Gain tune tune on Iona. Yeah. And that we can get. Yep. Yeah, that is not an unmarker. Correct. And Iona on blue seems pretty much just game here. Right, because you got his artifact shut off and then this guy. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, just for our own good. Uh, I don't think Kyle, yeah, I don't think Kyle has any copy stuff in here. No. Not a single one. Yeah, yeah. He can't activate artifacts. And... Oh, my. We just got an untapped step with a slaver. There is a subtlety and a blue yeah. card to pitch in response to the animate dead. Yeah. So that's going to delay it, whatever. It was. That's we, true. Yeah, yeah. That's going to delay it a turn. So. Yeah. We're going to Inventor's Fair back a lantern. Yeah. Oh, that's a shredder. That's a land that comes into play untapped matters is the hand in this card that he is at this point. Yeah. Um, I wonder if Nemo's playing around the subtlety and is waiting for his second second card. Yeah, Oof, Oof is out there. Was, was he about to hard cast subtlety? I think so. Going for a beater? Yeah, Does seems... subtlety bounce a permanent? No. I didn't think no, so. Subtlety is, is not density. Okay, so uh, it's, it's just a blocker at this point. Transmute artifact. Yeah. How are we transmuting artifact? One target creature spell or planeswalker spell. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. Is that transmute not tinker? Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, he's, he cast transmute. Yeah, so he can't play a spell. Yeah, I, I have no idea at this point. Oh, he used he pitched transmute for the subtlety. Oh, so okay, that, that makes no sense. Way. Pitched, then it goes away from your turn? Yeah. But why would you want it to go away from your turn? I don't know. That's a very good question. Is he being Torpor Orb or Bridge? Artifact. Yeah, he just said Artifact. Right? I think so. Why is that? Is that a bottle of cloister? Did you sign up Light Still? No way. You keep that in. There's no way. That was a confusing line of play. Yeah. And Kyle's a better player than I am, so I assume there was a reason for it. Yeah. But I don't know what any of that reason was. No, me neither. That's that's a very interesting sequence. Ooh, that's a bizarre. Yeah, that line of play was confusing. We got rid of Sidisi. And I can't see what else. Maybe it is Voodoo. Uh, no, Blooming Marsh. Oh, we're tapping two mana. No. Well, we're, I'll run it. We'll run it through uh, Eric the L three here later too. I mean, I have an L two, and I think I do. So I, I don't know. I'd have to. Yeah. That. We'll, ask, to we'll ask Mr. Levine. Yeah. The Raging Levine. Which, if you ever see him in an event, he will sign your Raging Levine sticker. Yes. You uh, missed some. <laughs> you, missed, you missed a lot, Blake, while yeah. you were out sleeping. Yeah, there's... Napping, playing Destiny, whatever. There's been weirdness. Yeah, uh, lots of weirdness here. That's Ashiok. That seems really good. By Iona. By, by Yard. Yep. Oh, that's game. I feel like... Maybe I'm wrong. I just feel like that's got to be game, right? 
Well, and it was it. Was an anime dead? Was it was a bizarre? If he gets an anime, he can pull it off. We're on the Tezzeret plan now for Kyle, right? We've got to be. We're just getting a ton of artifacts back that we can make into dudes. And then he's got, did he bring in the Rise and Shine? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. You just throw the long game and Rise and Shine and. Draws because we're behind. Yep. So we've already had decay go away. So at this point, we've got vampiric tutor, which I mean, we I, I feel we, like we do choose a call. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I feel like if I'm vampiricing, yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting I assassin's trophy here, right? Yeah. I mean, what are you to hit Ashia? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've you've already taken everything but my archon at this point, right? So oh, trophy's in the bin now. Oh, so our in-house L three says you do get collect rift. Yeah. Suspend can stop. Get rid of collect rift too. Oh, suspend can get rid of collect rift. Right. Yeah, this game's over. Yeah. Yep. It's not a enters the battlefield trigger. It's an as it as it enters. It, it happens before. It's it's really it's like naming with a pin name. Yeah. Or a revoker with a or for a right. Not a trigger. Yeah. It happens before the creature even hits the battlefield. So we're flavoring. Oh, yeah. This this is game. Yeah, yeah. At this I, point, I, there's I, no way. Does Nemo feel land life? I wonder if Nemo land is not about to land this game. Yeah. Like Nemo, like they yeah like multiple times. They've been stuck on mana, and it seems yeah. like it's not what they want. Yeah, we've been on that for too long. Yeah. Our our L three and L two is in house ruled it one way. If we're wrong in the long run. We're wrong in the long run. But uh, yeah. But it's not that it refers to triggers, it's that it's yeah. Moving. Yeah. <laughs> so this 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 is then this has to be the game at this point. Nemo has no outs. Yeah, I don't I We've don't. we've milled out here. We have an emery to keep slaver lock going, although we don't have enough mana to cast and uh slaver every turn. Right? Oh, there's a creeping corrosion. All right. Yep. We're just gonna bizarre that away. Thanks. Oh God. Oh. <laughs> Slaver with bizarre. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Slaver bizarre is so brutal. Yeah. Oh man. So Ky yeah, the, the Kyle playing the smart long game knows the lifting the dead. I don't get the subtlety line of play there, but build up the artifacts. And, yeah. And you know, you know, you've got suspend or yep. solid removal. Now you've got Ashiok to. Necro goes, anime dead goes. Yeah, we're just if we're Nemo, we're <laughs> we're dead. Anime's on top. Yeah, there's a monolith. Yeah, and we're getting a slaver back. We don't have any mana rocks left, so we can keep that reanimate though. We're not gonna we're not gonna lay, we're not gonna shred that away. Yeah, you keep, you keep that reanimates all. Oh, suspend back. Leave unsuspended. Fetch an Despair. artifact in response. What are we getting? That looks like a serpent. Nope. Tool caller's belt. Okay. Do the mirrors put into play or does the mirrors put it in the hand? I think it's in the hand. I think it's Reflecting pool and tap. We've got an oof and a ring. Oof and a ring. Uh, no oof. That's a loss. Yeah. Is is where we're at. So maybe we're gonna react. Oh, we're subtlety. getting subtlety back. Okay, sure. Beat stick. No, don't swing with oof. All right, fine. Yeah. It's haste. Comes in on yeah, yeah, with uh, Gar something suspended yeah, creatures at haste. Yeah. yeah, greater gur gur greater gurgur turn. Yeah. Put some doo doo doo. Yeah, 
Melee. Now we just Ma- have regular Ma- mainly for Red Alarm combos. Yeah, but. yeah, <laughs> obviously. I there for a while there was a deck in Legacy I ran that was Rex or Lark pattern recurring nice. nightmare survival Revel Arc pattern of rebirth, just dumb. And it was not. Gorger. Yep, there is the World Gorger. Swinging, we're down to five. We gotta have a win if we're caught. Oh, we got a mind slave right now though. So. Yeah, we do have a mind slave. Wait, is he about to be milled out? Pretty no. He got the recall. Because recall targets. So he can recall Slaver Bizarre and get him out. He only has five cards left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Do it, do it. This is this might be as good as the World Gorger combo if it happens. Oh my god, just do it. No! Not no! Not cool. Not, cool. Not the cool kids. No, you had it. You were the chosen one, got Anakin. It. Got it anyway. <laughs> he, he did do, oh he yeah, did he did. Though. You're right. Yeah, he had to. He had to get that. Right. That's fair. Good, good, good. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Let's see. Still, still pretty cool. One card left. Oh. An oof. oof. Oh my god. Mana Confluence on the spot. Yeah. Oh, grave. Bitter ordeal. Wow. Big sad. Big, Big sad. sad. All right, so Kyle takes it. Uh, everything's terrible. <laughs> I, want, I wanted that recall one so bad. <laughs> it it would have made up for the, the unbounded <laughs> world <laughs> gorgeous. <Yeah. laughs> Alright, so that that is that. Let's take a quick look at the standings and see how people are looking here. Oops. There we go. And sorry about that. Standings. So we've got Eric took his first loss. So Eric is three and one. I'm curious who he played. Uh, Cody looking like he may run it down at four and one so far. Jago only has one round left. Unsurprisingly, the mono red deck is basically done for the day. I kind of expected those to be the fastest rounds. Um, so that's that's interesting to see that I was at least right. Uh, Jago's going to be sitting around a little bit. It looks like after this. <laughs> Hi there. I'm hey. going to be joining you here. Sure. Uh, we're actually going to be having Kyle staying where he is right now. Okay. And getting joined by the illustrious Mason, trying to go for another victory. Nice. So. Mason is, is Mason, uh, Mason X1? Is, Mason is X1. Mason lost to Burn. Okay. Uh, and other than that, and has managed to dodge. I was just talking to him quite a bit. He actually doesn't love the spot his deck's in. Uh, but at the same time, it's still a Mason deck, so he's going to be in the top yeah. tier of decks regardless. Uh, I, I feel like Mason is one of the most self-critical people I've ever met for no reason. Well, to be fair, he's, he's self-critical, but he's also critical of everyone else. So That's fair, yeah. I, I appreciate that, at least, yeah. right? He's consistent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, 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 uh, he managed to beat Cody, but he said that when I play him in finals, I have a feeling I'm going to lose to him because the only reason that I won is because Cody biffed it in one of the games. Yeah, he uh, did. Is Cody uh, made a mistake? He, yeah, he did. He did not count properly in Underworld. He fizzled on Underworld Reach. Yes. Uh, so, we'll, we'll see. But, uh, I don't know. I, I think Mason, uh, last... He, he said that the last two things he played here were some of the worst decks he's ever drafted. And he won with the last one. He so. did. I, I think he won with the last one. And we were talking about why and kind of like... I, I was picking that apart a little bit. Because yeah. obviously it's, it's easy to be self-critical after you win a match. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and I think it's that... He drafted a like moderately aggressive deck in a field with a bunch of broken combo decks, but all the broken combo decks preyed on each other. So it actually created a spot where his just having pressure every game was enough to get him there. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's not as confident about it this time. Okay, so. fair. I'm I'm a little sad to see that the red deck went three three. Right. Uh, though there there were better. there were some questionable draft choices there. Um, like Fire Blast was one that I thought for sure would have been picked. Uh, no, yes. like, Price of Glory, stuff like that. Wait, Fire Blast did get picked, no? Uh, sorry, Fl- 
Flame Blast. Ah, the one with uh, Flash Flame Rift. Oh. And Flame Rift did also not get picked. Firebolt. That's what I'm talking about. Firebolt. Firebolt, yeah. I think, is like reasonable not to include, but Flame Rift, I think, is incredibly strong. Yeah, Fl- Flame Rift is almost an auto include. Yeah. Um, he really did kind of lean heavier towards the future, yeah. wanting to uh, wanting to just be beating down every game. Yeah. Which I don't think there's anything wrong with, necessarily. I, right. I think, you know, as we all, did, the four of us discussed, there's a vulnerability for you when you're on your decks in our metagame. It's just not... It's a lot of broken combo decks. And then this time, you know, we have Eric on an aggro deck at 3-1. and one. Yeah. We have Mason on an aggro-ish deck right. at 3-1. Um, it's, it's not so much that I'm, like... I, I think it's wrong that the deck gets what it gets. It's more that I I expect a burn deck to end up 3-3 three, three because of, like, the hate that people took against it. Yes. And here, no one took no hate No one took the it. hate. So, so I would have expected it to do much better. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, we have Mason uh, shuffling up right now against Kyle. Kyle's obviously the sideboard to show up with that last point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, the decks that we're looking at here with uh, Mason has kind of a toolboxy lands style deck. Uh, the time twister after the fast bond is obviously the ultimate play you can go for. Yeah. Uh, what, what is what is what's Kyle going to be trying to go for in this one? Kyle in this one, I think, goes for the Tinker Blight Steel oh. uh, because I think it's. The one combo that reliably, like, all right, it's linear, it's quick, and I know there's not a lot of answers that Mason has for it. And I feel like the longer this game goes, the more it's going to favor Mason's inevitability and to maybe land a Hall Breacher, a Time Spiral, a Fast Bond, and to just lock Kyle out of the game. Unless Kyle ends up with, like, all right, I just have the nuts lantern hand to start with. Mm-hmm. So we're just all aboard the land train. Um, but I feel like it's got to be either the Tinker Blight Steel or just gently to aggro. And just applying pressure with a land deck. All right. Well, Kyle is going to pile shuffle. So let's jump into the draft next to pick up those decks. Kyle is going to go to disappear for a second. Let's see if I can find him a minute. Uh, roll up. There we go. There we go. All right. Cool. So uh, it looks like if you look through Kyle's list, I really do think that there's a lot of cards here that are, are super interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, things like Stand Still are, are are interesting to watch against a deck that's going to be casting Twisters. Yeah. Uh, the, the lands deck that uh, that, that uh, Mason has assembled, though, is, is a strange one. It kind of is closer to a modern, uh, like, Azusa Titan deck pre Yeah, it really is, because it's it's a really non-interactive, mm-hmm. solitaire style, which is what Kyle plays as well. Yes. And it's interesting to see, you know, I'm curious how that plays out, because Kyle, you know, out of the board, he has, like, Flusterstorm, Psychrift, stuff like that, that's some amount of interaction, and it'll be... Game two is what I'm excited for, because yeah. that's when the interaction actually comes out. Because I think game one does favor Kyle a lot. I agree with that. Yeah, because um, Ky- Kyle can just like drop a bottled cloister or something, and, and Mason's not going to be putting the pressure on fast enough yep. to make it hit yep. unless he busts out with a primeval titan early. But yeah, I, I think in general Mason's deck, it, it's strange that kind of we had Eric getting all the strip mine pieces of a lands deck, and then Mason still wanting to go hard into a lands deck himself. Yep. Let's see if they're if they're ready to go at this point. Oh, there we go. Oh, once upon a time off the rip. All that's right, some of the that's the best you can hope for. Oh, we've got a Ramanop, a Twister, and three lands. Don't want to see the Twister there, but I mean, oh, we've got Wheel too, so we're we're golden. But no fast bond. Oh no, he does have a fast bond in his opener, so we actually can. I think a Wheel and a Twister both going to the bottom of the library. Is that right? Is he no, Wheel is library? in his hand. So he oh, has a wheel in hand with a fast bond. Okay. So he actually can breeding pool. So once upon a time is random order on the bottom. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we'll get a breeding, get a breeding pool. pool. Yep. Okay. Yeah, open with a dryad arbor because you're not going to necessarily storm off right away. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Kyle starting off with a pixie to pandemonium. So uh, presumably they both exile the card up there somewhere. Yeah, they both exile. Face down. Yep. Uh, so we've got fast puns a good start. Yep. Carry land, dryad arbor. Take a point. Vesuva. Vesuva. Oh, God. oh my lord. This is so much mana. Also taking like five life, right? Sure. I Kyle doesn't really you know, he's either gonna tinker you to death or he's gonna control you out of the game. Yeah, choosing not to put the Kalari West into play. That's interesting. I guess wanting to be able to transmute it next turn because he has a double blue off of Vesuva. Yeah. Not having a 
red yet is why he wants it, I think, so he can transmute to red easier. Did he end up taking uh, Maze of Death? Nobody took Maze. That's kind of interesting. I would expect there were also no Titans there. True. Yeah. Although, I mean, you still get the Annihilator trigger off the old Titans. But yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking, like, in a deck where you're where you're taking uh, Tabernacle or Maze, yeah. and when Reanimator exists in the format, it feels like a Maze might be really nice. Yeah, for sure. I, I think, though, the, the Maze, the Reanimator creatures we saw taken were the kind that Maze doesn't care, that don't care about Maze. That's true. Like, Archon's Archon. just going to get you no matter what you do. Like, it doesn't matter. That's very fair. Um, so let's see. Are we going to transmute here and just wheel? There's a Grim Monolith that hit There profile. is. Which, he's had it almost every game he's been on camera now, and yep. it's done a decent amount of work. Uh, there was his first camera match where it did basically win him the game on the back of a mind. Which he still, I have yet to see him assemble Slaver Lock with Emery just because of the amount of mana it requires. Oh, Emery, okay, yeah, I've, I've seen the more traditional uh, Slaver Lock off of the Academy uh, Ruins. Academy Ruins. Kevin got the Academy Ruins, which That's funny. This, this was interesting because it was, we had those, you know, Kevin took Cauldron Complete and Batter Skull after Eric got the Stone Forge. Yeah. And Kevin kind of just got in everyone's way. Yeah, he, he really did. I we, we said beforehand that, oh, that's a prime time. <laughs> That's a pretty good, good lord. That's real good. Is that a turn two primeval titan? That is a turn two primeval titan, and that's why fast bond is good. You really have to love uh, Vigilance Mystery Draft. Yeah. Okay, so Cody is four and two after losing o two against Brandon. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Br Brandon, I just I was watching him play, and I was talking to uh, to his lady. Yeah. And uh, this is the most serious I've ever seen Brandon. It may light. Yeah. I legitimately I, he, scared he's actually taking this very seriously. Yes. He said, you know, I'm. He came in here, and I was like, so are you going to go with Sears text number? He's like, no, this is miserable. Yeah. It's like, okay, fine. You could just tell how upset he is about the whole situation. Yeah. Uh, but no, at the same time, he started off 0-2. You can clear that. It, this is the thing we've talked about before, about how some players, after they lose a game, they just yeah. stop joking around, they sit down, yep. and they start focusing in. Yeah. And that has been Brandon this entire tournament. Yeah. So, okay. So with a primeval titan from Mason, obviously, Valakit comes into play. There's a hand where it battle mints, so we can get him. Oh, yep, yeah, that is a hand where. Uh, Kyle, what, what is he trying to, like, slam out quickly? Well, Kyle doesn't know about the wheel, so... True. I think, yeah, we're just urza here. Urza, and then there's the Physician Construct. Yep. Uh, the Construct is a 3-3. Three, three. It's not, not, nothing... No, it's, it's not it's not irrelevant, uh, and this does represent at least gaining six life off of the Primeval Titan. Sure. For a turn if we double block, although we're probably losing Urza at that point. And this turn, yeah. he has five mana if he wanted to use it. I don't think he has anything to use it for. No, I don't think he does. Next turn, his mana is going to be pretty ridiculous. Yeah, he's he's going to be set up like a fast bond player, basically. He'll have more than what he's got available. Yeah. Ooh, you've got an E-Wit. Isn't it strange that a player can go fast bond into Primeval Titan and still be behind on mana? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty VRD, yeah. if ever there was a VRD moment. I, I do like that we kind of have all the seasons represented, right? We have... Uh, yeah. we have Academy, yep. uh, to represent that that horrible combo winter, and then we uh, have all Jazzy yeah. Summer. Yep. Uh, we, we, we just need to get the spring and fall and yeah. really, uh, really hit them all. I know all Jazzy Summer is, is one of your favorite magic formats of all time. Yeah, because there's a finite amount of fun that can be had, and I want to have it all. <laughs> Naturally. So, uh, Valakit, does Valakit actually fire off in this deck at all? Yeah, so he has Dryad of Elysian Grove, and if okay. he gets that, it fires off. Got it. Kind of, um, that's the utopia, whatever the equivalent, Vista Prismatic. Yeah, Prismatic Vista that yes. also lets you play an extra land. Okay. Let's see if I can track Elysian. That. Well, that assumes I know Greek. <laughs> he has to start with Dryad of. Yes. And be spelled correctly. Yes. Oh, yeah, so we, we've uh, got Wheel now. Yep, that's that's the card I was looking for. Thanks. Thanks, Crackle. In Italian. Or Spanish. Oh, Spanish, okay. Yeah. So we've got a Pixis now active in response to the wheel. So we're discarding. Now, with no Hull Breacher here, this feels kind of bad. Just because you give your opponent the full hand? Yeah, you give your opponent the full hand. It does not feel good at all. But we may end up with. Nope. We got a Leovold. That's Ooh. actually huge. It's obviously a little bit later than we would have liked. Yeah, but even Leovold when you cast a wheel, we're we're profiting. So there's a Courser of Crew Fix. Okay. Oh, we've got a Summoner's Pact on top now. Not going to be immediately useful, but no. With the 
fast spot in play. There's a lot of mana that they can drop. Yeah. You can what? drop quite a bit. Uh, he gained a life. She should have lost a life as well, right? Or is this the first land? That's the first land. That's the first land, yeah. And now he stays steady because he's gaining one off the Corsair and losing one off the yeah. Fastbond. Yep. So now we're just even. That even means that pay, or that uh, fetch lands cost him nothing. Yes. Yeah. Which is a pretty good spot to be in. That Corsair is really going to work. Yeah. So Fastbond and Dryad and Elise and Grove, is there anything interesting there? Other than being able to just. Valakut for life, you know, it's being able to bolt for... I, I still personally pay one life, do three damage, I do that all day long. Oh, totally, you know? yeah. Uh, so, so Fastbond says that every card, every land beyond the first one costs, uh, deals one extra damage to you, which means that the Dryad and Elysian Grove, which allows for me to play one extra additional land each of your turns, doesn't actually help you avoid that damage. So it's yes. not like you get two lands for free. Yeah. You still have to pay the life for both. Or rather, take the damage for both. So we're swinging here with a prime time. Sound is a little low. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can get Crank Blood maybe a little bit. Let's see if that does anything. Yeah. Hopefully it helps a little bit. I know that yes. uh, some of that's just me sitting back and not being quite as loud in the mic as Steven, who loves to shout at everything. He does, yes. But hopefully it Thanks for that, Grizz. Appreciate the heads up. Yes. So we're grabbing a Gruel Turf, which we're going to have to bounce a land for, which doesn't matter. Correct. It probably is just net beneficial. Just yeah. Without me even looking, I assume there's something dumb that he can do with it. It lets him get Vesuva back for something else, so sure. he could get another Blast Zone, which it turns out is pretty good. This so is hand wear. Kyle's trying to give advice. Maybe we could get the, the Battlements and stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, and so Kyle played has played Scape Shift and Valakut decks for a while, so he's very familiar with the archetype. Yes. Um, Oh, Green Sun. Hello. Yeah, Mason is really just showing off really powerful, uh, uh, po powerful uh, sorceries and paths in his library. Yeah, not unfortunately, he hasn't had a lot of payoff. Um, ah, that could be when we've had the second mic up. That's fair. Yeah, right now we should only have one mic running, but uh, I probably turned away from the mic anyway. We can do lots of things about our audio <laughs> setup yep. here. We'll, we will uh, we will fix that. Thank you for letting us know. At some point, we probably should just not be in a small library and instead be in an actual studio downstairs. Yes. But. So we've still got a Leovold available that we can cast here. Um, he's got a Crop Rot. Yep. But I don't really know what he's... I, crop Rot was an interesting pick because he took it so late and there wasn't like a Cradle or a Maze of Ith, for sure. example. Something like that that like... All right, here's the piece I really want that I'm going to tutor for that nets me advantage off of this. Uh, it's really seemed more like, all right, I'm doing this for thinning than anything else. Ooh, Ancient Stirrings. I like that here. Getting an additional shuffle effect, especially with all of his like top deck manipulations. That's a Dryad. Oh, he just drew one? Yeah, they drew a Dryad off the Stirrings, which unfortunately he can't get, but he did get an Amulet of Vigor. Okay, so Amulet of Vigor, uh, that would allow for him get infinite mana as long yeah. as well for each life although well, he has control for sure, oh, straight there's a twister mana. okay so, so let, let's talk through this so amulet of vigor means that each of his bound land his carus, uh comes into play untapped or untapped so it comes into play mm -hmm. uh, so that he can then gain one life when they come into play lose one life off a fast bond they come into play he taps it for two mana and then it bounces back to his hand yep uh, so he can generate infinite mana yeah I now does he have anything to do with that mana I mean, different story right he, he can certainly put out the uh the, the leovold dump his whole hand yeah but really what he's hoping to do is hit that twister if yeah. he can get the twister into play after dropping the leovold that would be the end of the game yeah I, I pretty much I, yeah you, you can't really come back from that i mean yeah kyle does have urza with a ton of mana up did you say he also drew the dry of releasing grove so that was off the stirrings so that went to the bottom of his ah, yeah what a shame okay. yeah because yeah if you had the dryad that of course the, then the valakut yeah valakut is infinite, infinite damage. damage yeah um, yeah, this is fascinating. There's there's just so many pieces of this combo. Yeah, and and it's it's like a six card combo, but there's a million ways to assemble it. Yep, I love Mason's Mason's list is very we similar to the We didn't cast Leovold. Okay, so he's he's waiting then. So um, he's leaving up mana for the blast zone. Presumably? Yeah. Oh, interestingly enough, we also we can pick this away the time twister. Ooh, yeah. So that's why he didn't throw out the Leovold yet, because he didn't want to lose Twister to Pixis. Well, he can lose it either way. Oh, no. Oh, he's tapping for mana. For the Painter's Servant? Okay. 
and is there there is a tinker for grindstone. Yep. Oh. Uh, so that's game. Yeah. Uh, assuming that Mason, I, I can't see his hand perfectly, but I don't think he has anything. He no. needs something to interrupt the his grindstone combo. Yeah. And that Pixis is in the graveyard. I don't know what's happening here now, but well, he tinkered Pixis away Correct. after he tapped it. So I think we're seeing. Uh, so there's a crop rotation. I think is what is what Mason's doing just to look for anything. Yeah. To see if he has an out here, which I don't think he does. Caracas, Mason has in his deck, but that doesn't do anything here, right? Uh, no, that bounces Urza. At this point, we've already got Correct. our combo up. Um, so, no, I, I think this is game. That is, ooh, one turn too late. That's a scoop. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that that was wild. Kyle just randomly dropped yeah. in a painter servant <laughs> grindstone. Oh, well, here I am. Yeah, this, this is pretty cool. Uh, which, again, like we said, I like I said, I feel like Kyle's inevitability in that is that his top decks are better. Well, and, and when he has, he's top decking, he has much better control of the top deck. Too. Yes, significantly. Mason allowing Kyle to see his entire top deck in his library with Corsair of Krupus is a huge disadvantage of this matchup that I yeah. haven't considered. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Because um, even even after Lantern's gone, you're still revealing for a Shredder or whatever else. Absolutely. Uh, so sideboard here. Yeah, let's jump over and look at their sideboard in a second. So we have a. Uh, so Kyle obviously is, is going to be trying to find something to deal with all these like. Creatures and strange land interactions. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle has so many strange cards here, like <clears throat> Trading Post, that I don't know what they're supposed to come in against. Uh, life Gain. Okay, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. For red. It's just a good utility card. Yep. Um, he can make dudes against the aggro decks. Uh, he can gain life. Sorcerer Spyglass. I think Spyglass is, is decent here. Game. Okay. I, I think the hand information, because Lantern Control is one of those decks where you want as much information as possible. Sure. So while it's not necessarily going to stop anything outside of a fetch land or something like that, uh -huh. I think having the information for a lantern shell is fine. I don't think you care about like ensnaring bridge or dress down. Um, Memory chart is probably very bad in this match. Though. Yeah, that seems awful here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Torpor orb is, is Mason does have a bunch of creatures. I, does Torpor orb also hit lands, which would be pretty amazing if no. it does. Okay, that's it a shame. Not. Yeah. Good old CEDH staple Torpor Orb. Yes. Uh, opting to play the artifact version of it instead of the creature version, which is yep. a little more popular. Scavenging News against Kyle is fairly strong. Yeah. Uh, Tabernacle, I, maybe? I don't know. It's probably cute more than anything. Relic is really good here. Relic is, is good, yeah. He really needs things to shut down artifacts. I think a lot of those things are going to be main. Bane of Progress. It yeah. feels like the big endurance one. Endurance is good too. Yeah. Yeah. Endurance and Bane of Progress. Are the I two. Bane won him a game on camera. Sure. Uh, just like that card is, when you land it, it is brutal against those decks. I saw it also nearly win a game where he drew it off of the relic, but he only had four mana to be able to cast oh, instead of the six no. he needed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He came through a grinding hole. Uh, you get a very slow clap there, Heinz. Yeah. No. That that was great. I yeah. appreciate that. That came to a. I appreciate a good magic pun. Yeah, so I, I know most people here are very familiar with uh, with the Painter Servant Grindstone combo, but you want to walk it through for people that are not? Yeah, so basically Painter Servant enters the battlefield and you choose a color. All cards in all libraries become that color. Great, that's exactly what you want. Grindstone is mill a card, and, or sorry, mill two, yep. and if they share a color, repeat the process. So it's literally, I'm gonna play a Painter Servant, I'm going to name a color, I'm going to activate Grindstone, and every single card in your library is that color. So your entire deck gets milled. And when it's your turn, you can't draw and you lose. And normally, back in Tempest, things like lands didn't have any color, so it was a nice way to stop this from actually being anything other than a very slow win condition. Yeah. But Painter Servant turns even lands into colored spells. Yep. So, or colored cards. Yeah. So, yeah, we are. Uh, we're. I, I didn't realize that Kyle had such a fast way to end the game immediately. I kind of assumed yeah. you'd be grinding people out yeah. a much no. slower than the Painter Servant Grindstone combo. Yeah, I, in fact, most of the games he's won on camera have been on the back of Painter Servant Grindstone, which, sure. again, he said, you know, I could have ridden Painter Servant out and gotten Urza Saga there, and that would have been better as an extra tutor. Oh, and and I right. think that if he'd done that, his deck probably would have gone a little bit more mid-range, grind you out. Sure. Because then you've got the Urza Constructs, the Urza Saga Constructs. Yeah. You know, you're on a little bit different of a plan, which, you know, again... It seems strange to think that one card can make that much of a difference in a deck, but how many people draft and the one card gets picked and they're like, all right, I'm audibling to something else now. Right. Well, and Kyle is, Kyle's very much kind of a, 
he's a competitive player that has been a grinder for a long time. Yeah. So he's very familiar with a lot of these other formats, uh, particularly modern. So yep. Something like a painter servant deck is something that he could write. He could write up a deck list for this uh, in five minutes before having to start a tournament. I've seen yeah. him do it. Yeah. Uh, th- being able to draft it is a lot easier for somebody that already has that list built in their head. So we've got another Once Upon a Time list of lands, a Leovold, a Hall Breacher. Yep, an Azusa I see there. Yeah. I think that's a Hall Breacher with a Leo. That feels really good. It does. He's a little short on lands, though, right? I mean, He's got two with a Once Upon a Time, so he can hit his third. Sure, okay. Oh, we're mulling. Okay. Yeah, Never mind. I, 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 don't, I didn't see a second land in. Maybe. Oh, I thought he had a second one in the pack, but maybe not, yeah. Yeah, I think he just had the one land plus once upon a time, and that's pretty risky. Yeah, that's not a great keep. Especially because he doesn't have a real plan until turn three, kind of. Yeah. So, I, I think it's, especially against a deck like Kyle, where he has so many one drops and it's going to happen. Yeah, and I, so many two card, I'm just going to get their combos as well. Exactly. Which two doesn't seem like a lot, but they're two very different combos that you can't combat the same way. Is the other combo from Kyle, is that Vault Urza? What is the second combo? Uh, Tinker Blight Steel. Okay, sure. If, if you want to call that a combo, which right. I Do. very much think it is. Yeah. Oh, man. Got my food ordered for my kids and my mom. <laughs> DoorDash. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, Jason's going to step out of the booth for a minute. Walk on. So we have Kyle here. Yeah, where are we at here? I've been out doing orders and making business calls. Absolutely. So Mason Mason was in firm control of the game, mm-hmm. sitting there with a... Uh, he was actually very close to doing infinite damage off of a... Uh, off of Valentina Karu. There was like a five-card combo rolling that gave him infinite mana that turn, uh, but he just couldn't execute anything with it. And then the next turn, Kyle top-decked a uh, painter mm-hmm. and then tinkered away for a grindstone and won the game immediately. So... Yeah. Uh, Mason was kind of in firm control of the game. Kyle right. was way behind, and Kyle uh, had himself set up in the spot where he could top deck into uh, into the two card combo. It's the power of those two cards, you know, with a tutor yep. like yours, you know, it's just sometimes you're just like, okay, oh, there you go. And I'd start with this last time where it's just like, I have this piece, all right, there's the D tutor. Yep. Drop Prentice, Chain of Smog, I win, you know. Well, and the power of Tinker dropping directly into play, too, yeah. makes it just so incredibly powerful. Exactly. Uh, so, so yeah, no. It, there's a reason that Tinker goes second or third round pick usually. It's not. A, it's not like a shocking fact. We that, see, that we have to um, say Tinker is good. We got Dryad Arbor. Yeah, Mason got... is down to six cards. For okay, us we've got Once Upon a Time in that hand. Yeah, drop over here a minute. I'm actually curious to ask Night Seed. When does Tinker get taken? Yeah, that's gonna be pretty high. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen it past round. I mean, I round three on average. I was doing round two, but fifty-three out of fifty-three. I think things like Aether Searcher push it up for us that we haven't seen it often. Right. But. Okay, so Zagoth Triome, which is the bug triome. Yeah. And uh, Once Upon a Time is oh it found Once Upon a Time, yeah. then he played it. Okay. Once once it once found Zagoth. That makes sense. Right. All right, and then we have Pixels of Pandem- Pandemonium, XL your cards. So it's nice to see the triomes finally get some love this draft. Yeah, was this the only one that got picked? I'm not sure. I think it was. The there was I think another deck. I think um uh, okay. Cody's deck probably could use the Triumph as well, just because he has the, the Cobra Knight colors. Yep. All right, so we get to see uh, we get to see Thoughtseize really. So with Thoughtseize, I don't know if you noticed, it was in here because Thoughtseize was two and it was a, and uh, ARK was three, but he sideboarded both, so he sideboarded second and third pick in those combos. Uh, so Talent, I think Counterspell often doesn't make the main deck. Uh, I, I don't know. We don't have the data on a lot of the main deck, non-main deck right. from pre- drafts that are not ourselves. Uh, I think in most of the decks that we have, we we see really heavy blue players, so we often will see heavier blue main decks. But counterspell is fine. That double it's, blue, you know. Yeah, double blue. It's not mana drain. It's kind of worse than all the free counters, and with all the new free counters that are coming through, I think counterspell has fallen pretty hard in the same way that it did in Legacy prior to getting introduced to modern. Even in modern, it's it's a good card. But so okay, we have a not not Nihil. What's the spell? The Aether spell bomb. Yeah. Uh, and then the other Lotus side Cobra. just played a Lotus Cobra. Okay. So we've got a pretty good setup here. I mean, we get uh, we get suspend in hand and a Zagoth Triumph and a Zagoth Triumph. Okay. And he's got knowledge because of the Thought Seize over here. Uh, it works in hand. He's got the Time Walk. He's got the suspend on Kyle's side. I'm sorry, I was going around. Uh, yes. I can't see what those two of the others are down there. Uh, it, it looks like a repeal maybe. So yeah, one's a repeal. So it's, it's one of the, maybe Treasure Mage, maybe Tribute Mage. It's, it's a Tribute Mage, because it's the mage, that's the 
Got it. Just to pull up and make sure. Nope, that's not the one. No, it could be. I see the sword there. Mm-hmm. Is it a creature? I don't think it's a creature. I think it's a spell. I think it's a sword. It is. It is. It is it's not a rogue. creature. It's rogue. Oh, it's strong. Rogue. Yeah, that would make more sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's rogue. Yeah, it's a white. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's a boat. Yeah. Okay, so word of invention obviously is the best known in this deck if we're going to find. Uh, if we're going to find the actual lantern. Anything, right. Yeah. But it, it can find anything. Is it ancestral in hand? Yeah. Oh my god. So we have ancestral and time so walk in hand? Everything that's facing out was known to the thought seas. I think things that are facing Kyle are known because of the um, something else. <laughs> like spell seeker. He spell seeks the ancestral. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. So <laughs> these are all cards that uh, Mason is aware of. That's interesting. <laughs> Suddenly they get flipped again. I'm, I'm not sure what the flipping has to do with anything right, at right, this right. point. But. Okay, so. Tracking the fetch, obviously Lotus Cobra makes that into a dual land, effectively. Mm-hmm. Or a double land. Right. And it's also a dual land in this case. So we have one, two, three, four mana available. Hmm. And still a land drop from Mason, I believe. And St. Louis for, for Lane got Tinker 16. So that is... <laughs> we have four, five mana. Why? Wait, where's that? Where's that? One, two, three, four... Where did the sixth mana come from? Lotus Cobra? Lotus Cobra, but the Zagoth Trial Mentor's tapped. Is there a fetch into the... Uh... Oh, maybe the fetch came into play right. uh, this turn as well. Yeah. Okay, so there's a fetch into the Zagoth. That makes sense. And that's Bane of Progress for the turn you did. But... Okay. Yeah, so Hyphenated in St. Louis 4, was that Elaine got it 16th round or 16th pick? I bet that's eleventh round. But it was it was Tinker is one of those cards that there are almost always enough decks that want it, uh, that are divergent enough, right? So it's it, it is good only in a few Wow, they got sixteenth round. That's definitely the latest edition. Yeah, yeah that's the one where we saw it floating and it, yeah. it floated through the first break. And then she came back and just took it in case somebody else had heard. Yeah. Mana Crypt and Time Vault Sweet. Yeah, okay. I think Mana Crypt is very good. I, I've, I've seen a lot of people drafting Mana Crypt and Soul Ring kind of at similar levels. Uh, and to me, it, it feels it, to me, it feels like Mana Crypt is a clear winner, but I can understand that other people disagree, especially if you play a slower deck. All right, so we have a... A land coming in. Yep. Obviously, the Bane of Progress has really slowed down Kyle's game. It paid for Academy. Uh, Cat, what is he going to transmute for at this point? Another, another land, obviously. Well, pact. oh, okay. Pact of, Summoner's Pact. Yeah. Summoner's Pact is obviously going to go get Titan by default, uh, and who knows? Mm, does he have... He said Titan doesn't... He can't cast Titan. Well, I'm, I'm saying next turn. Okay. He just cast Summoner's Pact. Okay. So that means he needs to make sure he gets four mana by next turn. So well, he's got the four mana, because one of those is... Uh, Correct. One of those is a parade, so he's going to get track of. Sure. I get incredibly nervous whenever I cast a pact to make yeah. sure that I, I can play around anything they could possibly have. Yeah. Repeal uh, can't bounce a land, can it? Repeal cannot bounce a land. Yeah. <laughs> if it were boomerang, then maybe. But. Yeah, I agree, Talonthos. Uh, Talonthos, of course. It's, it's a... The Tinker Vault issues of are you going to get both? It's pretty rare. I mean, Elaine did in that one, and that was uh, you know, that was a, an oddity. But well, it, with Tinker kind of getting pushed up and up and up, right? Obviously, at the very beginning of the uh, beginning of the Shotgun Lotus days, Tinker or Time Vault was going to take it after all the Moxen, yeah. and that's wrong, right? We've learned that over the years, it's wrong, and now it gets taken ahead of any of the Moxen. But if you take Time Vault first. Tinker could very easily flow. Well, it could have got Moxen. today. It, it, right. Yeah. It, it, today, uh, Cody could have got it because it made it all the way to to Kyle. Right. So if Time Vault gets taken third, then by the time it gets back through the Moxen, a Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, things like that, Tinker could easily get, make it back to the same Vault player. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, Mason cleverly setting the summoners back on top of the library to try to remember uh, and make sure that he doesn't lose. Uh, it looks like they were healing something over there. Uh, the, the healing the mana crypt, which is a strange play from Kyle, but at a certain point you, you just want to get your card out of it. Yeah, yeah. Just want to one mana cycling. It does reduce 1.5 damage that Mason was about to take, though. Okay, so Swifty was able to actually wheel it all the way back to the second section. That's interesting. All right, so Grim Monolith just playing as a Lotus Petal uh, into a into a uh, Tesseract, which untaps the monolith. monolith. Yep, strong. Also interesting to see uh, see Tesseract without the Time Bolt. Yeah, that normally it goes along. He only has one in a war for his bolt. He didn't grab the second one. It was, right. it was just interesting. But I mean, yeah, he throws out a storm plan. And the Backup. Totally. So, I mean, Tezzeret in this deck, is it just, is it a manner of controlling board more, or is it, is Tezzeret actually going to be... It's Ghost Gates Grindstone, sure, and Ghost Gates Pieces. It's, it's very flex. I mean, it, it, it does it in a little bit, but... Yeah, it doesn't have the one directional plan that you right. often see in Time Bolt decks. Time Bolt went after all the mocks in yesterday. That's wild to me. It feels like that's something that, uh, since, like, 2015, has been widely not happening anymore. Okay, so we have a uh, suspend. Suspend. On, yeah. Suspend is one of those new cards that's been pretty exciting. I know we talked about it already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, only a suspend two is a pretty low, uh, a pretty low pushback. But yeah, it's still it's still cheap. It's removal. You can use it to save some of your own. Yeah. Uh, you know. Okay, so uh, that pushes him up to five basics, plus the uh, plus the academy. The Academy currently only taps for one, though. It's really one of the worst Academies I've seen. But, you know, still better than uh, still better than Island. That is Urza. Okay. So Urza drops a Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo MD to yeah. end the play. Can you that uh, last water thing? Just because he's kind of pissed. Can I kill all the two Agas in my deck? Exactly. Yeah. Don't hit it. So the Urz is pretty big here, uh, though that token's not a big deal, you know? Oh, hy hyphen throwing throw in, uh, throw in shade about our rating of Time Bolt. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So if, if you're sitting here in Mason's seat, right, you're facing down kind of inevitable lock that Kyle's pushing, or just a quick kill with a, a double Tezzeret. What is your game plan? Is it just keeping beating down and trying to, like, shut down the walker plan? Okay. Yeah, it seems like a tough spot. Although Mason is clearly ahead on board, it seems like Kyle has a lot of avenues that he can go through. Well, I mean, you know, even at this point, I don't know how, how far. I mean, the, I guess the the Bane's decently sized, um, but I don't know if the Bane's big enough to be too far. I mean, Ursa right. can block the Lotus Cobra all day. It's, it'll die. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right, using the Grim Monolith again to use the War of Invention. Uh, let's see if... I, mean, I don't necessarily disagree with you on that. I, I think that... Um, oh, Bridge is nice there. I, I think that uh, Vault falls into the it's sexy and BRD-ish category, where it kind of... I mean, even um, you know, Nemo said that they, there was some other... like They were thinking about doing Burn, and they had a Burn list worked out, and then they were just like, I'm playing this BRD, I can do all these things, why do I want to be doing Burn? Right. You know, just just for fun. Like, I want to do crazy stuff. And I think that that's kind of some of the allure of Time Vault in a lot of ways. I mean, yes, and I think that Time Vault also allows you to have a lot of avenues to take. Right? Like, I think a lot of times we see Time Vault and we see it taken in kind of like a hard combo deck, but it just gives you so many different ways to play Magic that a lot of other cards don't. A lot of other cards push you in a specific direction, mm -hmm. and Time Vault doesn't. It's pretty, it's pretty great. All right, so the Insnaring Bridge... Shuts down Mason's entire deck, right? He doesn't have a he doesn't have the uh, yeah burning tree. he doesn't have the burning tree or what's it called the uh, uh, burn willows plan, right? But, uh, so Bane's already out, so he's green sunning here. He tricked for a pretty low amount. It looks like a green sun for three. Okay, sure. Um, does not have a wreck sage. 
Yeah, that's that's one of the cards that he said that he just ran out of picks yeah. and just couldn't find space for. Oh, and, and something that, that Jason and I were talking about earlier is that the um, this deck with both the time twister and the lands plan is really hard to sideboard with. Yeah, you know that like it's really really hard. Right, like I, in a traditional lands deck, you expect to be oh yeah, there's no trouble. I don't worry about the Aquarian Bridge. I'll just find Punishing Fire and win that way instead. Right, uh, and he doesn't have that option. Uh, he doesn't have the Maze of Ith. Like he doesn't have the wheel plan that we saw in the last time he came in either. He doesn't have Leovold though. Leovold three or four. Leovold is three. Right, Leovold so is three. bug colors. Right, which is better. So yes. Leovold's a possibility here. Probably the best possibility. Yep, gonna get Leovold. All right, so things that can grab from the graveyard after this then. Uh, Summoner's Pact. Sure, Summoner's Pact to go grab Leovold. Uh, or to go grab Prime Time. So you but can't prime time can't attack. Right. Right, like how is can Ewe get back? Is there a natural I don't see what it was whatever was under packed and above the pattern moment or above the moment. I don't see what it was. Is there a naturalize that Mason has in his graveyard that we that he cast very early on, maybe? Or was that last game? I don't know. Because I, I know that Mason does run a so, uh, Green Sun just got milled after the reshuffle. It was on top. <laughs> Green Sun was on top after the reshuffle and then just got milled. Uh, Eternal Witness is, is a card that, I mean, it gives you a ton of flexibility, especially against a mill deck. Right. So this is a big blind elm here. It doesn't matter if it's on a green trail. Correct. Just go off it. Still. Proto Treader is still doing good work. Yeah, no. Uh, and Tezzeret's on tapping things, like, yeah. multiple times, giving you all the mana you want in the here world. Here comes an Urza. Yep. Oh, is this an Urza spin? Yeah, this is a spin. That's exciting. Did you see the earlier where uh, he spun and got the grindstone off the top for the win? No, yeah. that's that's amazing. The island does nothing but glow. Yep. He already played the land next turn. I, I don't. I think it's a cast, so you can't play land. You may play no, the card. Play, okay, yeah. so you, yeah. yeah, I think he already played. Okay. Uh, that card can't attack. Sadly, uh, ensnaring bridge is not a continuous artifact, but so you can't tap it to use it. Right, but it's blue for mana. <laughs> it is blue for mana, however. Yeah. Guess what? Four four orb, which okay. has a nice little combo against uh, Eternal Witness. Yeah. And tapping no, Academy for approximately a thousand. Yeah, now it's another spin. Yep. Yeah, this these Ursa spins getting a, a mind subsire is pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, the Oracle combo is actually a good call out there, Kyle, and I like that as a as a reason why Ooh, Vault is less artifact. unique. Artifact. Okay, so Transmute Artifact, he may cast it. Has an extra. Transmute lets you pay the extra mana. But he doesn't let's, have. Let's scroll down to the Oracle. Well, oh, he's got three. He's got three colorless. Yeah, let's go. He has plenty. Three. So, sacrifice an artifact, search for an artifact. If it's less than or equal, basically you pay X extra. Yeah, he's got four too. He's got that four. Yeah, yeah so he, he can find whatever he wants. Right. What is he going to sack off, though? The Torpor Orb, probably? Token. Token. The Conch okay. Shrug. Does he really need something that small? Like, is he going to find one, of, one half of the combo? Right. Well, I mean, they can't attack because of bridge anyway, so. Sure. Slaver. Oh, wow. Does he have the six mana to pay yeah, for it? Yeah, he paid for it. He, he okay. tapped a lot of artifacts. Cool. For, uh... Slaver into a board that effectively locks his entire deck out seems strange. He doesn't have a way to sacrifice all the creatures. He's got or... very rude in hand, though. Okay, okay. All right, so the mana crypt doing the job has him on a, on a five-turn clock, so assuming yeah. everything goes badly. Tyros returns off of the suspend. Okay. So, I mean, Tyros coming into play does mean that suddenly Mason doesn't have a draw engine for him? No. Albeit a slow one. Yeah, very slow. Because, yeah, like, despite Kyle having approximately 7,000 mana, Mason still only has five. Even for being a landsman. But the bridge is doing the. Uh, yeah, the bridge is doing ridiculous work. So, let's pull up uh, the list real quick. Does he have any other artifact other? More important than that, let's get back to the uh, strong. So he's going to twi yeah. twist her here. So. Any artifacts besides the Bane of Progress? Any artifact killing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, so Eternal Witness the into it, but blast like, zone. even Bane of Progress doesn't do anything because of the Torpor. Right. So Kyle just needs to find something that can answer artifacts that isn't a creature, because creature ETBs are turned off I from Torpor. Don't orbs. see he doesn't. Upheaval. Upheaval 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 if he no. brought it in. Upheaval. It's Kyle, but Kyle doesn't want Upheaval. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're looking at Mason's, right? Mason has right. 
Mason has nothing that didn't have wasn't comes into play. Right. Blast zone. Endurance is also last zone, of course. Yeah. Blast zone is the one card that he he can answer this board with at this point. And then he has to take blast zone up too. He can crop rotation into blast zone. Right. Well, he just he just time twisted. Yeah. And so yeah, he's not he's not in a very lucky spot. He could also uh, Remynax excavator to use blast zone multiple. Right, but that's going to, again, that's a slow process. He's got sure. to tap by them, take it up. It, it, it doesn't seem like he's in a spot where he's going to have a fast way out of this, this situation. And uh, doing the Thurston thing, he's managing, Kyle's managing to uh, to lock things down in a way that makes it a long, slow, grindy game that stills a small percentage of him losing. So it's it really is the most yes. fun for all players. It is. Yeah, so at this point... I, th I think you're right. The only card is the only cards are blast zone and crop rotation for blast zone that are going to be the center point of of, of Mason's uh, way out of this game. I mean, even like I guess he could try to um, like Nars like uh, Leopold wheel, right? But hole breacher wheel. Sure, um, but at the end of the day, that doesn't accomplish anything. Right. It doesn't advance his stuff. It just shuts Kyle off too. But Kyle's got Urza, so it doesn't do anything. Right. Right. The trouble, right? Is no matter what Mason does to slow Kyle down, right. Kyle will win the game on a mill play. Right. <laughs> if, even if everyone just draws their entire decks, right. Kyle will win the game by milling Mason out. Right. So we're we're looking at a a traditional twenty seventeen style lantern control deck that Kyle is 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 in controlling spot for. So this is Kyle's game to lose for sure. Yeah, and, and really it's going to come down to three blast zone. Mason and you top deck a Corsair of Crucial, do you just not play it to reduce the information that Kyle's getting? Um, yeah. I, th I think that you're supposed to keep it in hand and not, not allow Kyle to see the top card in your deck at this yeah, point. Yeah, I might just... It's a pretty wild spot. So, Buried Ruin from Kyle, does that do anything in this... In, in the you current state? Slaver, I mean... Sure, Slaver locking. Uh, it, not, not a lock yet, because he doesn't have a way to get the Ruin back, but... Right. Yeah, he doesn't have a lock in. I believe, uh, so, so I think Jason was saying that there is a slaver lock off of Emery. Is that true? You could off of Emery. Okay, yeah. 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 But yeah, no, nothing on board, certainly. Right. Yeah, you could off Emery. I do appreciate Mason repping those Hufflepuff slaves. Mm -hmm. Very nice to see the badger out there. Uh, I thought they were spoiled slaves. I thought they were brown slaves. Uh, no, they're Hufflepuffs. Okay. Like, it's funny because Jason thought they were spoiled, so that uh, goes to show it. You know. <laughs> well, J Jason's a little too into archaic, strange games that no one plays, <laughs> so that makes sense. Uh, whereas I'm into fandoms that are mildly toxic, but nostalgic. It's not the fandoms toxic, necessarily. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it really is kind of a wild spot where if Mason happens to hit the blast zone, uh, what, what do you... Okay, so if you do get the blast zone and there's a mind slaver sitting across from you, how do you play that? <laughs> Again, like that, that's the problem. Like, okay, so you, well, you immediately pump it up to three, and then pass it back to yourself and have them have it at three. Well, because well, yeah, he's not the mind slaver person's not going to pop it at three. Well, the mind slaver person is right, right, right before the blast zone. Right, they'll they'll push it up to twelve or right. something. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I think it's a hard play. You, well, you can't really. The, like if the slaver stays out against the zone, it becomes like. The one possible answer, I guess. Oh, the good news is right now he has enough cards in hand because of the twister to be able to attack to the bridge. Oh wow! So okay. the twisters are actually twister unlocked the attack. Yeah. And Kyle's sitting there at fifteen, so he doesn't have to answer everything. Yeah, the Tez can die here too. So sure. actually, the twister unlocking the attack's huge. I didn't think about that. That's a big deal. And yeah, I really do appreciate watching Mason because he can kind of find these edges that we yeah. don't see necessarily. So, okay, so attacking with everything. Yeah. The uh, Tireless Tracker isn't too huge. It's four over there. Uh, it looks like he was trading off the Urza. And the Ted's did. Or no, the Urza's, they didn't the Urza's big. Okay. Yeah. The, he did not show up. The Urza took out the Lotus Guard. Nice. It's a one, okay. The Urza's 1-4. And Perfect. then he goes down to six. Sure. And he loses the Tezzeret, which I think right. is a bigger deal. No, it is, it is a big deal. There's still a Codex Shredder, there's still a Disneyland right. Bridge. Uh, I don't know exactly how many cards Kyle has in hand, but presumably he'll be able to 
get you a fair number of them. Right, or right, right. That's get the, you enough that that's the key is the combined. Right, yeah. and and, may, and Mind Slaver is going to let him get a turn flex to be able to right. not have to lose all this turn too. Yeah, play an island. Uh, the Buried Ruin allows for him to have two Mind Slaver turns in a row if he wants to. Trinket Mage, finding Seeker, one half. Spell, oh, Spellseeker. Okay, I'm sorry. There's so many of those mages at this point. There's Spellseeker, Trinket Mage, get Treasure time, Mage. Get time walk. Okay. So that's, yeah, he, he can take four turns in a row, right, right. but I don't know what that does for him yet. Uh, again, right now, it just... Spin the Urza over and over? Well, it keeps him above six right now for sure. sure. Until he can shoot, solidify the board. The yeah. two turns in a row, even without the slaver, is big just because it allows him to empty his hand a little more. That makes sense. To get back below the other. Yeah. God, this is, this is a wild game. It, it, it's one of those games that it feels 90%, but with uh, with these kind of lantern decks, you never are 100% until you're done. Rhinestone. Oh, wow. All right. And Mason's burned through a lot of his deck already. I, I don't know what his deck, like, that, deck total's at. Pixis. Pixis of Pandemonium, yeah. yep. Uh, I guess Mason did just Time Twister, so it got a lot of his deck back. Yeah. So it's not real in Mill Threat yeah, right no, now. No, there's no Mill Threat. There's oh, a Mill Threat, no. but it requires the uh, Painter. Is that Spin? Is this game all about now? Uh, I would assume, unless he has something yeah. good in hand. Here's a Spin. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's a 7 mana. So you got 2 slaver you can use. How good would a Tezzeret untapping that be? You can just bear on top. Inventor's Fair did a lot of work for him against the Burn matchup. Yeah. I was impressed by that. I think he taps in two floating, so he taps three now off of Urza, leaving the Slaver up. Yep. Right now he's, no, he's just popping the Slaver, so he's not going to spend any Slaver. On top oh, and it's Ancestral. No, it's Ancestral. Okay. So yeah, he's just going to say, I don't need to worry about this scary brick. I'm just going to draw all the cards and kill you instead. Yeah. Which is a pretty reasonable way to say it. So now we have our Mind, our mind Slaver turn. We get to see, I see Island, Vesuva, and I couldn't see the rest of it. Uh, uh, that's all. Oh, okay. Polluted Delta, Island, Vesuva. Is that a pact? Uh, Summoner's Pact. Yeah, uh, uh, Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time, and I can't see the bottom card there. What's the blue? Is it the Night of Time Sparrow? It's a time spiral, okay. Wow. Uh, so, I mean... Are you spiraling? Do you? I think you do, because, like, you, you're you going to get, you know, get a handful of... Uh, you, okay, you already have Grindstone now. Yeah. The chance that you draw Painter off the spiral is pretty sure, good. Sure, sure, sure. Right? And you, the rest of the stuff in hand, fine. You, you probably just cast the Pact uh, just to make him pay for it next turn. It would be wild if he uh, spirals... Because he's spiraling into positive mana due yeah. to the... Due to the there, if you spiral into a tag quister and just keep going, yeah, I, I think if he would have, um, I think he would have cast the pack first. Was he using sure the to um, just make him pay for it next turn, no matter what. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, just packed and failed to find. Yeah, or you're gonna spiral back in anyway. It doesn't matter. Just sure, yeah. back, grab something just to be just to be a jerk. <laughs> a jerk. <laughs> I do like that idea. Hey, prime time. No, it goes back. <laughs> it, it also opens the possibility that you can just like feel bad your opponent by making them forget about it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that's not a thing we do at the VRD. And he still got uh, he still got his mitt, and there's a prime time in it. But if you... so we have wow. Eric and Cody coming up next okay. on the camera. Nice. Uh, we Eric also just had, I believe, oh. our first concession. Okay. Uh, we had possibly our first concession ever in the history of VRD. Yeah. Uh, good guy Nemo. Brandon says, all right, we're playing. Nemo says, all right, I will play Magic, but I scoop. Brandon goes, why? Nemo says, well, I'm one and four, so all I'm doing if I win is make your life miserable. The best I can do is go three and four. And Brandon says, okay, well, we're still going to play that. Okay. So we, I appreciate that from Brandon. Yes. Yeah. We actually had a scoop in the, in the original, the first VRD, uh, where uh, Iggy uh, bowed out and was just not having a good time and decided to... Stop yeah, so. that's fair. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. So okay, once upon a time, it's uh, it's gonna be happening. Yeah. So th this game has been a, a really wild ride. Uh, Kyle has a mind slaver turn going. Decided to cast a time spiral into the mind slaver turn after getting beaten down through the Insterian bridge because yeah. of a time twister. 
Uh, this is still the mindset. Yeah, hyphen, I agree with you. I think it's I think it's something to be discouraged for sure. Uh, and I appreciate that Brandon's making the match play anyway. So I, it, it, I think it's one of the difficulties of VRD is that yeah. it's a long, long, it's a long, long ter- time. And if you're not having a good time, it doesn't feel good for anybody. Um, it, it's a complicated problem to and we can discuss too. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. So so Kyle is, is in control of Mason's turn, uh, and now I believe has passed the turn back to himself. Yeah. So Kyle the already has the spiral. Yep, he spiraled himself in a new hand. Uh, he already has the grindstone in play, so he's just looking for that painter servant to end the game. There's an Urza. Uh, there's the ability to Slaver's recast down. Slaver. There it goes. Yep. So now we're gonna have another Slaver turn, almost yeah. assuredly. So we're gonna pass the turn again. There's also a time walk. Was, an now. was the time walk not cast? Did he? And we have an Emery Slaver lock. Oh, yeah. Oh, there Emery it is. Slaver lock. Yep. Game. All right. All right. Well, Mason. Mason takes his second loss. You know what that is? What's that? Giant killed. Giant Thank killed! <gasps> oh, March right off. I'm gonna run out there. Uh, yep. You two have fun in this next one. I need to make sure this gets uh, gets signed from signed yeah. to the people. Yeah, Ivan, mean, I don't disagree. Um, it, I, I think it is a tough call, and I think it's one that the, the rules committee will have to discuss a little bit. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of it either, but I kind of saw it coming, you know, not having fun. And it, yeah. It's like Mark said, I, I think that it is a tough place to be, you know, yeah. making someone play out when you don't have fun. Like, okay, I'm just going to leave then. Yeah, and then it's like, all right, well, if you're willing to surrender your buy-in, then right. what am I going to do? You right. Know? So, but like, it, oh, it, you can't come back. So, well, right. Whatever. You know. No, I, I think, yeah, I, I agree with that, and that is something we're going to have to discuss. Yeah, actively sure. discouraged. Yeah. There we go. All right, so we have a giant, giant killed. Takes it down on the back of Emery oh. and uh, Nemo Slaver would like to sit in on cover. Yeah, Nemo had mentioned it yeah. earlier. So, um, let's switch up. I gotta go back real quick. Yep. You can move back to your seat. You got it. Uh, oh man, getting old telling. Yeah, I'm old. Same. So let's take a quick look at the standings here and see where we're at now. So we have Cody. Eric will be that side. Eric's sitting currently. Okay. Cody is in the bathroom and will be coming to say. Okay. So you've got Cody at 4-2. Eric's still at 3-1, and that's because he's been waiting for quite some time. Uh, they, they have been waiting patiently while the match we just saw went on for about 20 minutes, uh, basically, which, again, as swingy as that game was... That was pretty fun, honestly. I, I enjoyed it. All right, so let's take a look back here at the gameplay. So we've got, oh, yep, Eric. Oh, no. Eric was trying to use his own mat. Told him no. You can't, sorry. Got, got to use the St. Louis mats to represent. So Brandon jumping in at 4-2, uh, which means he is very live for prize. Yo. Come on in. There we go. All right, so we have Nemo here on commentary with me. So this is your first VRD. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Um, I'm not gonna lie. I am a little bit bummed out. <laughs> okay. Just the if I hadn't done a rules issue and retroactively lost my match, that yeah. would have that would have been fine for me. If I pulled off the bit of ordeal on did, camera. Did you hear us screaming? I me? literally, I could hear you through the wall. <laughs> no, my partner was watching. They were like, yeah, I had to take my headphones off. They wouldn't shut up. 
Look, we were all really excited. World Gorger. Like, I was too. I, know. I was over the moon, and then Mark came out and was like, "I have a question for you." I was like, "Oh no." Yep, this is all terrible. Everything is terrible. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean it, it's still fun. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have chosen to do anything else with my day. Yeah. How do, how do you feel about the format in general then? The format's a lot of fun. I, I feel like what I did that really messed me up is I did. First of all, I drafted way too many lands. Um, yeah. I realized when I was deck building that I was playing 13 non-basics for basics. Oh my, okay. Yeah, so that was that was definitely overkill. And then I also didn't draft enough enablers. So yeah. things for future would be things like Mind Twist, Pack Rat. I considered Pack Rat like 30th pick yeah. or something. And I was like, nah, I'll keep with the A plan. Because I didn't think far enough ahead to realize that, game, that Pack Rat actually fuels the A plan. Yep. But stuff like that and like insolent neonate, I really should, probably should have yeah. picked. Um, and I thought about life from the lobe as well. But do you think if you draft a similar deck in the future, you're going to go all in, or are you going to try to have a plan B for it as well? Um, I mean, I would I would draft the same deck. I would just try and make some improvements. Like seriously, I think just having like neonate, um, I didn't realize Mason was going to go that hard taking discard spells as well because I was counting on having like thought seeds so I can thought seeds myself. Yeah. Um, because the the couple of matches that I actually have won have been, all been off the back of like I'm gonna unmask myself and then uh, yeah go. yeah for sure, uh, which I think is one of the most powerful plays the deck can make by far. Yeah. Um, yeah, and especially the Swifties right it when Pack Rat wins games by itself, but I I think typically we see a bunch more Wraths taken than we did this time. Okay. Uh, especially for as many aggro decks as there are. So like last VRD, I think there were three Wrath effects drafted, so Pack Rat wasn't. Sure. Like it was still fine, right? Obviously, but there were a couple supreme verdicts that got cast at key times, right? Um, but yeah, pack pack rat. I almost expected you to take it in like the forties when you saw yep. that no rats had been taken. I'm n- I'm not gonna lie to you. Past identifying other people's deck archetypes, I was like total douche. Uh, okay, just building fair. my deck. Yeah. Um, which is another thing that I should just take care of. Is like I had a list written out. I don't know why I wasn't thinking of my focus on yeah other people. Piles. But it's not really. This I played against Eric round one. This was how do you feel a about it? demoralizing start to the day. This deck is <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, it's basically just modern Eldrazi in Texas. Well, it's not even not even though because this was the hotness in vintage for a minute there. Yeah, it was. Right, and then this was like right before Thorn got limited. Yep. Like this was this was one of the angles in the format, and yeah. I remember it from that because. That was right around when I was learning to play. Yeah. And one of the things I would do is I'd watch uh, Vintage Super League. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, the power was Eldrazi lists were insane back then. Well, it's, it's not even the power. Like, the thing about Vintage Super League, if you're learning to play the game, is it's vintage. So you only have to learn, like, 80 cards. Yeah. And they talk about the same plays for, like, five minutes. Yeah. Because nothing happens in those games. Yeah. So if you really needed a really granular breakdown of magic, Vintage Super League is basically the best you can get. Oh, for sure. So you've got Displacer and Thought Knot, which is pretty brutal here. Um, kind of. It It means that he can sculpt Cody's hands out. The problem is he is going to draw a card every time Displacer yeah. leaves the battlefield. Yeah. So it's not as sweet. No, but it's certainly, I mean, being able to deny him, you know, like Breach here. Right. And force of will seems pretty good because like I don't it, even think you need to take the four. I don't think you need either. You can win off the back four. Of this. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you're never gonna swing with the four four if you're flickering it out. Really, what you're gonna do is smack with this blazer yeah. and then flicker and then it out. flicker it. Yeah. If I'm taking anything here, I'm taking breach and then I want to untap and take. Is that is intuition, right? Yeah, and he has Sedgemore Witch in there as well, which is not the most favorable. No, Sedgemore Witch can. I mean, I don't know. Sedgemore Witch can go wide like around the other. Well, he also doesn't have a red source right now, so you can afford to take the Sedgemore Witch and wait till next turn for the Breach. He doesn't have a source end of sentence. Sedgemore Witch is a free drop, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think the play is exactly oh, this. Yep. You take intuition. the intuition. Okay, yeah. And then he's going to get to cast one of these spells, and there's not a lot Eric can do about it, but yeah. whatever he doesn't cast, he can snag. Because, like, the Narset, you can afford to completely ignore that, and yeah. the Force as well. Well, he's, he's drawing a Demonic Tutor, so what's he going to do? Tutor for a land, or just... <laughs> you know, right. that feels real bad at that point. Um, but I think we almost have to here. Or, you know, a mana rock of some sort. Right. I mean, does he even... Does he have rocks in the list? LED. Which doesn't do much. 
Right. It puts Breach in the bin, which is not what you want. No, not at all. And not only that, I mean... He has really Chrome Mox it, as well. Yeah. I guess you could... <laughs> you could do it for LED, crack it in response to the Thought Knot, just for the spite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Packrat's criminally underdressed. Yeah, it, no, Chad 30, is exactly right about this. Yeah, yeah. I, I will own that L. Yep. So... When you were approaching this, you know, there's the discussion in BRD of is it more EDH, is it more vintage, or, you know, what is it more leaning towards? Do you feel like it leans more towards EDH, which I know you don't? No, it's, it's cube draft. This yeah. is vintage cube draft. Yeah. Because um, if you are playing the format well, you are drafting cards that are in the vintage cube. And then yeah. you'll grab maybe eight your to 12. Pieces. You'll yeah. grab eight to 12 cards that are kind of from across Magic history, but yeah. realistically, that is. If you were looking for like a primer for this format, you crack open the holiday cube list and yeah. you start from there. Yeah. So there we go. We have an Urza Saga off the D tutor. So a land of sorts. Sure. We just well, had a combo land threat. I mean, it's a pretty pretty sweet grab. So yeah. Mason just had a lands full on combo off camera about turn five with Courser and Fast Bond with a Karoo land where he was able to had a Make enough mana to, and Vigor out, Amulet of Vigor. Make enough mana, infinite mana, not netting no life to play Tracker, and then make infinite clues, draw through, oh my get, green, get Green Sun Zenith finally to then get Dryad, yeah. and then play enough lands now that his hand had like 20 cards in it anyway to just kill with Valakut. Like get lands and just keep carooing cur- <laughs> and bouncing a mountain over and over amazing. on night like turn five. Yeah, so that's, that's what we wanted from that deck, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it's a lot more like Vintage Cube than any other format. Can a quick guess? This yeah, absolutely. We've got a quick guest here. This is our STL VRD mascot. Nemo, are you okay with the child sitting in your lap? Yeah, of course. All right. I'm just going to drop him in here for a second. Oh, oh is the child okay with sitting in my lap? Absolutely. Hey, bud. Oh, no. Sweetie pie. Oh, it's okay. We're unhappy right. right now, but that's okay. Sorry, Holmes. <laughs> Grab that. Yeah. Gotta love Parenthood, right? right? Absolutely. Sure do. I'll get around to that one of these days. Yeah. Uh, boom. There we go. Not there. All right. So, yeah, that was quick scoop, it looks like, from Cody. Yeah, I mean, when you're trying to assemble a multi-piece combo like that, because that's the thing about this format that I think makes it most akin to Cube Vintage Cube, is when you play with, when you're playing EDH or you're playing Vintage or Legacy or whatever, you can intentionally design your deck with a degree of redundancy that is not accessible in this format. Yeah. You basically have to just <clears throat> hope your opponent doesn't have the right inter- interaction for you. And that's why that's why my deck list looked so weird. Like yeah. I had the Damnable Pact and the Thoracle yeah. and all of that stuff because I'm playing around some number of like, some people are going to pack extra pace. Some people are going to pack uh, force of negation. Force of negation. I hate drafted the surgical, um, yeah. but that style of effect, right? So I needed to have something that I could go off of. Because, like, like, for instance, Ashiok. If yeah. I was trying to go off around an Ashiok, I would probably need the Damnable Pact because I can't use Sadisi to loop at that point. Yeah. And so I would have to hold the card, make the mana, and then just packed out. Yeah. And so that's that's what I was trying to do with my sideboard is um, tailor my threats and my win conditions against other decks. It did not work, but the concept was there. Yeah, the concept was there. Yeah. Although I, th- I think it's like you said, I think you may have overvalued non-basics. Oh, absolutely. And well, that kind of came back to bite you. Yeah, because I, I, had, I had my Excel sheet open. Oh, and too. Basically Oof. what I had done is I had taken myself off red part of the way through the draft and at no point did it occur to me if I'm off red. Why I can, are you drafting red? <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It's I didn't draft red. I drafted all of those rainbow lands. Okay. Which I just don't need at that point if right. I'm playing straight black green. Right. All right. So, um, Brandon and Nemo did play it out, and Brandon won, won anyway, right? So the concession really doesn't it didn't matter yeah. there. Uh, but Brandon's on a streak, and Brandon just has one more game to go, and that yeah. is Eric. Um, oh, he, okay. Eric is three and one, and Eric has two games to, or three game. No, this will be yeah, two games to go after this one. So yeah. he's playing playing this one now. He just won game one, uh, and 
as he was going, Cody says, oh, let's look at the sideboard. Can I even beat this deck? <laughs> like, nice. like yeah. he wasn't yeah. quite sure. Um, so Mason... So going 4-0 since he lost his first two then? Yeah, yeah. And he says the deck's going good. Um, yeah. Mason, and actually, he hasn't dropped a game since then. Since oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's eight games in a row. Uh, Mason is it seems in a pretty dominant spot against um, Kevin, uh, Kevin right now. Yeah. So we're going to have... A whole lot of uh, yeah. This is gonna be another one of those interesting ones. How yeah. it plays out. So we're gonna see uh, if Eric wins this. That Eric Brandon match is gonna be uh, super big. You know, yeah, that's gonna be for all the marbles, isn't right? It? Uh, maybe. I mean, Mason could, could still be in the running there too. Um, that's fair. Yeah, because Cody then would be four three. Right. So Mason has lost, beat Eric. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but yeah. So there is where we're at. So let's go ahead and switch back over to the camera. See if they're. Oh, right, we're still sideboarding. Yep, yeah, we're still still debating if we can. Uh, All right, so we can go yeah, back to. I, I am also rooting for a Brandon championship because it's. I I think the storyline of Brandon drafting a real deck, doing really well, and then being like, "Screw it, I'm going back to memes." Yeah, is is just a great storyline. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you heard him. He said I asked him when he was in here. I said. So do you think you'll draft a real deck next time? He goes, "Oh no, this is miserable." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he wants to go back to a meme deck. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I almost drafted basically what Jacob was on today. Like that yeah. was that was the other pile that I had faith in because I had that yeah. stack deck that was nothing. Yeah, but I was like, you know what's probably pretty good is Ragavan Eidolon. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's and you know I when we were at Modern one week, Dan and I and you were talking about how we thought Mono Red could attack this meta really well because yeah. it's yeah. a very all in combo meta here. Right. And nobody really pays attention to their life total, and it's a resource that they're not used to protecting. Which... Well, and it's really funny, because when I sat down to play with Jago, I was like, all right. I, I had, like, mentally defeated myself. I was like, I'm yeah. playing against Mono Red, like, I'm going to die. That yeah. is my one match win today. Right. Because yeah. I 2 owed yeah. him <laughs> Shadow Realm, not even close. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, I don't... Maybe yeah. that was wrong. Who knows? No, I and I think it's, you know... The thing is, he drafted the red deck, and nobody picked Chill... Nobody picked warmth. Nobody picked any of the sideboard cards. Yeah, no. To go against that matchup, and that's why I expected him to do much better than he did. Yeah, all I all I did against him was I have the Iona main deck, and then I also because again I drafted way too many lands, so I actually so we got a had a seal four, here. I've got a force of vigor main. Yeah. Oh, so I just took that out, put the massacre worm in, shuffled back up, and presented. Ooh, so we're going straight up reshaper off oh, turn geez. one off the mana vault. Right. So which this is an equally aggressive clock compared to what Cody's running. And the seal, of course, runs him down three life. Yeah. Or two did, life. Did two we, life. Did we yeah. see what came off the seal? No, it did not. Okay. No. Did, did not see it. might this turn. Um, typically, it's been vault or key where right. he's had it. Uh, oh, Crepidon's another tutor or another combo. This time, yeah, this wouldn't be another tutor. He uses limited tutors to get other tutors, but yeah. uh, could be an LED. Depends on what's in his hand. Nope, okay, there's the key. All right. All right. Okay. So he's got the vault as well. Right. We have to assume. Uh, that mana vault should. There we go. Good job, Eric. That's that's our resident L three. He knows yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. So it just dings you for one, right? And you yeah. pay four to untap it. Yeah, four to okay. untap it in your upkeep. Yeah, yeah. You're and there's the wasteland. Land. You're gonna swing for three. Yeah. This is really the question. Is like the when you play these fast combo decks, like you're trying to put this whole engine together, but can you actually beat a three two? I, sometimes you can't. Sometimes I, the answer is uh, no. Like, well, that's why I avoid. That, that's, I, I got really close to beating Kyle in our game three just off the back of like hitting him with collector. Yeah, well, like, that's why Dothy Voidwalker was so good for me yeah, because was, just oh, yeah, they yeah, could yeah. block it. Can you deal with this? I, right. There was a time in Vintage where uh, actually one of the locals from St. Louis who no longer plays played Stephen Menendium uh, in okay. Vintage World yeah. Champs in the semifinals and beat him with a virulent sliver. Well, there was a ha! time, there was well, a time in Vintage where Slash Tiger was a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know what, though? I, I was there watching... There's a displacer. I was watching Jago's draft, and I didn't see him take Scav Clan Berserker. Did he grab that yeah, There was all? a couple cards no. that, like, we, we probably, like... Uh, my, my fan of the Robber the Rich yeah, was when one. I, when yeah. I, was, um, I, I looked at Robber the Rich when I was putting my pile together, Scav Clan was, like, priority for yeah. me. Because yeah. I, I remember there was that time in Vintage where, like, that was what you were yeah. doing. He that also... The, the rug deck, you right. would, like... Just jam that. He also didn't life. main deck the Rabble Master, and he should have had Rabble, Ooh, Rabble Master, yeah, and yeah. and he should have had Goblin Legionnaire. Yeah, uh, and um, they both or Goblin Legion or whatever. Um, Legion, 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 Legion War Boss. Yeah, yeah. 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 Had should both They're of those, and they should both be main deck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the one that makes tokens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, because there's also, Red Bitter Blossom. I, I got yeah. I got scoop. my whole business mixed up by 
Cranko Tin Street hooligan at the All Rare draft a month ago. <laughs> yeah, I'd never seen the card before. I only knew the other Cranko, but it turns out, man, yeah. it makes tokens and that's enough yeah, to get it done. So we're swinging, so we're just beating face here, and this is a really yeah. I'm, I'm not optimistic clock. about Cody's chances here at all. I mean, he basically he's got to hit the he's got to hit vault, the vault and have an extra land, which maybe he has the vault in his hand already. Because he did the, the wasteland. Sealed. The wasteland slows him, right? True. I mean, and we so. haven't seen the hand either this round. So. Oh, is this is this a thought knot? Oh, endless one. No. no, no, it's just a yeah, just endless there. Just an extra beater. There's land. There we so go. are we gonna see? There. We all go. right, all right. Yep. Now we've got it. And, and Eric wisely just Eric spares, just spares us. For yeah. The next yeah. One. yeah. <laughs> so then we've got both of these guys have now won. Yeah. Okay. So we are one one. And this is potential. Yeah, if that was thought not, then, yeah. you know, that... Yeah. Did you need that time vault? I thought not. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that one. No, yeah, I've, no, I've, that I've heard that, that joke a dozen times. Yeah. There was a guy at my old locals who would play Bant Eldrazi every oh, yeah. that was single great. week. That deck was great. The deck drove me insane. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was playing Ad Nauseam at the time. I literally did not oh, own yeah. another Magic the Gathering. Yeah. All I had was Ad Nauseam, and I was playing in a meta with that guy, and then my friend Cameron... Who would exclusively play Boros Prison? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're talking like That's this rough. guy. This guy was over the moon when Chandra Torture Defiance came out oh, yeah. because it meant he could t- take out Assemble the Legion, which is what he was killing you. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Chandra, that was another one I was surprised Jacob didn't draft was Chandra or Koff. Yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. feel like for the red deck, you want that type of card advantage to mm. really get yeah. there. What is? I mean, does Koff really net you card advantage? I couldn't tell you. It's at least a fat does. beater. It gives you a four four. It, okay. Yeah. All I remember is that it turns your mountains into pingers. Four fours. Yeah. That's the, that's the emblem. It oh, also okay. untaps a mountain and turns it into a four four. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So it's a pretty aggressive clock. But yeah, Chandra Torch of Defiance. I mean, that card is yeah, they, that they, card is the nice emblem turns your mountains into pingers. But other than that, it uh, makes mana, lots of mana, yeah, and or untaps, you know, which is or it gives you an extra card. I mean, that's right. that's good yeah. enough on its own. Yeah, Chandra for sure is the one that you know you want. Or even with the deck, uh, even three drop Chandra is the other one that you uh, want to consider because yeah. you can buy back she your. Makes ball lightnings, right? She makes little one ones, okay. I think. Yeah, two two ones or two one ones or one ones, ones but one yeah, one. yeah, I don't know. The, but between the but three she also lets you recast spell. uh, yeah. spells, cheap spells from your graveyard. Yeah. So you can che- recast like lightning bolts and stuff like that from your yard. All right, so we've got Eric on the play here. Yeah. It looks like he's and Eric wants to be on the play here. I mean, this oh is... for sure. For the record, she makes two one ones that sack okay. themselves. That's right, two one ones. I knew the two was yeah, just little elementals, but but also buys back lightning bolts. Yeah, which is the, the yeah, real yeah. Right. And she's got the, the main road. Yeah, I've been playing um, Legacy Dak Attack recently ah. with the one of six drop Chandra yep. on the board for the blue mirrors. Yeah, the card seems screwy. Okay, so it looks like Eric Eric's mulling. mulling to six. Yeah, okay. decides he can't keep it. I. Do you think he's just aggressively search? Oh, that's a Urza Saga and Cody's opener. I I would be surprised if Eric is aggressively. No, he just, wants to, he just wants to play one. He just exactly. wants to go to aggro hand. I mean, because he he is strictly the beat down here, and so he's just gonna any hand with lands and a threat he's gonna keep because yeah. he can force Cody to deal with whatever he's producing. Oh, so we, we've got a saga and a breach in Cody's opener here. Oh, jeez. So that's that's all aboard the Leb Choo Choo, right? And I mean, but <laughs> yeah. Eric did grab our copy of Rest in Peace, right? Yes, mm-hmm. he did. Yeah, so that's uh, almost certainly in this deck at this yeah, point. Yeah, Eric had yeah. a really good sideboard plan. He had, he had good, um, good sideboard cards. Oh, and there's yeah. a time vault as well. So Meek Stone, Meek Stone, nice. That's brutal. Absolute yeah, that's champion of pretty, not winning the slipper matchup for me. Yeah, Cloud Shredder's a hell of a drug. Oh, fragmentized. <laughs> oh, 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 that is brutal. <laughs> And my balls just dropped. I, just <laughs> I, I literally just hit puberty, folks. Yeah, like, I'm 44 was, and I hit puberty. That was a that. master class. There we go. And there's a stone forge for a sword of fire and ice. And we're yeah. we're we're cruising at this point. That turn was yep. yeah, fire and ice, not not yeah. here. Like, no, you gotta go. No, fire. you want the card advantage. Yeah. Here. Well, and the and again, like it's all about the clock in this. You're just yeah. trying to beat him down as fast yeah. as possible. And I think it's close because Jite scales so right. quickly, yeah. but Sophie. Gets you, Card. it gets you to your lock pieces, and it increases yeah. your clock. Yeah, get, getting rip faster, I think, is huge. Yeah, yeah, um, dude, that was a turn. <laughs> yeah, I, I still am like floored by how good that play was. Yeah. So 
So Eric, it looks like maybe mana locked here. Which Cody probably is too after that waste. Yeah. Or after that strip mine. Yeah. Oh, yep. Looks like we're just going to pass. We're not yeah, even so going to. over. All right. Land bingo. No, we're going to sorcery sword speed. Fire and so, ice. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. And we have enough to equip here so we can draw a card. Right. Right. So is there a, an answer in the hand? There we is go. The... Oh, land number three. There we are. Mason is now four and two as All well. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I expected that, expected that from that matchup. We have a response. Nope. No itch. Ooh, so we are swinging. Which pain land is that? They literally all a dark land. Oh okay. no, that's brush land. That's brush land. Yeah, they're they're, they're the same land. We're, yeah. we're running into the scrub land savanna problem. Especially yeah, all the exactly. uh, washed out. Uh, exactly. Our, our washed out. Uh, yeah. copy of you know what though? That's not just you guys. Like that is what those ice yeah. age cards look like. Yeah. I remember at uh, GP Chicago 2012, it was a legacy GP. I sat down with Rob Alexander, and I'm like, how do you feel about, like, Savannah and Scrubland? I feel like they're just plain arts because he yeah. was altering some for me. He goes, are you kidding? These are amazing. I have so much blank space to work with. <laughs> I was like, did you plan on that? And he goes, no, that's just what they told me to do. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, okay, well. Yeah, art was yeah. different back then, you know. Yeah, I just, they couldn't have, because Savannah, I mean, it's, it's a, it is a forest. You couldn't have just given us a tree, Rob. Right. Yeah, right. Would it have been that hard? Would it have been that difficult to just give us a tree? So, yeah, Eric's play there was really good on that one. Although we've we'll got see. a mystical for another piece of the Underworld Breach combo. Right. So it's possible, if we don't hit a rip quick here, that Underworld Breach could sort of get out of hand. So we have yeah, mystical for a demonic. Mystical for a demonic. Front end step. Demonic it becomes yeah. LED almost certainly. Yeah. That actually makes a lot of that sense. That's a I fantastic like idea. Yeah. Nemo, I need to pull you out of this booth. Sorry, I okay. know you're watching, but you're, you're Mason's last match. Oh, okay. Okay, so Nemo is out then for Mason's last match. We've got Mr. Hagen hopping back go, in. Go crush him. All right. Uh. All right. Uh. There we go. So uh, okay. we have a demonic tutor. We got a deluge out of that. Okay. Um, or unless he had it in his hand already, but I did see deluge there okay, so in Cody's hand. Expressive iteration. So I'm assuming off the expressive, he puts Hit a deluge to play. Yeah. So the deluge to hand. Yep. Oh, and there is a time ball. Okay. So we are probably about to get a tinker. I don't see. Or not tinker, sorry. Uh, Peak. Eric has a lot of hate that he drafted he does. well. So does he have too much? I don't think. I, I, th I think it's Cody, Cody, Cody has been so disciplined in only dropping his combo pieces when like, he has it. that when he has the combo because he doesn't want to be well, vulnerable. And Cody also has a lot of forces, so like yeah. even just like trying to windmill slam the thing because he's going for it, prismatic. Yep. So that of course is one of our new. Um, I like the premier. slow play there. He didn't windmill slam it. He just right. slow rolled. Gotcha. One of our new premier removal pieces. Yeah. I think And it exiles. Yes, it does exile, which is incredibly relevant with right. Underworld Breach and on the I, field. At some point, this will come up. Uh, the the Wi-Fi tends to get a little, a little bit slow. Yeah, towards yeah. The, as they, so ending, uh, that is, you know, we just need to pay two colors for it. Yep. Oh, and there's a Mimic. So he's, he's going with a conservative beat down here because I yeah. think he's recognized, like, all right, I can't overcommit because I know he has Deluge. Right. Did he? He, had, he don't. Does he know? Well, he, he, knows, he knows. He knows he has delusion as deck. Right. 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 So you can't just blow yourself right, out right. to a well timed delusion right. here. Um, yeah. Because I mean, off the iteration, you don't. You, yeah. You know, so. And I, I think maybe what the play here is, um, we have, like, Eric played that mimic. It doesn't add a turn, unless he follows it up with something like an Endbringer, or a Reality Smasher, or something like that. So here comes the D. Yeah, so here's D Tutor. So this may be combo turn one. So we've only got four cards in the yard. So yeah. I mean the issue He's done is it before. Right. Well <laughs> and, he, and he whiffed before. Yeah. Uh, we also are down two tutors. Because we've used or three. We've used yeah. Imp Seal, Mystical, yeah. and Demonic Tutor. Uh, did he himself does that this game the Imp Seal or the last game? No, Imp Seal was last game, you're right. right. Yeah. I think we're only down two tutors. Yep, we're only down two. But that's still two of his and what is the other... Urza Saga off that play. Okay, yeah. I was what is the other uh, X, X, uh, X out card underneath the... Oh, that I don't know. I don't know what the other X out card is. Yeah. Off the top of my head. Um, 
Fragmentize isn't that far away. Really. Yeah, Sophie, Sophie does do it faster, you're right. And I, th I think, you know, again, the card advantage is kind of important here because you want to search for your prismatic endings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rest no, in no, peace. Yeah, Sophie is 100% the right yeah, play. Yeah. You're not even going against another creature deck. No. Like you don't care about the life gain. Yeah. No, definitely not because he's just going to mill you out of hand. Right. I don't know what that other card is. Uh, under Time Vault, I'm not sure. It looks blue, but I can't. Hey, uh, Kyle or Mark, can you let us know what the other Exile card is under Time Vault? This has actually been a pretty quick VRD. Yeah. We're almost done yeah, already, and it's only 6.30. Oh, and we have an untapped step. Interesting. I figured Deluge would have been slammed there because Cody's at 10 life. Well, I mean, I think he wants to try to bite another one. I mean, the Deluge, that Deluge would have to be for four. So it's still putting on six life. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I mean, because being now, I mean, now you're at a spot where the Deluge is. I mean, because that's. It kills you, basically. Three, you use the Deluge. That's four, five. He just took five plus two more from the. Yeah, I don't. I think he needed to do the Deluge before. Oh, Crucible. Crucible. Now, here comes a counter on the Crucible, it seems like. Yep, we're going to remand it. Yeah, remand it. Okay. Sure. Draw a card. I think he liked that. I And, like, you know, you you, you can't deluge for two here either because it kills you. All right, Breach. So, Breach. There we go. We've got the Breach out. We've got the LED. We've got an LED. Just we're going to abolish the, the Breach. Abolish the Breach and oh. the LED. ka -ching. So, it's... Pull up Abolish again. Oh. Uh, and we're brain freezing in response. Oh, no. Brain freezing response don't do much. <laughs> oh, God. Eric just got there. Yeah, so discard of planes. Discard of planes. Do free cast. Free spells are powerful. Who yeah. it? Who knew? Who knew? So we have a, a basic go for the win on the stack. Yeah. And uh, you, you got to win now. And that's that's with LED on the stack, so LED yeah. hasn't resolved yet. Yeah, so there's no pump in it. Here we go. Yep, we're just out in underworld breach. And Valish is destroyed. So now we've got three storm if we brain freeze. Yeah, that that card was insane. Yeah. It's it's one of those cards that when it's good, it is insane. So I think, I think this is one of those cards where like white doesn't get drafted enough. For people, yeah, to, think for about people it. to recognize it, yeah. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this card existed. No. And now I'm like, oh, what? Oh, yeah, I did, like, I did, but only because of Popper. Right. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I'm like, what? This is a card? Yeah. Yeah, it was part of the, I think it was Masks or Nemesis, generic hit cycle. There we go. V VRD commentator, Eric Levine, the yeah. raging Levine. Look at him, look at him hammer to his feet. He was yeah. fingering out a bala. Yeah. Like it was a prom date. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> you see this, yeah. bitch? You yeah. see this? <laughs> Get there. Oh, man. Oh, that was incredible. Eric just went to prom with Abolish. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, next next match then is going to be Eric. Eric is staying on camera. And Brandon. And Brandon. For all the marbles. A, a pretty, well, uh, there was another four. Like, um, uh, Cody was the other 4-2. No, uh, oh, Mason is now 4-2. Oh, he is a 4-2. You're right. So yeah. we've got, and who well, are you going to play? So. If Eric is 5-1, or... Because Eric's only lost one game. Oh, that's true. That's true. So Eric could effectively... Yeah, lock it out. Lock it out. And I think Eric's got a good matchup. Yeah, I think like, this matchup is very favorable for Eric. Right, settles rough. Sure. It, it, okay, this matchup... Here's where this matchup comes down to. Does he... Does Brandon get three fairy? And Jace, the bounce walkers. Yes. Right? If, if, if he can land on, those... Brandon's got to get the tempo cards. Yeah. Oko, three fairy, and yep. Jace. Yeah, he has to have those. Right. Um, yeah, I think that matchup favors Mason. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think and unless just Nemo yeah. just gets the the, the random, nutter butter, the yeah, random air nutter butters. So. Um, which Nemo did say here in commentary, overvalued non basics because realized mana base was thirteen non basics. <laughs> yeah, and four basics. Yeah, so <laughs> I would. I mean, I, that's a lot of lands. I, yeah, I, that, I, that I, I, I typically run. I mean, I typically have some more. If I'm you get your fifteen. Fetches. Most yeah. of these, yeah, but like five to seven non basics yeah. if you get your fetches in your pool. Yeah, 
I mean, I run quite a few non, non basics on a lot of mine, depending on what they are. But I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, like, a lot of my lists, I've run 14 or 15, depending. Yeah. Then I also have a lot of mana dorks. Yeah, like mana that, dorks, so. mana rocks, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Which he, he was lighter on, or they right, were lighter yeah, on right. outside of the Lotus, yeah. with the, which they have. But, I mean, we saw Lotus did work that one match yeah, oh, on yeah. camera. Let's pull up the standings real quick and see. We've got good old K Rick over there updating them for us. So we have four and one, Mr. Levine. Yeah. And we, wow, there's going to be a lot of four threes in this. A whole lot of four threes. Is this, so this going to be another breaker a, situation? Eric must have another match after Kyle Vance, it looks like. Was Eric. No, Eric beat Kyle Vance earlier. What was Eric in that match? Was he 4-1 in that match or 3-1 in that match? This is, may not be updated to Eric's last match. Oh, so yeah, it may not be. Uh, I think it's updated to the page. Yeah. Um, Eric was 4-1, so yeah, that's not updated for Eric. Okay, Eric yep. Is Eric is 4-1. Yeah. Eric's 5-1. Oh, 5-1 now, okay. Oh, no, he was 3-1. He was last time. Yeah, okay. he was 3-1. So Eric still has another match. Yeah. Other than B. Curry. Um, I think he still has no, he did, did he Mason play Mason? Camera. Okay. Oh yeah, he did play I Mason. Think he's Kyle camera. Vance still. Okay, I thought he. I thought he beat Kyle earlier. No, he beat uh, Kevin earlier. So oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Just don't like people with K names. <laughs> Something about it. I don't yeah, know. just can't can't, can't do it. Yeah, can't do it. Yeah, it's Rasa Blood. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All those K names. Yeah. I would love a glass of water though. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. Or a Gatorade. Or yeah. yeah. Right. So this has been this has been an interesting day. Yeah. Uh, Thoughts, thoughts so far as we're winding down. What's the most interesting thing about today's draft to you? Um, so, a couple thoughts. Uh, so, last last time, Mason had mentioned that Eldrazi does well up there. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. Eldrazi does really well. Right. Yeah. That's really legit. Legit. Obviously, the lack of blue drafters is, is, is yeah. I think, the biggest starter, right? Like, the the fact that uh, Cody's got all those free counters, uh, that there's not that big competition for blue. Um, and really, the fact that the black, after being ascendant in the last, um, black after being ascendant in the last draft is, you know, it, it plays good game here, but it's not playing the same game it played in the last draft. Yeah, no, it's not at all. We're not seeing the the hefty, hefty discard yeah. strategies. We're seeing some other out of the board. Um, Thanks, JP. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll we'll get you in on the next one though. Don't worry. But yeah, it's, it's been interesting, and I think for me, one of the most interesting things was this is a complete meta shift for us because aggro all of a sudden is everywhere, right? which was never the case before. Right, right. I mean, it's always been super all-in combo decks. And we've got like three or four aggro decks here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What is Mason? Is Mason aggro? Is Mason combo? Is Mason just that, he's, ramp? I mean, he seems like, you know, red with the combo finish, the classic, I'm going to finish you with Kiki conscripts right. type I mean, list. I mean, he's got, Mason's a little bit of both. And aggro, but I mean, he's a Valica combo. Yeah. Like it, it too. So I mean, we, we saw him pull out some games on the back of like Bane of Progress, yeah, Tireless yeah. Tracker. Um, so he's definitely could be both. Yeah. Um, you know, Eric's definitely aggro with the disruption plan. Yeah. Uh, we had the red deck. Uh, we had Kyle with, or uh, Kevin with aggro. Yeah. So not really a traditional control build. No, which I think Cody's a combo deck that yeah, has counter magic. I, all the free counters. I think a traditional co co control vote could have done pretty well today. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Like a versus control. Yeah. Uh, I think that could have done pretty well. Uh, no ignoble hierarchy today. Yeah, was we did have no. Oh, no ignoble. No, we had noble, just not ignoble. Yeah, correct. Ignoble. Yeah. Red is summon is dead. Yeah, just summon through. I think they're looking at each other's okay. decks just Rather as a refresher, list, yeah. Right. Well, I know, I, I, like, Brandon was studying his list over the, on the other on the table while waiting for his match. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I got, I got to take down Eric, and he was, yeah. he was ahead of the phone. And I've yeah. never seen Brandon have a phone up studying I know, yeah, list, studying a right? list. No, that's, again, this is, this is so atypical yeah. of a VRD for him, and I am absolutely here for it. Uh, you know, Mark touched on, he's, like, been studious about this. Like, yeah. he lost that, and he's like, I'm going to win out. Right. And, like, I, again, the storyline of Brandon winning and then just being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go back to memes. Yeah. They're, they're more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Alter the Brood, but we're yeah. shenanigans. You know? Yeah. Who 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think those are our biggest our biggest lines here, right? I mean, yeah. I again, we're seeing some interesting shifts. People are willing to try different stuff. Um, yeah, I think this. We, 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 of this course, is we like, saw the ancestral over the lotus yeah. to start with. Um, Which I, when Kyle came in, I said, you know, I actually agree with that because yeah. it's, it's a higher floor and a lower ceiling, right. but it's consistent, and I prefer that consistency a lot. Because there's a couple decks you can, a couple directions you can go in with a lotus, like Reanimator or Storm. Yeah. But those are like kind of weakish archetypes it, that can easily get hated out. You know, you've got. A couple pieces that you basically have to have. Right. And if you don't get those, all of a sudden you don't have a deck so anymore. Outside of... See, I don't really call the Breach deck a Storm deck in this particular way. Right? In this, in this way. I think yeah, that's, that's storm fair. Deck. Um, I think one of the problems with the Storm decks is often that you don't have the four ups. Right? Yeah. You don't have, like, the four of four, Yeah, and the four, four of, Dark Ritz, Cabal right? Ritz, the, 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 the little, the little yeah. things that replace cards, draw cards. Yeah, yeah. Um, Like, the Breach deck's close, but I, I don't... It is Storm, but eh, is it? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. It may, maybe I'm just wrong on that, but I am a lot. All right, so we are off to the races here with our openers. And I also think Cody's breach deck's best since then breach has been drafted. Cody yeah. is the one that's done the best. Yeah, We've not had a breach deck do well. No, actually, yeah. and he's killing it. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, like, we've had several people try the breach deck, and... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It yeah, just feels it, exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it, is, it is a different combo list that storms off. Kind but of. none of the breach decks up to now have done have, have done anything. Yeah, right. Uh, and a lot of them have been dropped by some of the other bad decks. Yeah. Um, I was kind of surprised Necro didn't get picked, but I know that's one. That, oh, good lord! God bless your feet. But I mean, still, you, you I love you, Eric. Ancestral uh, I love into it. I mean, that's you know, Eric now doesn't have a unless he's going to drop Manorock, Manorock. He's gonna which he did last game, right? After the strip mine. Land tax. Oops, screw your strip mine. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, I agree. Necro's underperformed just Got about every best. time I've seen it. Um, naming cleric, right? You mean Eldrazi? No, gotta be cleric. Just come on. Just say it. Just come on. Just we're, we're gonna. We're gonna and still in Lando. Well, Lantac's yeah. not doing anything right now, because uh, you know, they don't land shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. Jitty. Yeah. All right. Jitty, jitty, Just hard casting a Jitty. I, I have to I have to wonder what we're, where our payoff is here for Eric. He kept a seven, which, honestly, I, you know, still in library and Lantac's over there is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot yeah. of damage. Um, so oh, that's a pretty good Pretty good card there. Oh, and Oko. an Oko. Oh. You just take eight, right? You take against eight every time. Deck? Oh, yeah, against this deck, probably. Against not. Reality Smasher? Yeah, no, I guess you're right, yeah. I mean, Reality Smasher punching the teeth. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that, JP. It's, it's underpowered because, like, I love it in CEDH, but in CEDH you have that... <laughs> Redundancy that you don't yeah. get in this format. I, I think a lot of Necro lovers are going to solve this. I think I'm going to be Look, I, Cocoa Pebbles was one of my first competitive right. decks. No lie. I love that deck. Yeah. I think a lot of people Necro lovers will solve oh. I don't even think it's that great in CEDH. Yeah. I think it's fine. Really? Oh, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But it's not like. I guess the, the, I will say the meta has shifted so much now that Necro isn't as good as it used to be. Yeah. Um, Prosh is nowhere, like, it's not a good food chain deck anymore compared to your other options. I think it's fine. I just don't think it's. it's so we did see Oko then, is what Brandon kept off of that Silver Library, which he said was one of the cards he had to have in order yeah, to win he needs, this. he needs the Three Fairy, he needs yeah. the Oko, he's going to need those tempo plays. And also this start just it helps him anyway. Like, yeah, I, this it's is a not, slow start for right. Eric. So. Yeah. The, um, this start favors Brandon in, in every way possible. Yeah. Right? Now the interesting thing is, is Brandon going to make a food here, or is he just going to make the... You can't make the 3-3. No, you, 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 you don't make any of this. There's no... Yeah, there's no threat... Are we going to get a, a Dr. PP Poo Poo token? I hope so. They're trying to bait him into real <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 no. no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. PP Poo Poo is a pretty unappealing food. Unless you're into that thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> not not trying to yuck anybody's yuck. All right. Yeah. And I, like, after, I, I like that Eric goes to the bay. Yep. Yeah, he goes you want to hit my jit, right? Yeah. Nope, sure don't. And there's a battlefield forge and a sword of fire and ice. Not not good for you. No, this is yeah. this is not looking good for our VRD crew here. Yeah. So we're gonna Ancestral Vision draw three. There's a card. Kind of rough. Now we get two. And now we get the Sylvan Library. Well, I mean, he, he, he's and there's a the three fairy. He actually should have kept the three separate because Sylvan allows you to put any cards you drew this turn back. Oh, yeah. True story. So, yeah. like, if he would have kept those separate, he could have put some of those back too. Yeah. Yeah. Three fairy off the top there. So he literally drew all of the cards he needed. Yeah, yeah. At like, this point. Turn your food into a blocker. Yeah, I guess because he can swing with reality smash. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, well, he's got to drop temple, but if he drops temple and then reality right. smashes, like, like and now you drop card. Yep. Because you lock out the ability. Yep. Sure do. Yeah. And feels bad, man. Feels bad. Yeah, this was not, especially Barry being out of play. Yeah. This was. This was a very slow key. Which, I mean, again, you know, how how are you supposed to know that he's yeah, going to yeah. open with Sylvan Light? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can't predict it. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, so, sometimes you gave and you draw draw stuff, but you don't know. Yeah, so we're going to fetch the load, lattice here into the hand, and we're just a turn or two or two turns yep. off. Thank you, Jeff. Yep, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you for the camera. This one's... Mostly wrapped up, this then, I feel like. Uh, let's take a look at the deck lists and see, uh, sideboard-wise. see what we got. So, Eric. Uh, I Metamorph's th main... No, not Metamorph. Okay, so, Eric can bring in... Um, Rest in Peace, Containment Priest. Spirit of the Labyrinth, maybe? Can be? That's main. Oh, that's main, okay. Yeah. I think... I don't think Dismember comes in. Maybe Thalia Heretic Cathar? Yeah. Because you're so much faster than him anyways that slowing him down that much more is actually pretty helpful. Uh, Thorn of Amethyst? Is Revoker's already main? Yeah, Revoker's main. Um, uh, Gideon. Purge, Gideon's pretty good. He doesn't have a way to deal with Gideon once it's on the field. Um, Besides swinging three threes. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like Gideon, Thorn, and I mean, the, the, I Thalia. I don't know if hitting the enchantments is enough to bring in like Dragon Tide. Yeah, or, I don't. I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't really love his board list as much. No. Um, where for Brandon, um, Settle obviously comes in. Tangle Wire. Elspeth Sun's Champion Winter Orb. I don't think you have to bring in Winter Orb because you've got Karn. Right. Manglehorn and Nature's Claim definitely. Counterspell, Spell Pierce? Oh, yeah, Counterspell, Spell Pierce. Pierce is main. Counterspell and Misstep are side. Yeah, I don't think you care about Misstep. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of sighting really in this. I mean, maybe Nature's Settle and Elspeth Sun's Champion? Nature's maybe? Claim. And Nature's Claim, yeah. yeah. That's about it, though. So Eric has tapped two mana here. And let's see what we are. What are we casting? Off of this, well, hopefully not stone forge. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Oh, okay. Prismatic ending. That's why we paid right. a life to get rid of the Sylvan Library. Yeah. And we are even on lands, so trying to keep him off that Mycos and flags. He did play a land last turn, so he may still have another land. Yeah. Pentad Prism. Oh, that's a good one. Right. That's that represents lives. Oh, and he has spell pierce in hand along with brainstorm. Spell pierce is not main. Is spell pierce main deck? Yeah, spell pierce is main. Go ahead. Oath of Nissa. More dig. Is that a, is that a swell spell? Hands cards. Yeah, that's a swell spelling. Yeah. Enhance. 
skill color is a skill, so it adds. Yeah, mycocentralitis, well, I don't know, mycocentralitis would be metallic, and I don't know if I'd really want to use that. All right. Cut up my mouth. Cut up my mouth. I don't need that yeah. either. So the color goes to his hand. Yep, we'll reveal that. Hands go to the bottom. So I think this, this may... Yeah, I guess you can see that there's a white cross on it. Yeah. She's singing. At least for game one, she's singing. Right, right. Oh, she's singing that. Oh, yeah. Her. So let's get those winners out there. There we go. We have no winners. Yeah. We are all the winners. Because we're at St. Lotus VRD, yep. number seven, where everyone's a winner. With Thanks for tuning in today. Have I had you all follow and listen when you can. It's been a long day, so we appreciate yeah. you taking time out of it to join us. Absolutely. We are, for those of you that don't know, we do use a Lupe Fiasco buy-in, which means food and liquor. Uh, so $50 of minimum. food and or liquor minimum. Oh, and there's a reality smasher. Uh, that is an angel coin? No, that's not good. That's a smasher. Uh, which, to play that, we did drop a land, which doesn't really matter because we have 10,000 tokens. But uh, we are going to kill, kill Karn. Which means very well. Yeah, that is real good here. And that's the power of the smash, right? Skull yeah. doesn't do it. Nope, you don't have any removal for it. And importantly now, we can equip that JIT in the Sophie. And you know what's really good at swinging a Sophie and a JIT? Reality Smasher. I think it's got like six arms or something. Yeah. You know, it's it's fine. Smasher, of course, a, a defining card of Eldrazi winner. Uh, it was the best of times. Those were the best of times. Nope, just the best. It was great. Trample, hasty... Five, five, six, five. And yeah. when it becomes a target of a spell that controls, control, discount, discount it. That's great. And That's it great. Discard a spell. We're like, okay, it's, it's, we're debating if the card is dead now. So we're, we're brainstorming in response. He's like, I'm going to do something. I got to get something. So we've got Nissa, Nissa a Mox, and a uh, land. Yeah, yeah. So one of Brandon's greatest skills is playing with the cards sent to them. Yeah. Can't really seize them. Yes. And which we appreciate. Cards up, which yes. we appreciate. There are many Very things we appreciate so. about Big Curry, and that is one of them. Okay. So we kept the Mox and the Nissa, which Nissa importantly outpaces yeah. very quickly. Well, um, not necessarily with the uh, equipment. That's know. fair. Yeah. Because it does have trample, so you can yeah. swing through and kill it. Yeah. And get counters. Yeah. And. Still get sword triggers. Yeah. You know. uh, the key here is is the three fairy in his hand. Right? Yes. But even then, I mean, well, I mean, obviously he can just el he can elf with it. And he yeah. takes elf this turn. I mean, the equipment still makes it relevant. Uh, yeah. At this point, do you make one of the equipments a three three? Well, he's gonna make another three one of his own. Okay. Yeah. So, so we can double block. Right. And try to get there. I. I think I have the smasher there, but uh, why not? It's a tough call. So we're going to get another. Uh, yeah. Untap the forest. We'll take another 3-3. Three, three. There we go. Maybe that is the right play. Yeah. Because now you ca he can't swing through that, right? Right. Well, he's got seven he can kill. So he can triple block. Yeah. He uh, kills two creatures. Kills two. But then he actually... Players or any damage? Sophie? Yeah. Oh, J no, Jitte is any damage. So, yeah. He can so he, he can wipe the three board. Three off, yeah. but he's still losing the creature. Yeah. yeah. But th and then you still have a Nissa in the mix. So, yeah, I mean, so it's, you're it's, okay it's, it's pretty. Yeah, you're if I'm okay Brandon, I'm fine with that. Because right. at that point, I can start, like, all right, I'm right. rebuilding my elf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're perfectly you know. okay with that for sure. Yeah. So we're going to tap here. Is this going to be a three fairy bounce? Time walk. Two, two, just one. Yeah, I yeah. agree. And actually, yeah, I didn't even think about that. The pin tag with Oko is a sexy thing. Yep. Yeah, I agree. True. That would have been the right play. Oh, the actually uh, the green. 
green, yeah, he, he needs another mana because the green taps for two, but it doesn't tap for two when it's a blue or a white. Yeah. And so he, I think Eric's like lecturing him on, you know, having this good green mana. Yeah. Unless he removes the last one from combat. Right. Because yeah. he had already tapped the, the sapphire earlier. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, he had tapped the sapphire earlier. The sapphire earlier for the other mana. Okay, yeah, I, I, that's kind of what I was getting the feeling from Mark is that a lot of these people are just like gassed after the tournament, so right. we may not have a four-person round robin for top half. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be you and me on commentary, buddy, because Mr. Hagen's got a concert yep. to go to. <laughs> Leave it about an hour. <laughs> a little bit beyond. <laughs> I missed the first couple of things. I don't know how that exactly resolves there, but I'm looking at it. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure. Eric's they, there, they right? figure. Yeah, Eric. Eric's got it. So Eric is now at two life. Yeah. And our reality smasher is gone somehow. Bounce with three, right? Oh right. So he just went the aggro, right? He's just like, we're gonna bounce that. And yeah, I'm gonna dudes. swing to kill you. Yeah. Ooh, five person rough. I'll figure it out. Uh, so do we does first just get three prizes then? How, how does that work? Six mana. What's this? What is this? That's a Eugene. A new yeah, Gene. All right. Eats the Pierce. Now we're going to two. So, yeah. Eric had a slow start. Yeah. And that game went longer than I thought it would for that slow yeah. start. Yeah. Yeah. That right. same. Uh, that was a... Well, it, it was a slow start combined with Brandon getting the exact cards he needed right, for that right. matchup, yeah. um, which is pretty pretty crucial there. Still pretty good in that matchup. Yeah, Dozen feels really good in that matchup. Now he keeps an orb in the board. He's got two copies if he put it in the sideboard. So that'll definitely come. Don't need Manglehorn. Manglehorn may not be bad. It blocks and it kills the equipment. That's fair, yeah. And Manglehorn may be big, so you know, yeah. he's not going to go. So it'll, like, he, he typically only kills two. He just kills four mana yeah. and removes two, and that might be fine. But um, Yeah, if Eric wins the next two, it solves a lot of things, but really, I want a Brandon championship. Okay. I understand it creates a lot of problems and makes it a nightmare for all of us, but again, the storyline of Brandon going, I'm going to steamroll this tournament on a real deck and being like, nah, man, that was miserable. I'm going back to memes. I'm not letting my memes be dreams. We're living the meme dream. <laughs> That's what I want. Exactly. Yeah, see, the people want a Brandon championship. Thank you, Swifty. If Brandon wins, we'll get you back for the next one. Don't worry. If Brandon doesn't win, we'll probably still get you back for a future one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't work. If you're lucky. Yeah. No promise. Love our pick rate. Yeah. Would be fired. No, we get fired. <laughs> yeah, very true. We just help out. It's his house. <laughs> yeah, it is his house. Facts. Facts. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't like that. I don't think it is the fun that this is good. Yeah. I agree. Brandon and Eric are both dreaming. Yeah, no, get, actually, get him the win. No, the problem is he's like he, he's probably like we, we keep trying to like Brandon's been in a lot of these in a row, and this time he wasn't supposed to be in it because we were trying to rotate him out for a while. Yeah, and then we needed him as a backup, so we brought him in. Yeah, like we're trying to get Brandon out of it. Yeah, if he wins, he gets an auto win. <laughs> That's <back>. true. Yeah, <laughs> like he's the longest going back to back to back yeah. to back to back. You know, the winner gets the auto win back. Yeah, that's that's true because we got to have the giant coil out yeah. next. Brandon's just very flexible on Saturdays. <laughs> he is, yeah. He's probably going to go out after this, too. Yep. Awkward. How do we settle that? Do we do a coin flip? Let's go to standings. See, see what we're looking at. So we have... Oh, yep. So, yeah, right now Cody is at 4-3. So he's locked in for 4-3. Depending how the rest plays out. Yeah. Kyle Ranch creep back up into 4 3. So, you know. Yep. Yeah. So 
Okay, two got. people down here below have the um, X four or worse. Right. Uh, imagine Nemo at one limb after the eight years he was making. Yeah. And then where are we going? Oh, no, 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 no. Please, we've got no. Kevin is X four or worse. Yeah. I think he's one two. I think he's got two. I think he's got two. There we go. All right. So we've got Eric at the very least is done sideboarding. Oh, we went on the mentor plan here. Okay. I like that a lot. Actually, because I feel like you need to go wide. Yeah, that's not bad. In this matchup. Um, is the mentor not made? Uh, I don't think it was. No, I think it was Sal. Kept in the vision, which obviously did some work there, which right. again only did work because of the slow start. And turn one. Right. Yeah, and turn one, yeah. Get it, getting it turn right. one is that's obviously. That's the thing where vision's, you know, if you get vision turn one, it's fine. Yeah. Like, if you get vision turn 12, it's fine. Ooh, Mason and Nemo going to game three. All right. Our standards in here are only pulling up uh, the top six. Where where is uh, Kevin at? That's a two five two four two five or one one six. I one think. six, yeah. Okay. Maybe right, somebody so else. Let me check the board here. So, or pack rat somebody. I wouldn't go. I so interesting. I thought with Eric's deck that he would have grabbed. Played a couple waste, and he didn't really need them. He grabbed the stars. Uh, yeah, I, I have not seen one. He may have one in there, but did not see one. Well, I think it's you know he grabbed three colors, yeah. four colors: blue, white, black, red. Right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Battlefield yeah. portal. Right, but did he didn't fix the red for prismatic ending. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got he got four sense. colors of fixing for prismatic right. ending. Okay, that makes sense. Um, which is relevant because a lot of the stuff that he cares about is you know that right. kills pretty right, quickly. But, uh, yeah, because you can kill up to a uh, four four drop with any yeah. yeah, five plus four five colors. Yeah. And he has the uh, Nemo. So he he can produce up to twelve or two. Yeah. So. so he's got blue white. Oh yeah, he has brush land for green. So yeah, he's yeah. got up to five. Yeah. So he can make so five or less. Um, So this, this one's going to be interesting because obviously Eric's on the play here, but I feel like he may mulligan for a more aggressive start. Yeah. So this, so I think, uh, hold on, let's see. I know Brandon, so I know Brandon in his Stormy-esque brainstorm shenanigans last time had um, uh, Pinhead pr Prism, and then this time he's playing it very well with Oko. So I like, he's really opening my eyes up to like the interest in this Prism. Yeah, um, 18 of 53. I, I think you're right, though. The spicy play, and yeah. I think it was Winding that mentioned it in yeah. the chat, of being able to you know, use the, the counters, yeah. and then, oh, look, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Right. I mean, and then last, I know last time he would use it because it's basically a free spell for Storm. Yeah. Because you, know, you can just cast it for two. And, and then, then get two mana get two back. Mana, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's a pretty flexible mana rock that, yeah, that Brandon seems is. to be gravitated towards. Yes. Yeah. And particularly a lot of times, you know, you don't... Um, Later game, you may not always need the mana rocks to keep going. You know, you're looking to, you know, in the format you're using them, yeah, to get up to speed, and then do you need them to keep tapping out? A lot of times, no. I mean, there's one for the sack or yeah for something, and then it becomes something else completely useful. But there, I think it's useful for this. I would consider him playing Oko. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely really good utility. Oh, there's the sword of library activated, right? And the swords to plowshares. Yeah. And Anissa who shakes the world. Oh, Pierce, that's a uh, Savannah. That is Savannah, okay. I was wondering if that was Savannah. Yep. So, Outer Car up to stop. There's a Tangle Wire. You know what's really good with Tangle Wire? Tangle Walkers? Yeah. I think that. Some pretty, pretty good. So, we're going to have a Breeding Pool. Untapped. Oh, because Spell Pierce. Right. Plus the Healers. Because he's going to have it. He's got the Yeah, for sure. 
for him, he does. Is it in the hand or no? It is. Oh, yeah, there we go. Cavern, naming cleric. Can't counter. It's a cleric. So now we'll drop the Savannah and presumably the Silver Bond. Yeah. Just play the Baiting Fang. Baiting four. Baiting four. I don't know why. Enchantment yeah. artifact. Artifact creature land. And of course Did you not it. drop Sylvan Library? Damn it. Swords. Because he wanted to fire off the swords. Are there any swords in here? I don't think he's swords here. That's real early. There's other stuff you're way more worried about. Are we? Is that it? Uh, We're not casting a threat. Eric, what are you doing? Ten more. Ooh, there we go. Woo wee! Alia. Ooh, that's a really uh, good one. Three drops here. of Alia, so that's lands, lands and creatures. creatures coming to play tapped. Uh, the lands is important here because yeah, that the keeps them off. Land is super relevant. Yeah. Tap. Non basis. Oh, non basis. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Tangle wire. Sure, so we're going to tap down completely this turn yeah. for Eric. Unfortunately, we don't have anything. Shimmer Mirror. He needed a Shimmer Mirror. Always. For all the spice. Goes down to three. Battlefield four. And it's round three. And then tap your planes. Tango wire. Tap your Tango wire. Still the library. Yeah, there we go. Still the library. Loves top. Why? I don't know. I feel like I'd play Silver. I guess it taps for Tangle Wire. Yeah, for Tangle Wire. But Silver Library is just so powerful compared to top. So you're telling that you're going to do anything other than stand at the door? Or, uh, yeah, that's the question. Shimmer Mirror. He's going to flash it in. He picked it. <laughs> he did? He did. No, he did. <laughs> what the? He did not. Look, a man can dream. Yeah. Didn't pick it for him. Did I? Yeah. It. Probably pick Zer to go with it. Yeah, it was uh, Mountain Mirror. Oh, yeah, for sure. Ancient, ooh, that's four mana. Yeah, that is four mana. Another counter. Three. That's a displacer. Yeah. That's good. That's real good. And now we have a very aggressive board. For Eric, because this is going to go down to fading two, so we just tap two lands and start swinging for you. You might take that Mason. Look at that. Ooh. That Mad Rainer does it. Well, that at least makes some of the. Uh, that makes some of the breakers easy. Breakers easy. Yeah. yeah. So. So Mimo concedes one game, yeah. plays out, and loses that anyway. Yeah. Plays Comes it out. in, and he gets his hit back. And he's yep. like, look, I just, yeah, I'm out of it. Dude. Yeah. So it goes back in, and. Uh, you know, take, take yep. someone down. And, I mean, even even a bad reanimator can do that. I mean, that's oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Re reanimator sometimes just gets there. Yeah. It's a you know you've got to show it to me, and when you show it to me, all right, well you, you, you got it. And this is Anissa. Yeah. Which is a three three, which is not great. Except Thalia has first strike, right? Yep, first strike. It's still alive. This is the time when I really wish I could Eldrazi displace her damage on the stack. Uh, yeah. It's a dream. Damage should use the stack oh, again. Man, that stack, man. Seed Gang Commander was. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> so good. Goblin Bidding was the deck back then. That was insane. Good old trick prospect. What is that, th that 
Elspeth? I think that's Elspeth. That's Elspeth. Yeah. I see yeah. Walker symbols. Yeah. So. I think that's why it's the only White Walker we have. Yeah. Is that Game of Thrones with the White Walker? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's a little bit different. I don't know. There's still White Walkers in <laughs> yeah, that's true. Books yeah. are not. Yeah, the that's the true. Walkers yeah. are still there. I, 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 I haven't read the last yeah. two because I've given up because George R. R. is going to die before that series finishes. Don't try that. My mom will, my mom will cry. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting turn for Eric because this is very much a like, this could swing the tide. Yeah, if you had two left on the board, I don't know. Yeah, I definitely would have waited. Yeah, actually, yeah, Displacer, Displacer also makes sense. Free, free. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. But it doesn't have first strike, so you're yeah, fine yeah. swinging with Thali here into the Nissa, trading the lane for it. Right. Yeah, I'm with you, Swifty. I want an ending. Tap in two more. Three more. Sword of Fire, nice. Ooh. Nice. He has no man for the spell person. Oh, he does. He no, does. He, does. he does. He has, but there's an ancient tomb. Right. 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 Uh, he can pay it, it appears, no matter yeah. what, but yeah. uh, he, he can't pay it and equip. Yeah. He's got the tomb in the cabin. But also, if he, if he pays the mana, he, uh, he absolutely just loses the mana. So. Yeah. Yeah, so Eric there should probably should not have picked that ancient tomb up because that, I don't know if Brandon... Is going to spell pierce without that ancient tomb. Right. Still relevant because we can still swing in with the heretic. No, he passed. No. no. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Woo. There we go. Yeah. Not, you definitely not, not swing. A, not a kill a swing. Yeah. But, uh, no, but still halves it down right. to three. Right. Oh, so we've got a three fairy, a winter orb, winter orb. Is oh, he's using huge. the other man. He's using the other man. He was pointed at the top to use the other man off of. Oh uh, yeah. Produces a, a yeah. Three yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Going winter orb here, right? We have to. That's pretty backbreaking here. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you untap to four mana because you get tomb right. or three mana, you get tomb. Um, but winter orb get creatures too, though, right? No, just lands. Just lands. Okay. Yeah, just lands. Static orb two point. Right. Right. Yeah. If that's what he put on top, which I hope it is. Oh no, we put three fairy, it looks like. I don't want a sex out like that. Yeah, I, either one's good. I just think Winter Orb helps you close the game a lot faster than three fairy does here. Five mana, what is this? This is neither of those things. Elspeth, three point for Ogden. Yep. Army of Walkers. Yep, there's the Elspeth. Now the creatures, they all come in play tap though, right? Or do they not? Nope. It's just lands? Oh no, it is creatures, you're right. So yeah, yeah they do come into play tap. Yeah, yep. they're Hey, uh, Kyle, can you uh, tell them that those creatures come to play tapped, those Elspeth tokens? Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Or Mark, if you hear Mark. this, either of you. Right. Okay. So it's down to 12. What's happening? Winter Orb. Womp womp. Yes! Most fun card in Magic. Mo there we go, yeah. Most... Fun card in all of Magic history ever. I don't care what anybody says. That card is gas. It's gas. Gas isn't fun. It kills you when you drink it. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> untap your dudes. Untap. Play a planes and fragmentize that one. Taps a sword. For And we still have a 3 3 blocker, unfortunately. So we can do oh, we're going to blink the land. Blink the land. So it oh. loses counters. We're going to kill. We're going to kill Nissa. I think we're going to kill Nissa and swing at the Elspeth. I think we're doing I mean, both. This is a four. You can't. Oh, yeah. No, you, you do have to. Yeah. I think you do kill Nessa here because I the mean, an army of one ones. Is, God, this is bad. Did yeah, he, did he just pass the turn? Did he pass? 
I think he just passed the turn. He did. What? Oh, no, he topped in response. He tapped okay. for top. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. harder to do with repeated army of one one? I, mean, I think the like three threes is what you want to go mana. for. Double yeah. Mana. No. I mean, I, I think it, it might be right. I mean, it's like it's the one one is just so inevitable. Right? Yeah, and that's true. Ne- yeah. You're never going to have another window. After those one ones yeah. on tap, you're, you're never, never going to have another window that's true. to get yeah. through that. Yeah. Right? Like the three threes you can deal with. Yeah. Um, You've got a first striker that you can suit up to make a five three. Right, right. Sure, I'm like, you are never, after the, after that, after yeah. that, he untaps those three one ones with that Nifka. Yeah. With that Elspeth, he will never get through. That's yeah. a plus ability. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. You're right, Rach. It's, you're right, son. It's got to be, it's got to be the turn. Yeah, I mean, that's why Elspeth is such a good control card. Like, you're just like, yeah. like, you're. There's so much inevitability yeah. with it. We've got draw here, and Brandon's looking to lock yeah, this three one fairy. pretty quick. Yep, three fairy, and there's still a Sylvan Library in his hand as well. Um, I just feel like at this point, this is just going to alt. And, I mean, and that's she's only going to five here. I mean, it's still, she's alt three. I mean, that's a ways off, too. Yeah. I mean, the winner or it basically does he draw a winner or kill card. Yeah. yeah. And if he does, three, he gets there. Because it's, it's worth noting, Brandon has two cards in hand. Yeah, that's it. If he if, if he draws a winner, he has a shot. I'm not saying he wins. It. Uh, yeah, if he draws no, a winner, he, he, ha- he has a shot but, though for sure. But without it, I don't think he. I think yeah. he just loses to the next turn. So. Which I think the next untap is going to be interesting well, because and, do you untap and Eric's the at pretty low. I mean, Eric's at ten. Ten ish. Yeah, he's at ten life. And he's coming. Nine. He's at one life now. Yeah, one life. Yeah. So he can't ancient tomb. Yeah. Because it's pay two, isn't it? Or is it damage? Can he suicide off Ancient Tomb? Can he go out on his own terms? I I feel I'm pretty sure it's damn. It's not. He can go off on his own terms with uh, Battle for Glory. Oh, true. Yep. There we go. He's got it. Yeah. And a darker ways. He can do them both. Yeah. That's perfect. It's everything we want. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Tango Wire. We get to not tap anything, yeah. and we get to untap. One, untap the pain land. Do it, you coward. Nope, we untapped Ancient Tomb. Do it, do it, do it. You won't do it. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, we untapped Cavern. You coward. Was the tomb already untapped? No, it's still tapped. Okay, that's based on orientation. Okay, yeah. Tomb three, four thieves. Eric still has a match left, though. Eric still has to play Kyle. So if Kyle is currently four three, yeah. there is a chance he could beat Eric. Oh wait, no, he can't beat because four threes have played all the matches. Yep, there we go. So who does Eric have to play still? Okay, so they're both 4-2. I mean, our tiebreakers may take care of this. Yeah. I mean, but Brandon goes from the 0-2 to the 5-2. Yeah. Running hot. Running hot. When you're hot, you're hot. And that's exactly what that was. Yeah. All right, so we are going to take a brief five-minute restroom break for us. Yeah. We will I may be not be shortly. back. Yeah. Actually, I am probably not going to be back. I am, I am not going to be back. So All right. Farewell, all. I have had a great time with you today. Uh, I'm sure I'll see some of you in a couple weeks when we do a recap stream of some type. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but uh, I am outro to go watch the drive-by truckers. So. Yep. Enjoy the show. I will.
Hi Can there. A buddy in here? Oh, I absolutely want a buddy. Here, uh, let me get a beer. And then... Yeah, yeah. All right, Brandon's going to come in to join us. Uh, but we're going to have Brandon on here for a second and, uh, and me as well. So we are currently dealing with the super exciting uh, drama that's uh, unfolding in the bracket right now. With Brandon's exciting defeat of Eric, it actually unlocked a whole bunch of new uh, new issues. So well, it didn't unlock them because it was always going to happen. That's true. That's a good point. Br Brandon points out that there's no chance that he wasn't going to win. So why? Did we, <laughs> Come on. How could we doubt doubt that victory coming? Uh, I really attribute this W to believing in the heart of cards. Yep. Um, giving it my all, just showing up every day, and uh, really grinding. Yeah, you got you to work up that bracket, you know. Jesus. See, here's the thing: is when I came in here, I was like, Ugh, obviously, I'm not drafting a meme deck today. No. And that's, you know, people are disappointed at first, but after my performance last time, I, you know, when I saw no alter of the brood, I was just like, why do we even invite Brandon? What's what's well, the point? <clears throat> So the point is purely selfish, sure. which is that I I think a lot of people were doubting. Uh, I think a lot of people were doubting that I could win one of these things. And it's like, listen, yeah, yeah, I, I want to give everybody a fair shot. So I didn't mean today, and so I had to prove it. Uh, so we also need to get the, the names oh, updated here. Yeah, yeah. And we might have to uh, might have to cut short the uh, the Brandon... Brendan Curry show for a second and actually talk about the match that's happening here. Am I uh, not allowed to participate? I'm just, no, no you, you can absolutely. We, we want you here. We want to hear what you have to say. Okay. Just mostly about the match. Uh, absolutely. So who do we have actually playing on here? So we have Eric on the left still, and we have Kyle on the right. So the last match, and this is effectively for all the marbles, mm -hmm. um, is I believe Kyle is 4-2. They're, they're both 4 Oh, they are? Okay. So one of them will be 5-2. Yes, so the end result of this match is that we're going to identify who's going to be playing uh, in the finals against uh, Mr. Brandon right here. So luckily we have Brandon here to live commentate this match. Yeah. Uh, who, who's sitting there on the left? Left is Eric still. Okay, right Eric. is Kyle. So Eric is sitting at 4-2, and, and on the right we have Kyle also sitting at 4-2. Exciting. Yep. Yes. Correct. Now that we got through the logistics... Uh, things that are happening, we have Lothalia in play, obviously very strong against a deck that's relying on non-creature permanence to yes. resolve the game. Uh, and there's also an Eldrazi Mimic, which, I mean, Eldrazi Mimic is a, is a weird card that I think is really strong once you have <laughs> Reality Smashers crashing in. Uh, yeah, especially the combo between that and Displacer turns out pretty good. Oh, and we, we've got a Jit. Oh, all right. So we're, we're golden. Yeah, boy. So Brandon, which of these decks do you want to play against more? Uh, Eric's, um, and <laughs> not like it's like it's a very good deck. I was really scared going into that match. Uh, I had a I had the chance for about twenty to thirty minutes to prepare for it and figure yeah. out what I was going to sideboard. You were staring at a phone really intensely, uh, and no one, everyone was trying to talk to you. You waved people off without saying a word. I said, "Get out of my face, you heathens! I have yeah. things to do," and I did them. Um, but I, uh, I felt like that winter orb as I think was demonstrated was just going to be a bad magic. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> like, so Brandon, question for you. Did yeah. you purposely lose the first two matches to yes. get people suspense? That is what I was. Yeah. When Jason came in here. I was kind of in the middle of saying like, listen, if I come in here in seven, oh, there's no suspense in, right. in lieu of memeing, I was going to have to mount a comeback <laughs> in which I won 10, in which I won 10 consecutive games in a yes. row and yeah. counting. So, uh, I, I have them at six already. It's pretty brutal. Yeah. That Jitte should have two more counters on it, right? Yes. Uh, so, so there's probably two counters sitting in that Jitte yeah. as Eric's smashing face, uh, even without it, will draw the smasher. There's also a Mystic Forge, now luckily banned in, in other formats, but still legal right here. Does it say May? Or should I go remind them to put the uh, counter? No, they just got the charge yeah. counter. Yeah. Okay. Um, and oftentimes you'll see people build up counters in the Jitte and like wait for a little bit. Yeah. Not Eric and Blue. Eric doesn't wait for anything. He just no. pushes in and deals the damage. Get him out of here. Don't need him. Uh... Yeah, so primarily the reason I don't want to face uh, Kyle is because he has a bunch of bullshit cards that I don't know what they do. And I don't feel... 
And I don't feel like reading. We them. got a reader. We got a reader. Uh, I know. Lantern. Oh, no. I, Lantern's real bad here, I feel like. All right, so let's talk about the card Lantern of Insight. Brandon, do you want to give us your insights, or have you read this card before? Uh, I ha- This is a card I have read. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's interesting to get kind of like a Lantern control-y matchup, especially, you know, somebody coming out of the first draft spot. Yeah. First in the order. Uh, it's surprisingly potent and effective. Obviously, you're not fighting anybody for any of the cards. No. Uh, not that I can think of. But uh, it it does work. Like, you know, as I've shown previously with Altar of the Brood, this is a 40-card format. You start off having drawn eight. That's already down to 32. Listen, I'm doing the math here, guys. No <laughs> one listens! <laughs> uh, I have a bit of a buffer. Um, okay. And, yeah, especially when you kind of chain those with three things together, like... It, 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 pretty, it gets it gets solid. down there, yeah. Uh, and when he can manipulate your deck, especially is the oh, most yeah, potent part. For about sure. It. So Kyle's kind of sitting up here against the ropes right now. He is at six life. Yeah. I have a servant, and we have okay. a transmute in hand. So that transmute means that he can go find the grindstone, but he doesn't have three mana to activate it. No, so he would have to draw a land, which he does have on top of his deck. Uh, the thing is, but that, he's that dead. Land doesn't he's have for three. It does not. Um, but we can kill the servant. Okay. Because we have jit counters. So we're swinging, uh, and you've either got to block and trade your painter, or lose your painter servant, or not block and lose your painter servant. Well, painter servant is a 1 3. So, yeah. So, I mean, the jit counters can't kill it in, in the instant speed. Uh, so, so, like, that that's the normal feeling. Well, like, got, got to swing if, in. If he doesn't <laughs> block, then Correct. he can kill it, or he blocks and it dies anyway. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Eric can kill it on his own turn after combat. That's, yeah. That's. So we're going to transmute here for a grindstone, I assume, and say you got to kill it. And he threw away the Mystic Force. You can actually find anything four or higher. Oh, true, CMC. yeah. Four or, lo- or four, four or less, less. yeah. Oh. No, he didn't have the Forge. He threw away Pixis. The Forge oh, is on sorry. Eric's side. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. I don't You're know good. what that bullshit does. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's too many words. It's like a yeah. red enchantment. It's like Vicious Shadows. No, shut up. Does anybody know I'm it? over it. No, Starkin's Unsealing. No. Nope. That's the card. No. Nope. Don't care. That's a card. I'm at like six, six or seven hundred. Choose cons or hordes or something. Yeah. I don't know. I, shut up. No, I'm, I'm I'm not reading this bullshit. Tell me what it does. Yeah. yeah. Am I dead? Un, no. Once Sarkin Unsealing sees play in some real format and actually does something, we'll we'll worry about it then. Oh, Until then, so I think we'll we'll let it hang out at the five cent. No, it's here. thirty-seven cents now. You're welcome, everyone. Yeah. It was twelve. Oh my god. Yeah, Eric is just umajit to quit. Yeah, he is. Looks oh, like, uh, that, that's oh! Yeah. He's gonna want to. He's gonna want to keep that on top of his deck and put it in his hand, uh, lest Kyle has something to say about that. Yeah. So there's a mind sensor, which would have oh. been great last turn. Oh, uh, as it stands, we're still just killing the servant. Yeah, he's in chump block mode. Chump block mode against a jitte, and this ha- is having real a real bad. Having like Kyle doesn't have any welder shenanigans. Can nope. he even get the painter servant back? No. Uh, he, well, he has Emery. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we've got a metamorph. All right, Metamorph can copy Grindstone and mill him out. Dear God, that is beautiful. <laughs> See, this is why I'm here. Yeah, this for painter for painter servant to oh. play. Having Metamorph coming into play, copying the Grindstone, milling your opponents out. It's not just your opponent's cards that choose a color. It's, it's all of the cards. Uh, uh, so Eric. Eric. Uh, Eric yeah. slams that win. That was so we're, nice. We're one one now, aren't we? Or was that game one? Oh, that, that was, was game one. Yeah. Oh, that was game one. Okay. Eric is now up one zero versus Kyle. That is shocking to see what happened there. Yeah. I've never seen that in any game I've ever played. Like Painter Servant Grindstorm is banned in every format, so it's a really unusual thing to see even that. To, to use your own opponent's painter servant against yeah, them. That's while your opponent has their own grindstorm in play and win on that good. tempo win. Gee, pretty, well, pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, that is some artisanal magic. Yes, that, so that is, is organic farm-to-table. Farm you'll yes. never see it anywhere else. No. Locally sourced here oh. in St. Louis. Oh. I know we like to joke around about this format, but like, there is stuff that you just would never find because other formats are so focused, and these decks yeah. have to be, by definition, a little more relaxed Loose. and willing to interact. Yeah, yeah. It's super cool to see. I, I think that's... I mean, we've seen some cool interactions. We saw that bitter ordeal that you ruined for us. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. Not really. I'm, I'm so mad about that. I'm sorry about that World War II dragon combo not winning out. Like, uh, dra- Dragon's one of my favorite combos of all time, uh, so it's sad to see it not actually be able to win. But we did get to see the even more exciting finish where we get to play more magic, where a World War II dragon leads to a draw. Ooh. That's, 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 listen, no, that's not more magic. That's, that's where... That's, Winter Orb is more magic. Stasis is more magic. That's what I'm saying, my yeah. dude. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by people that don't like playing magic. <laughs> no, no. I, love I, playing I, magic, I like playing magic. I don't like it when my opponents play magic. Yes, exactly. Because I, they're better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they didn't draft those cards, you know, because yeah. it, it says your opponent, no, they're done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fine. Kyle going for the uh, the, the, pile the trademark shuffle. pile shuffle. Yep. That, that's one of those... I'm feeling a little salty. Yeah. But not so mad because I know it's my own fault. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you can't play... Oh, I mean, he's, he's got Metamorph, so I gotta... No, he, he didn't know he had it in his hand. Yeah, That's, I'm gonna play around that. No one did anything wrong that game. Just beauty happened. Yeah. To be fair, this VRD6 front runner, me, Brandon Curry, would never have played around that. So if that <laughs> tells you anything, <laughs> then I don't, you know... That's it's. This brings me to another point, which is the thing I love about I've VRD. I've actually seen that as well, Swifty. I remember that stream. The thing Sorry. I love about VRD is that, that we don't have pros play in this, so it's not a solved format. You don't have to worry about people coming in and just, like, ruining the format for everyone else for finding the best decks. You can yeah. just have amateurs try out wild stuff, and they still manage to win tournaments. Yep. So it's really fun. To be honest, that is why I dropped my first two matches today. Yeah. I <laughs> so didn't want I didn't, think you were I didn't want to get discovered. I, want to kept, I wanted yep. to keep it yeah. tight. Mm-hmm. In order to keep it right. You're like T Swift in Nashville. Makes sense. Yes. Precisely. So all right, uh Eric opens with a mox, uh, but nothing to show for it. Yeah. Like. But we do have a Stoneforge next turn off of it. Alright. Oh, we've got a recall into a time walk. That's pretty good, I hear. Ooh. Subtlety with the card to pitch is pretty rough knowing you've got Stoneforge coming. Also but then uh, two lands. Kyle just drawing three cards face up off of Ancestral Recall because he had the time uh, the Atlantic in play. Yeah. So we're gonna get a. Uh, now I, you know, just just an observation from the games that I have seen Kyle play is that very frequent, and this was, mind you, a time walk that went until the seventh, eighth, ninth round. Yes, it, seventh, seventh round. Yeah, uh, it is very frequently an explorer for Kyle. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's not ideal. Uh, you're, you're not wrong, but he took it late enough that that's actually still fine. No, yeah, 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 there's plenty of upside there. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. Oh, Torp Orb. And we know there's a subtlety in hand, so we've got to force the Stone Forge here. It is cool to see in the rubber match, Ancestral Recall, the first pick of this Vintage Wizardry draft, yep. having a huge play of the game. I'm still salty that he didn't Ancestral Recall Nemo out of the game. That was an option? Yes. He had Dear five God. cards, in, or he had six cards in his deck. He had Bizarre out. And Kyle has a recall in his hand. I'm like, come on, do it, you coward. Do it, do it, do it, do it. I I don't think I could do that. I couldn't pull that trigger until they activated the bizarre. Oh, man, I would absolutely pull that trigger all day long. All right, so even mine's in play. I wouldn't have paid attention. Yeah. (laughs) Lodestone Golem. That's a good one to see. So so even mine sensor is is a a super powerful card that has tons of strange interactions, less so in this match, because... Yeah. Uh, Kyle's deck doesn't have as many uh, shuffle effects. Transmute is one of the only tinker. ones. Tinker, you know. Sure. Um, I mean, if you, if you bust that out against flash. a Tinker, woof. Oh, oh yeah, my God. Yeah. Back breaking. Yeah, but with the Lantern, you know it's coming, so it makes it a lot less powerful. Yeah. Yes. So Emery, Emery comes into play, milling a bunch of nonsense that doesn't seem to matter. I see an island, a mountain. Is that a mountain? Uh, I don't know. There, yeah. I don't see any good artifacts. Ooh, uh, we're at five yeah. now. Three mana for Archon. Nope, that's a... Or, uh, insp- uh, Skyclave Apparition. Yes. Yeah, which has, again, Eric's favorite keyword ability. Looks like it has flying. Yes. That's what I said. Yeah. When I, when I was about to play Eric, I said, wait a minute, this this Skyclave Apparition doesn't even have flying. This card is stupid. Yeah. I also had to <laughs> argue with someone for two minutes today about whether this card made an illusion or a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it makes an illusion, it, to be yeah. clear. Uh, Which also does not have flying. <laughs> Correct. Correct. All right, so Brand- Brandon is uh, is 
going to go into his uh, trance mode, try to build We're tinkering. Up oh, for the blight steel. Oh god. How did he tinker? Wait, wait. Can he, did, did he find the blight steel without four? Can you pause him a minute? Sure. Hey. Oh, it was just on top. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We're good. Never mind. We're good. We're good. Sorry. He knew it wasn't. No, you're good. It was the top card. Yeah. It was the top card. So it was known to be on top. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I freaked out. When I see Avon Mines in turn play, it's a very easy card to forget. And, yeah. Uh, I wanted to make sure we were making some things kosher. We actually don't. We're not allowing Mark to play again until no, he not. until he remembers yeah. that that stuff is happening. You know, he's he's too on top of it. He is. This is why I sit there with a headphone in my ear 30 seconds after the fact and then ask them questions that they already know the answer to. Yes. That's the way to do it. Yep. All right, so we've got a Stoneforge Mystic now, which unfortunately there's no Cauldra Complete, although that doesn't really help against Indestructible. Or no, it's Exile when it does damage, so it would actually work here. You know what's funny? That is a triggered ability and not a replacement effect, so it only applies if the creature survives first strike combat damage. It has to, be, it has, to have six toughness or higher. Huh. It's crazy. I would have never noticed it. I never knew that. you pointed it out. Yeah, that's wild. Because Sword of Cauldra actually has that interaction yeah. written yeah. on it. Huh. Oh, so that's a Sophie. So Sword of Fire and Ice getting equipped to this Avon yep. sensor. It's Eric's only target, right? Yeah. That and Jitte? That and Jitte are the yeah. only targets he has. Let's find the original Listen, arts. if you're going to have two targets that aren't Blight Steel and Cauldra Compliot, uh, this, they're not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's strange that... I, I Block, we're at nine infect. Nine infect. What did I say? You said Blight Steel. Oh, oh yeah. yeah batter, batter Skull. Blab, blabber Skull. Uh, uh, I, I'm on. I'm on beer number nine right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, 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 the the blight seals and the batter skulls are gonna the are gonna is, meld together. I will go to nine and back. Time walk. I will go to the next game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this pushes us to the final game. Yeah. Two game three for again. All the marbles to see who is playing Brandon in finals. And Brandon again. Desperately doesn't want to play Kyle because Kyle's well, card has too much text whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, that's fair. Yeah. I, I, desperate. It, I, I don't feel like reading right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, that's fair. There's been at least 45 cards worth of reading today. Yeah. That's okay, that's what judges for, for, are for. Yeah. We'll read them to you. Yeah, we got a reader. Oh, but if I'm playing against one. No, um, read them all. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tire him out. <laughs> hey, that's at prevent defense. Yeah, that's how it works. Humans are persistence predators. Just, just don't give up the big plays, and you're fine. There you go. Yeah. I do like when we discussed about Eric. Oh, who should go on on, on camera next? Uh, Brandon's exact phrasing was Eric. Let's have him play four matches before he plays me to make sure he's real tired out. Yep. I said as tired as goddamn possible, <laughs> <laughs> and I believe I said it just like that yeah. too because I'm in full gremlin mode. Yeah. Uh, I've had. Are you ever not? Yeah, sometimes like I've eaten and like slept an appropriate number of, oh, of yeah. minutes fair, and, and fair, the like. Fair, yeah. yeah, so we're cutting back over here to uh, to see what's happening. There's a few people off camera that you can't quite make out, but oh, you can make out. Yeah. I'll make out. Yeah. This is a fairly full booth at this point. Yes, we're quite. very excited in our wonderful library, which you can't see the Sarah Angel symbol. That's true. We do have every copy of Sarah Angel, other than the Summer Sarah Angel, which Jason's working on getting for me. We're, it's, so we're going to make knows, it happen. If anyone yeah. knows about the Summer Sarah Angel and can find me a copy, I would appreciate that. This is certainly one of the finer places I've loitered on random Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. I haven't been hassled by any homeless people yet. I or cops. Or, or cops. Like or yeah. I haven't had drunken women screaming woohoo going down the street. Oh, my God. Well, you there's, there's not generally yet. fewer copies okay, yeah, of Sarah the, Angel. The night is young. It's grow fast and not got to go home. So. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. That's related. Fair. If you were playing this matchup, what would you bring in? Okay, so if I was in this matchup and I am Kyle. Yes. It's Grimlock. Ooh. Oh, we're back That apparently means they're already playing a game. Oh. So we are, we're chatting about sideboarding plans when... Uh, They've already sideboarded, so we've got Revoker oh, or Revoker Monolith. Monolith. Yep. Yeah. That's interesting, shutting off the enabler versus my inclination would be to just go straight for the uh, Mind Slaver. Yeah. See, I uh, I think he probably did that because uh, I'm guessing that means he has Displacer in hand. Yeah. Interesting. Also, I've, I've seen very few games where Monolith, where Monolith wasn't the instigator. Thalia down. Yeah, Thalia okay. down. Yes. So we've got Athalia, and we played City as land for turn, so we've definitely got to play next turn that's going to capitalize on that. Yeah. Uh, 
Eric also did point out that he is not the most uh, observant when it comes to uh, his city of traders. So he has uh, he has okay. sacrificed the city of traders twice today. Yeah. That's a dive down on end step. Yeah. So we're dropping a grim monolith here. I'm I'm just now realizing Dressed that up. I'm pretty sure during our down, match. Yeah. Oh no! It just cantripped. Did he? No, that was a Shivan. So he can't yeah. he can trip the dress down in response to Thalia, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, in my match first, Kyle, he had Resolve Painter named Red, and I reanimated Iona uh, on named, Blue. Yep, yeah. Which was like, the Iona on Blue was good originally, then it died and it came back, and, and it was that less grindstone good. over, and I was like, no, come on. All right, so we got an Explore into four mana four. Right. A three mana card. Urza. Oh, Urza. Urza, sure. Or just an Urza, that's four mana, because Thalia is non-creatures. <laughs> I love that. An extremely <laughs> late friends. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Vivi Poo Poo MD token comes into play. Uh, it's only a 1 1 right now, but it can tap for mana. Yeah. yeah. Because that ability is on Urza and it is not on the creature itself. Ooh. The creatures do not gain it. It is uh, it's part, oh, of, part of Mr. Lord Har High Artificer. Artificer. So I'm curious what Eric's pleasure is. I assume he had to have something to do this turn where he needs to tap City, which obviously to me says Reality Smasher. Right. Well, but I guess you would tap it, play your fifth land out. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. And, and the, the cavern is named on Eldrazi. So Cleric. obviously, uh, Kyle doesn't have a lot of counter spells. Uh, we don't no. really worry about that. This draft has actually been criminally underdrafted. Yeah. Uh, but there could be something like a Thought Not Seer, would be yeah. very strong right here. Yeah. I don't know. Eric, Eric has a very full hand right now. Very few cards have been cast. Did he just pass? No way. He that, just passed. Uh, that's not a great spot. Incredible. Oof, no, doof. I don't want to play really Kyle. This is stupid. The 1 4 <laughs> body on, on Urza is really, is, really working. Yeah. Spellseeker. Well, see, I, oh, I mean, I this? thought. One four what is this? Any one four. Is this a, uh, a grindstone? Is he going to destroy? Oh, he's he's oh, mind oh. sensor. Got him. Got him. Yeah. Okay. So that Spellseeker could look in the top four cards. Right. There's a subtlety which it can't get. Yeah, okay. So I was thinking that he was maybe holding up a dismember, but the, the mind sensor obviously yeah. Yeah. makes a lot of sense right there. Yeah. That shows a lot of restraint from Eric, actually. It does, for sure. I mean And he, he hemmed and hawed about it, which may have been bluffing right. on whether he was gonna use this. He had too. to have something there. Yeah. Wow, that's and, and he just straight bricked it, right? The spell yeah. seeker's just nothing. straight bricked. Okay, and Emery, Emery does resolved. Oh, and, and there's a grindstone in the game. All right, so that finds one half, and With there's a bridge. bridge. Those are good. I mean, bridge has got to be the immediate priority, right? Yeah, for sure. Because we're, we're getting close to Helden. I mean, yeah. Kyle has more power on board than Eric does right now. That's true. But none of it flies. True. Yeah, and on top of that, um, Eric is just going to be able to produce bigger monsters, so it's better yeah. to just turtle up and, and get caught with your pants down and totally sure. wrecked. Get your reality smashed, as it yes, were. Yes, indeed. Which, we may see this turn. Again, we hemmed and hawed about the city tap. Right. So, it's potentially here? Well, and that might have been hemmed and hawed about playing a, a fourth land. Yeah. Or or just playing the mind sensor main phase. That might have yeah. been just what's yeah, that's commit true now. Yeah. Or do I want to get him? Right. Do something. you want to see what you can bait? Because, I mean... I'd rather debate the guy. Yeah. Oh, we're still... Worst case scenario, you flash in and stuff. This yeah. is Eric, classic Eric holding a land, deciding whether to play it or not. Yeah. And accepting the fact that he's going to lose beyond the mana if he does. <sighs> Eric, Eric, Eric. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. Good insight. Good insight. Tap, tap, insight. tap in two, three. Okay. Three mana. Oh, Why? that's a jitty. He overtapped. He did, so he has oh, one. Thalia. There's a Thalia oh, Thalia. Oh, so there is. Yep. Okay. And second land for turn, sack, equip, swing. There we go. Strong. Very good play. That's a strong pocket. Is Emery a 1 2 or a 1 3? 1 2. 1 2. Okay. Yes. Emery's only a 1 2, yeah. Really? Okay. Okay, so Emery is dead. Better than. Yeah. So Jitte loses both of its counters in order to kill the Emery. Which denies bridge exactly. and grind spell. That so is that's pretty good. Very, very powerful. That so, is. It also denies them for the rest of the game, right? There's no way to recur that Emery. She, or recur yeah, Ky Kyle Eric. does not have a way to recur Emery. She's there for good. Yeah. Here, I'll pass it. We have, we have Stephen Hayden joining us. So here. there is a Tez in hand, but he's only at five. So the Thalia is oh, slowing the Tez. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
but not tough. There we go. So yeah, there's a Tez in hand, but uh, the Thalia is slowing it. There's also a bottled cloister in hand and a blight steel. Okay. Bottled cloister is interesting. Five drop, right? Four yeah. Drop. yeah. Four, four drop. Okay. So, that's, so we yeah, couldn't it's cloister. Four. Yeah, it's, it's four. It's four through the Thalia. Yeah. If you can afford to take the whole turn off to do it. Yeah. So five. Yeah. Try. yeah. Well, and he's not doing that much pressure, right? Like, yes, uh, the even mind sensor does provide a bunch of jitte pressure, but there's yeah. no actual damage coming through. Exactly. Right. right. So pay four mana, sacrifice an entire turn to draw two cards for the rest of the game. It's sure. not the worst choice. Yeah. You do need to answer this mind sensor eventually, though. Right. Because, I mean, he can, ki- he can kill the um, uh, Urza next tr- this next draw swing. Correct. All right. And then... Oh, Fragmentize on Cloister. There we go. See, that's problematic. Right. Yeah. Fragmentize is four or fewer, right? Yep. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Four or less. The card's so so he can kill the token here if he wants, or yeah, he can just get rid of the spell. One, one. Right, or he can get rid of, actually he can get rid of the spell seeker and the if he wants. He says that's a one one. Yeah. And then he's not gonna kill it until he has to. He's just like yeah. so now Tez comes down though. Yep, now Tez is here. Like please Maybe. feel free to swing it. No, he's gonna we're, we're activating Urza. Right. Yeah. Uh and, and he's saving the one mana, of course, when he activates Urza to pay for the Thalia tax on right. top yeah. of the zero. Yeah. Right. Which is important. <laughs> there, there's one half of the combo that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because Grindstone is gone, and there's no way to recur it. What did Grindstone go with? I missed it. Uh, Grindstone was milled off Emery, which okay. was then destroyed. Right. And we don't... I've not looked at deck lists enough to be very confident in this, but I'm fairly confident that uh, there's no way to recur Emery or recur artifacts without Emery. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. There's not. We haven't seen it today anyway, and I don't recall any. Because we we mentioned that Academy Ruins was the card he wanted, but Kevin drafted that. If that yeah. makes sense? Yeah, because he had the Slaver. And so we're he's just killing Urza. Yeah, we're just going to kill Urza. Yeah. Save up the tokens. Yeah. And yeah. Just yeah. This is heads-up play from Eric. I think no, definitely. Eric's been playing this tight really all day long. long. Yeah. yeah, he's been playing tight all day long. Yeah. It's I really mean. disappointing to watch someone be so talented at like Commander Casual games and yeah. also be talented at these kind of games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and just be like, all right, well, Battle Cruiser is where you're staying. Yeah. Come to the CEDH side, Eric. We need you. We'll put him back into the booth soon. He won't be able to do this again. <laughs> uh, he, he's getting his taste. He'll, 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 he'll run. Unless he wins it all. and then Actually, he can't win it all. Brandon's won it all. So. Yeah. No, if Eric wins, he's up against Brandon in the final. Oh, okay, for a playoff. Too. Okay. But wouldn't Brandon have the breaker? Because he beat him? If we do breakers. If we do breakers, yeah. Okay, so there's a mana vault for We've been doing a sort of fire and ice. So this is actually pretty quickly going to be lethal. Um, not just between oh, like yeah. Swifty points out. Thank you for the assist from Chicago. Oh Codex yes, Shredder. Codex Shredder does recur okay. cards. You're right. I don't know how realistic it is as an option, but it yeah, might no, it, it can recur cards. He got. I mean, he he did it earlier and then got a card off the top off of it. I yeah. I forgot. It. Right. And Kyle is an aficionado of playing weird decks and playing them in the strangest way possible. Yes. So if yeah. anybody's caught that, it'll be him. It, it'll yeah. be him for sure. Yeah. He would love nothing oh, more very than ruined. to do that. Buried ruin oh, buried there. ruin. He has yeah, too. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's yeah, so yeah there, ways. there's plenty of okay. ways. So yeah, we're all right. It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's been a long day. Sorry. That's <laughs> my that's my fault. So we're taking six. We got two counters. So, so he's just kind of hanging out. Waiting Spirit of the right. labyrinth. That is brutal here. <laughs> Oof. That is huge. I really love this death and taxes deck. Yeah. I, I talked to Eric about this a little bit. Uh, I, I think that this is a deck that. Because white is criminally underdrafted, you have so many good options. Exactly. Well, in also, th- I think I, I think in fact it's not death taxes; it's draws in taxes because right. the yeah. threat, like the problem with death and taxes, is the threats are easy to get rid of with the pyroclasm things like that. Yeah, right. like this. draws in taxes, they're bad. The threats cannot. Real you hard. can't pyroclasm or yeah. inf- you know infest the the threats yeah. away. I was you say that, but pyroclasm and infest would both be very strong right now. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I wouldn't touch there, that even mind sensor. <laughs> there are some yeah. boards. So, like, I brought in massacre worm. Yeah, sideboard games, oh, and there yeah. was a moment where I realized I was like, "This only hits like half his deck." Yeah, yeah. Th- there's a there is a world where I entomb this, and I and get like and I one go, of his wow, four I have, I have yeah. nothing going right. on yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this board, obviously, obviously, right. But I mean, against yeah. a big half of it, I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't it just doesn't do enough. And with the jeet, does it, does it have to target the creature that it's equipped to on the plus two plus two, or is it yeah. Yeah. yes? Okay, I, I know that's the, I thought it was the only one. That yeah, Swifty, I think at the last VRD, you and I talked about the death and taxes list. How nobody here had drafted it, and how it was really good. We've had some pretty close. I mean, Mark Mark had black. Um, Mine was pretty far. Mine was a Pakula deck. Mine yeah, was very dead guy. Dead yeah, guy, exactly. right. 
That's what I draft any time I play. I mean, Dead Guy and Death game. and Taxes are pretty no similar. No one wants to play that. Oh, they yeah. give you everything. everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. De- Dead Guy and Death and Taxes are pretty similar. My I mean, Dead Guy was a at least green black. Right, at, at least in these purposes. Yeah. You know. Dead Guy is slightly different in that it is fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Ooh, that's a thought not hitting potentially, Taz. Dear God. Oh, no. What are, are, are we, we worrying? worrying? We're worrying. We're worrying. We're worrying on the top four cards of the library. <laughs> yes, we are worrying on the top oh four. So I once, oh, yeah. in Vintage, I once even mind censored, a, back when it first came out, and no one expected, I even mind censored a Tinker, and he hit the Blight Steel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easier when the Blight Steel's revealed. Actually, time. it wasn't Blight Steel yeah, then, sorry. It was, it wasn't, well, this was pre Blight Steel, so it was whatever, the Dark Steel or whatever it was at the time, you know. Yeah. Three, four, oh, that's a Codex Shredder. Oh, he's he's yep, holding he's, it. Oh. We're, we got the cycle. Hit this mic. I'm in the road. Yep. All right, y'all. All right. All right. I got a concert. All right, guys. So we're going to take a right, brief break right. here. Okay. We're going to figure out what's going on with prizes because now we have Eric and Brandon as the sole five twos. So here's the standings. They need to be updated. Uh, so we've got them as the two five twos, but then we have a bunch of four threes now. So four three, we have Mason, Cody, and Kyle. So that's a three-way tie, and of course, only top four get prizes, uh, unless we change things. So we will let you know. We'll be right back. All right, so we are hopping back on right now. It's going to be uh, 
Jason, Nemo, and Mark back here in commentary. Let me get the cameras up for everybody. And we just sorted out the uh, the actual results of what's happening here. Roll it. Jason, we're going to swap our names a minute. Nemo probably won't be visible. Don't sadly. Chat, I love them. Uh, Eric says... I haven't seen you all day, Twitch chat. Yes. Eric really misses uh, Twitch chat and feels like... 5-2. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good call. Let's just jump to the gameplay here. We don't yeah. need to see our names. No. So... Uh, oh, you got to click Kyle. So what we decided, typically what we do is we have top four draft, and it's four prizes, or four prizes, two prizes, one prize, one prize. Uh, the two five twos, who are Eric and Brandon... Graciously agreed. Basically, look, first we're fine seeding one prize down the line, so every four three gets paid out. So we will have three two one one one, basically. So it'll be first picks, second picks, third, fourth, fifth, second, and then first gets the rest. Yeah, and hopefully nine seed helps us out here with identifying what the the bracket looks like or standings and is what it's called. Uh, Nope, that's not helpful at all. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll figure set out. Set coverage to set event. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, we can just go to the standing scene, can't we? That's a great point. God, it's just so attractive and also available for uh, help being helpful. Yes. So, uh, let's, there we go. All right, so we we now you're fine. We'll have to rotate back in a second anyway. Yep. Well, yep, that's just the way I like it. Yep, just sorry. It's just me, guys. Seeing only Jason. All right, so... <laughs> In finals here, we're going to have Brandon and Eric. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Um, the Chicago folk have a request, and I feel it fi feel it sounds reasonable. Uh, and that is, if both Eric and uh, Brandon know their first I picks, trust you. then they the other three can just take theirs and get gone because the Chicago folks want to start Drive driving. On. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that is approved. Yes. And uh, do you have a piece of paper I can like write down who took what, or do you want it, or do you care? No. Got it. We're just gonna yeah picture it. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So we run on the honor system here. That's right. Uh, Chicago folks are gonna be home by around one p one a.m. tonight. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna let them have have a little bit of a shorter drive. They drive like real men. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. Brandon and Eric, we're going to be walking into finals here. We ended up with a three-way split between Kyle, Cody, and Mason. Yep. Uh, so Mason is the one that has to get back home. Yep. Uh, and, yeah, it'll be exciting to see. Uh, to hear, I know Mason is probably not feeling super great right now after coming back off of a dominating first plays last yeah. time. Uh, it, he got you know, giant he, killed. Yeah, he got, he got giant killed on camera. That doesn't feel great. And then also had to follow it up with, uh, with actually... Doing the uh, with having to actually play out those matches yeah. after not yeah. being super happy with his death. He got beat to death by a hard cast world gorger dragon, and that l cannot feel good. No. Wait, that happened? Yes, that was how I that was how I closed out our game three. Oh my lord! He just he was not drawing anything, and I was sitting there trying to figure out how to cheat the thing into my graveyard, and I was like, you know what? This is a guess. waste of time. Lotus lands world gorger dragon. It hits for seven, and it's got yeah. flample. Yep, that is amazing. Yeah, have never done that in my entire life. Yeah, and of course we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Brandon and Eric come in here and oh, show yeah. off their winnings. Yeah. If in fact if Eric wins, we need to get a dramatic photo of him holding it above his head, like a boombox, so yeah. we can use that as his Facebook profile picture forever. His Facebook profile picture, like has, say anything style. Yes. Yeah, yeah. For the past fifteen years, has been say anything style photos of him in judge outfits holding things above his head. Yes. <laughs> There's a whole Facebook group about it. It's very complicated, yeah. but it'll be exciting to see. Uh, I'm mostly happy that we were able to see Brandon and Eric in finals. Uh, Brandon, of course, longtime uh, participant in the VRDs, uh, usually known for drafting Alter of the Brood and doing ridiculous things like taking fast bond <laughs> in the first round. Yeah. Uh, and then Eric, commentator, laid back, doesn't really like to play competitive games, now winning out against some of the most competitive players around the uh, the Midwest. So I, I actually asked Brandon, I said, you know, we were trying, he said, you know, oh, I'm back, you guys, you know, I, I didn't think I was going to play, and then I show up and I want to win the whole thing. And I was like, well, we were trying to give you a break. And he said, no, this is the only form of magic I care about. <laughs> I don't ever want a break. Yes. And I said, well, you know, if you win it, you get the auto invite. And he goes, well, I get the invite anyways, don't I? Because one and two get the invites, or did you change that? No, he's, he's not wrong. Yeah, no, he, he does. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so Brandon is always our perpetual backup, and somebody always bails. So Brandon has been here, I think, for every VRD? Every VRD so far, yeah. I, I think he may one. have missed VRD 1. True. Yeah, yeah. he missed VRD 1, yep. but he's been at every one since. Yeah, of course, Brandon would chicken out in the only VRD where I, I drafted a competitive deck, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. he, he was a little scared. Took him a while to ramp up. But. Yeah, no, that's, that's for sure. Looks for like sure. There's, there's, some, there's something hanging out there. Uh, Ema, do you mind uh, checking in and see what's going on over there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's possible that they were just, like, refining their decks, getting them all put together, but yeah. uh, there shouldn't be much holding them back at this point. They no. could also be doing exciting uh, things about drafting the actual... Yeah. Yeah, Bottle left. bottles. And yes, with you, I, this is not the finals I would have predicted. I would have predicted, you know, your buddy Mason would have done better um, and been up there because he, and I, I don't know if he just, I'd be curious to ask him if he was just rattled or if he was just no. like, he couldn't figure out where he wanted to go. I, I think it's that. He, we talked about it okay, a little bit. Okay, one or two. Thank you, Hyphen. Yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit, and uh, I, he, he didn't find a lane. And then when he did find a lane, it was already taken. Yeah. Uh, so he kind of fell into this lands deck when it was not an open space for him. It's just it, taking them a while to get through their uh, draft picks. That makes okay, sense. Fair. Kyle assures us that we will be back on track here in a second. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, but yeah, no, Mason's deck, I think, just kind of like... Uh, it, it got stuck on the fact that he was on lands, and he picked that... Uh, after the point where it was correct to pick it, and he's disappointed about that fact, but then also didn't audible off of it into more things that were open. So, I don't know. I, I think overall it's a pretty frustrating position for him, uh, and it also just didn't work out luck-wise, right? Like, a lot of this is you're playing a seven-round tournament, and then regardless of how good your deck is, you still have a ton of luck because you're playing against seven other people, Yeah. and, like, there's a ton of different variants that can happen. Yeah. And we were I was talking to Jason about this earlier. You cannot engineer your deck with redundancy. It is no. extremely difficult in this format. Yep. Yeah. So you are at the mercy of luck at all times because you can't insulate yourself in the way that you can in constructed formats. Yeah, correct. Definitely. Hey, guys. Hi, Mason. Hey, all right. Well, great to see you. Thanks Always for Always a pleasure. Out. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're invited to the next one. We'll it was be great to play with you. Hey, it was yeah. really great. Yeah. Take it easy, guys. Yeah, Thank see you, man. Well, I'll be tuned into the stream to watch the finals. Yeah, yeah. let's see it. All right, so Mason and the Chicago crew are all heading out. Uh, they really, I mean... Despite not putting up the rankings that they did last time, where they came like one and three or something ridiculous, it was, yeah. it was uh, Swifty. I know uh, didn't do as well as he hoped, but really was a force to be contended with the whole time through. Yep. Uh, and Mason won the whole thing, but I mean, their crew obviously has a lot of uh, has has a lot of experience in this format, so it's a pleasure to have them come and challenge us. Definitely. Yeah. Those two, I mean, I went two and five in the standings overall, but I went X and O in the Chicago bracket. Those there are the only two guys yeah. I beat. Absolutely stomped them. Yeah. Get very happy to hear that. <laughs> St. Are, Louis proud. So, so wait, do we have to invite Eric back to the next one then, or is he going to be on commentary? Uh, Eric has to receive an invite. We don't know if he has to accept it or not. Okay, so. fair. So, all right, that makes sense. I would expect Eric to, to, to want to take a step back uh, and yeah. defer his invite, which yeah. we've done yes. in the past as well. Yeah. Uh, and let's jump back here. Talk about the draft a little bit. So these two decks that we're going to be dealing with, Eric versus Brandon, these are two pretty wild decks, actually, by comparison to a lot of the ones we've seen. Yeah. Uh, so Eric's deck is is one that uh, he, he's working off of the Eldrazi and Taxis shell. Mm -hmm. uh, is really proud of his getting of the Trials, which I think he is mostly ready to bring in against Brain Freeze style decks. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, what about the his, his opponent here? So Brandon, I think, doesn't really care about getting of the trials. I think, and this was something that he touched on when he was in here earlier, he wanted to go with a super friends list. And he's realized now, after being in Bant, that it might not be the best super friends list. Because no. while the walkers do cool things, they don't win. Right. The way that, like, a Nikki B dot deck does. Right. You know? I, I'm, I don't know about that, though, because you do have access to Nissa Who Shakes the World, which is a crazy Planeswalker closing yes. out games. Um, and he didn't take any of the dirty ones. Like, there's no Tamios in that list. Yeah, He's not taking, like, like Rowan or anything crazy yeah. like that. It seems like he really played the best of those walkers. I mean, what... Yeah. The I, only one he's... Does he have Ally of Zendikar? He does not have any of the Giddens. Ah, but see, if you were looking for a Planeswalker that can really pressure games oh, out... Oh, yeah. Ally of Zendikar, close friend and constant companion. Yeah. I mean, that card's amazing. 
So we have for third, fourth, and fifth, Cody took the duck horn. Kyle and Mason both took the chocolate. Ooh, okay. okay. This is the duck horn Merlot. Uh, it's, yeah. it's apparently very fancy. I don't know Merlot very well. And it was Kyle's entry, right? It was. Yeah, I thought he mentioned at the beginning he was yeah. trying to win that back. Yeah. Well, and yep. to be clear, Kyle wanted to win it back because he didn't know anything about Merlots, but his girlfriend loves them, it's, and apparently said yeah. this was good. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So really, Kyle was trying to win for love, and we were able to crush that. Right yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Got yeah. that not, not, nipped not in the bud. The meagerest margins. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, Oko's another one of those cards that's just dumb and finishes games because yeah. it's... Oko I mean, it, it It just promotes your things into 3-3s. Three like, yeah. there was... When I was picking sideboard cards, I thought about playing Rampage of the Clans. Yeah. But there's so many artifact decks in the field, I realized most of the time what I would be doing is giving my opponent between two and six 3-3s three to beat me to death with. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Brandon does have some cards I think are going to be pretty relevant in this matchup, though. Like Elspeth did work for him on camera. That It right. won him the game against Eric. If he's, uh, able to, if he's able to slam a slam an Elspeth and able to resolve it, it can block a lot of the pressure that Eric puts it Sun's out. Champion or? Yeah, Sun's yeah, Champion. Yeah, yeah, yes. yes. Okay. yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah, I saw him go all the way up to Karn. Uh, let's give him a minute to actually shuffle up and get everything ready. I know that the draft team is always a very exciting process, so we want to make sure that they have time to actually get their deck shuffled. Uh, the, the Karn Mycosynth Lattice is a little less relevant when there's, uh, when there's like, five fives dropping against you. Precisely, yeah. Yeah. So... I don't expect that to be as relevant unless no. Eric's off to a bad start. Yeah, which there was one game where Eric was off to a rough start, but he was able to kill the Karn after Brandon wished for Mycosynth. Yeah. The problem was we'd already had Nissa online for three or four turns. Oh, we yeah. Three that's, fairy. No, that's so nothing. So it's, it's, you know, when you're in the rock and a hard place, and then it was, okay, you killed my Karn, the next turn I drop Elspeth, and I have Winter Worm on. Well, and so. what does um what does Brandon have in terms of fast mana? He has a mock sapphire, right? And Anybody think fast? And Bop. Okay. Uh, right. He's a yeah, soul ring. Okay. Soul ring. Soul ring and a noble. Bye. Guys, thank Always you. a pleasure. Yep. Thanks for coming by. So he can get Mycosynth out a little early, but not like we're not turn wanting yeah, Mycosynth right. no matter no. what happens. No, absolutely. No. So predictions no for this match. Right. Where do you two fall on this? I yeah. we saw how this match plays out. Brandon crushed it. He did. He did curve out perfectly. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's. Whoever stumbles first probably loses sure. because both of these decks curve out so well. I I would need to see the list because for me it comes down to what Brandon's removal suite looks like. Because if he has, I know he has the plow. Does he also have path to exile? Nobody picked no. path. He literally Nobody has took path. plow main. Okay. He has council's judgment. Council's, council's judgment. judgment. Okay. Swords to plowshares. Swords to plowshares. Yeah, yeah, we got that. And so I that's think two. that's. Did it? anybody take prismatic ending? Truly, he has Eric, prismatic. He not Eric, Eric took, took prismatic it in the monocolor deck. Yes, unbelievable. He, spl he splashed all five colors off pain lands. Yeah, look, 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 oh, they tap for colorless. They tap for colorless. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay. Eric is playing a six color. That deck. is yeah. characteristically cheeky. Yeah. Um. Okay. So then, in that case, I feel like Brandon is probably. Yeah, I, I don't know. Seth Minus does kill the the, the onus is on Brandon to win. Yes, because if. Uh, if Eric is able to stick that Gideon in their trials, it sounds like he doesn't have a lot of great ways to get rid of it other than winning through combat damage. Yeah. And Elspeth ult, which may not get there. Sure. And it, and it's just slow. All yeah. of these all of these options that we're talking about are slow. Elspeth, you can Karn to exile it, but that's really slow. So yeah. It, yeah. I I feel like the oh, I feel like the Brandon onus is on Brandon happy. to win. He's he's on the play. I'm going to do a friendly no cuts. Dying. I'm going to take the, uh, the the non the non historical angle and say that I think Eric is pretty heavily favored here. This I, I agree, agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he is for sure. Uh, just Eric having access to the beatdown and like if, if everything goes well and both their decks do their thing, I think Eric wins. I think if yeah. if Eric stumbles and can't put an aggressive play into the game, then Brandon will win in an in on inevitability. On inevitability. For yeah, sure. correct. But, but I think Eric's deck is just so linear, so directional, and it's proven itself game after game, even if it didn't against Brandon last time. Yeah. Uh, Brandon being on the play is is, uh, is helpful, but Eric has Eric has fast mana. Eric can drop Mox into Thalia pretty easily. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I have I'm excited I'm excited about this. So we have a uh, brainstorm, a top brainstorm play, Dovin, Nissa, uh, Ancestral Vision. Okay. And, and double lands. Land. Yeah. Okay, so we can so turn one vision. We're, we're slamming vision turn one. That's yeah. not even. What's that bad? What's the second land? The one other than the Fetch flood land. Land. flooded. Oh, breeding what? pool. Breeding pool. Oh, okay, breeding pool. Okay. So we breeding pool first, and then we drop the fetch land for brainstorm. So we're exactly. Right. So turn if two brainstorm and fetch. Right. Yeah. Which 
Brandon seems collected enough to get there at yeah. the beginning of the event. I don't know how to account for his fatigue. I just met him today. Yeah. Dude, it, it, it's a long... It is a very long See, he got there. No yeah. big deal. Yeah, we got it. That's the thing I think you have to realize, right? These players showed up here at 8.30 in the morning, Yeah, have then drafted for four hours, and then played a seven-run tournament and walk into finals. Like, this is not a... Yeah, that's that's the difference between this and, like, a limited GP. Is at a limited GP, you're done in an hour and a half with right. the draft. Sure. You're drafting for four hours here before you even get started. It's pretty exhausting. Like how how exquisite. Is. Yes. Yeah. It, it's yeah, just, I don't think this hand does beat a good hand from Eric if we get a strong start here, which we're already off to the races with a turn one stone for. I, I, I assume just, he got the jit tab, but I didn't see. Is that uh, no, I believe he got sort of fire and ice. Oh, okay. Do you want uh, me to go check? or Nah, okay. nah we'll figure it out. Uh, yeah, build, probably a turn or two here. Let the suspense build for the people. Like sure. That. Yeah. I, I got to say, too, oh, obviously fire and, fire and ice and jitte are both good cards. It's just Stoneforge is not hear what it is usually because no, if this is no. Cauldra then we're in that situation we were talking about where yeah. the onus is now on Brandon to win but yeah. Eric is playing these cards that are good in a long game which he cannot win yeah right. yeah which granted Sword of Fire and Ice actually presents a pretty quick clock even if it's just swinging with a stone for it. You're on sure that's five per turn turns. yeah yeah I mean uh, drawing two cards a turn is not the best that either no yeah. But if but you can produce a steady stream of chump blockers... It doesn't matter. Which he really easily can because I would venture that most of his creatures are not blue. Yeah. Right. So he can just churn out blockers nope, one so after the other. Some of them might even win combat. And probably hard casting the sword? No. That's... I mean, maybe oh. still, maybe. Hello, balance. <laughs> oh, is there a balance in his hand? He, he just brainstormed in the counter. He just copied Beautiful. the balance. And there's a Jace ready to go, too. Yeah, there is. So what is Eric... Is Eric holding up the Mind Sensor here? It seems like he's telegraphing that pretty hard. It, I feel like yeah. he is. Uh, if, if you pass on turn three with a sword in hand... Why, Cody? Congrats. Uh, I, I don't see any... I don't see any other choice that Eric Yeah, I, I don't think it is. And it's, it's interesting because now we know Brandon has the fetch here. Yes. So he's got to fetch for four. A Mind Sensor into... Uh, Forge Mystic and Equip. I don't know how he... He doesn't have mana for both of those things. Yeah. Well, if you play the fourth land, then you can flash... So you flash in Mind Sensor, untap, vial in the oh, sword, yeah, the equip to the... I see. Yeah. And then it has... That's, uh, that's it's yeah. hey, Something tickets is worn off. Yeah. I, I mistracked what, Cam what Campbell was talking about. That makes sense. Yeah. There we go. We've got it. As long as we can untap with that fourth we're, land, we're, we're good. the damage from the Stone Forge. And Brandon cleverly Stone saw Lord. through the ruse, didn't play the fetch land. There's the Mind Sensor... So, uh, Dovin does not shut down the creature, I believe. So Nope, it's artifacts, enchantments, and... Eric can wait until the end of turn. There's a lot of Dovins for that card Sorcery. being very bad. Sorcery. Yep, artifact, instant, and sorcery. Yeah. Wizards is really trying to push this whole Dovin concept, and I'm not here yeah. for it. I don't think they're trying to push the Dovin concept, TM, because he is literally dead. Didn't they kill him in War of the Spark? I'm pretty uh, sure probably. he's dead. I, I think but Dovin it, bit it. I am super mad they killed Dak. And ha yeah, how does how I, does the greatest thief in the world have somebody sneak up on him and well, kill him? Well, not, screw that. Why was Dak there? How is that in character for Dak to go, oh, there's this beacon for me to come help out in the fight against Nickel Bo No! He's he off. Care. He's like, wait, you mean every planeswalker uh, is not on their home plane and all their stuff is there and I can go grab it? Cool. Y'all yeah. are talking about a whole bunch of stuff. I have no idea. It's not relevant to VRD, so I've never paid attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's okay. Look, so I'm it's a, I'm it's, a Lorthos. Okay, the Brothers War was great. I'm uh, not even Lorthos or a Vorthos. Vorthos. That's are you right. a giant I'm, octopus? I'm no, not even a Vorthos. I just no, like don't, Dak, don't and I'm mad there's gonna, not going to be any more Dak cards. All right, yeah. let, let's focus it. Crambler was absolutely correct, and uh, that's exactly the play that Eric went for. But Eric didn't attack because he, I see. Yeah, that's the play we were talking about. So why didn't Eric attack with the I mind sensor? I don't know there. That seems wrong. Uh, I if oh, I'm oh, oh, do Dovin plus on yeah. mind sensor. Oh, there we go. No, it, I thought Dovin plus on. It wouldn't it's because he Dovin prior to the mind sensor cast. Oh, you're right. Hmm. So we Dovin Stoneforge. I have no idea why Eric did not attack. Oh. Yeah. Also, if I'm Brandon, I don't play a land here because I'm on the balance plan at this point. So I, you know, we've got top, so that gets rid of all the equipment. We don't have any creatures. 
Uh, it, well, it gets rid of the equipment and the mox jet. Well, and you can you can balance crack your top into the balance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can exactly. Look, Eric isn't the kind of player that would not attack. Uh, just knowing him, he yeah, attacks he, every time he can. So yeah, so there's got to be a reason something for happened here that I don't understand. Yeah. Oh, we talked. No, you or he play that smells game. a rat that we do not. Sure, yeah, that could be as well. Uh, there's a Caracas. That doesn't matter against a mind sensor. No. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Don't know. play the soul ring there, Brandon. Play the balance. Okay. What are we? We play the soul ring. Very strong. No. So the soul ring is great because it breaks parity with balance. Also, you can crack the fetch if you know that you could buy the top card. Well, and it, it breaks the parity, but he also gets to keep sort of fire nice here. Yeah. Because you can easily just balance prior to soul ring. Which he's casting balance now. Which okay, we're taking. Oh no. Uh, maybe Eric oh. responded to the Dovin with because it's the a Abraham sorcery, Center. so it costs extra under Dovin. Ah, uh, clever. Yeah. So my guess is what happened is that Eric cast Mind Sensor in response to Dovin. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, and then therefore Brandon was able to minus the Dovin. That's the only thing that makes any yeah. sort of sense. Um, it doesn't. The Dovin is not relevant. It only hits your opponent. It's not symmetrical. Oh yeah, you're right. It doesn't count. Yeah, Fair so. point. I, I think that that is the function of a long day of magic. Yes. Well, but regardless, it doesn't matter whether you balance before or after. It, yeah. it, it, it doesn't matter. Does balance not hit artifacts? Balance does not hit artifacts. Oh, it okay. It's, balance is one of those cards yep. that is just so yeah. heavily restricted, I've yeah. never had a chance to play it. Ba balance, let's oh, yeah, pull it, it up doesn't here. hit artifacts, does it? I no. Thought, yeah, I thought it did. Ba balance, is, balance is obviously a card that you try to break symmetry with. But right, of course. Yeah, yeah. The traditional way you do it is, against, uh, is to do it against... Artifacts. Yeah, so let's get that revised in, print. And then let's pull up the alpha print. All right, it's whatever. way better wording. Uh, I don't play alpha Disc 40, but I love the concept of hey, trying to Way better lands. wording, he says, discard lands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, creatures lost lands. this way may not be regenerated. Just that, is that, is, that is great to know. <laughs> yeah, that is relevant. Okay, so it's lands, hands, and creatures. All right. Yeah, so that's my bad. I assumed balance affected no, artifacts, no. which I still think balance should be on Brandon and DH, but you know, yeah. whatever, Sheldon. I actually agree <laughs> with you, I think. I'm just glad we got World Fire back. Yes. Like, not that I have any personal stake in it, but I remember being really frustrated about not being able to play World Fire. Sway of the Stars won. Unban it, you cowards. No, I, I agree. Sway of the Stars should also come back out. Prime Time's also fine. There's way more broken things you can do with this now than Prime Time. Uh, yeah. If we're going to talk about Prime... Uh, we're, we're, right, we're going to wrap it off, off topic. Yeah, yeah, off, yeah. off topic. All right. So we've got a fetch land crack here, which is relevant because we no longer have an even mind sensor, so we can get whatever land we want. Is that a we mimic chilling on Steven's board? That is or Eric. a mimic on Eric's board with a Sword of Fire and Ice, which right. is pretty good. Uh, yeah. So mostly I, because the Sword of Fire and Ice turns off the Dovin being able to target the Eldrazi mimic. Yep. True. Uh, can, it can also ping Dovin with it. So, point yes. of order, the Sword of Fire and Ice, uh, does this... Can you target, target Sword of Fire and Ice with Dovin to prevent it from dealing damage? It doesn't stop him from drawing the card, but it might prevent... Sword let's damage. Read, damage. Let's yeah. read Dovin. Does Dovin... Is does it target a permanent? Creature? Uh, so, target permanent. Yeah, yes, so you absolutely. Can, you can you turn can the shock the off. Okay. Yep. So if Brandon's doing heads up play, he would minus on the sword in order you, to prevent two damage. Right. So you basically yeah. make him choose between the Dovin and the card. He can yeah. have one, but not both. Yeah. Correct. So hopefully that's what happened here. Uh, but yeah, the Eldrazi mimic being there, protected by the sword, is a huge deal. Yeah. Uh, and now we've got double fetch from Brandon. So we're at five mana. So we actually potentially have Nissa here. Uh, not in his hand, obviously. We know that. But fairly bizarrely, Eric is still at 20 life. Like, yeah. Uh, obviously, like, Brandon's not a life total pressuring deck or anything right no, away. Right. But uh, it, it is just interesting to see kind of life totals mostly haven't moved, despite being very late in this game. Yeah, which, we just had the one swing yep. there for five. And, and we kind of thought that Brandon would be favored in the long game, but that's not what I'm seeing so far. No, not at all. Oh, there's there's a Hercule Blue call. Ooh. Wait, is that... That should be sideboard. There's a Nature's Claim, I see. That's not a Hercule Blue call. That's got to be something else. Oh, there's the Nissa. Okay. So we have the Nissa, and we do have Nature's Claim, yes. Which is going to be real clutch here, because Main we can make a 3 Nature's three. Claim. I think in this draft, it's probably fine. I, it's not that outlandish. I had a force main, but that yeah. was a that was a function of a bad draft, less than Fair. needing yeah. the main board hate. Yeah. This this uh, I've just seen do work for Brandon all day. Yeah, I, it's, I've mostly it's been every time he's had it. It's been she's fun. Nissa who wins the game for a reason. Yeah. I guess, but like, yeah, I've mostly been like, oh, she's a like boring mid range card. She can't be amazing in right. Yeah, and she's good in this deck. I don't think she's necessarily like. I, 
first five picks or, or anything. Like no, that. not even close. Theory. But she, she's she's really done more work than I thought she was gonna do. But yeah. it's it's the same reason that we talk about the red deck being such an effective strategy is people in formats like this don't take winning the game very seriously. So it's when you true. pick yeah. cards that actually do close the game yeah. out, you're just gonna do fine. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought the red deck, and especially after watching the first few games of it, I, I was I thought the red deck was gonna win the tournament. Yeah. yeah. I was I was shocked that it only went three and four. Yeah. I was I was telling Jason earlier, I was really Surprised to see Scab Clan Berserker not get added to that list. I feel like that would have been a massive pickup. And yeah, you know what card would be terrible though? Robber of the Rich is just not a very good card. What? No, I, whoa, I, think, whoa. I think everyone agrees that that card is <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay. Not trolling, in incredible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We we both Hagen and I both were like, it's gonna get picked. It's gonna get picked. Yeah. No, yeah. And it did, it did I, I've picked. been down on that card from day one. Yeah, I just. It's a Savannah lined. It's perfectly it's playable fine. card at its base, and then there's upside to it. Yeah. Like when Ooh, I was oh, when I was oh, a wasteland just came into play. Okay, yeah, wasteland that tapped for a Mystic Forge because of Dovin. <laughs> so this is where I think Eric's going to start to take off with this game. So, how invested is Eric in wastelanding that Caracas? He's only got the Thalia, right? Does yeah, he just pass that? He doesn't care. It's not interesting. He's, to him he's at more all. likely to shut him off of blue and green and cool. Exactly. Than anything else, because is that the, the lone blue source? Is that a Savannah source. up there? Savannah, Caracas, Scrubland. Okay, is that, yeah. Oh, it's Savannah. I think it's Savannah. We were Savannah. we were talking yeah. about that yeah. earlier. Yep. Yeah. Rob, get us a tree, please. <laughs> yeah, that's all we want. Uh, I don't know if you all listened to the sixty-hour review of Alpha that uh, it, so many insane plays did, but yeah. it was one of the most like brilliant experiences of my life. And I did you just say sixty hours? Uh, it was eleven episodes, each of which were four or more hours. Yep. It was incredible, and seriously, Kevin yeah. Cronin and Stephen Menendian did incredible work there. Like, I know I'm a Menendian fanboy with my copy of Understanding Gush on the, on the shelf here. Did anybody take Gush today? I don't remember Gush, seeing no, it go. Gush. Gush is, Nobody gushed? Gush is horribly underdrafted. In, in it's Sierra. good in the fast bond deck, but that's about it. it it's good in the red deck. If it, Homeboy fair. was splashing into blue to begin with, there was no reason not yeah. play Gush. Oh, I think Ninth Seed might have gone to bed, so we, we might not have that. Uh, the evidence of where Gush gets picked, but it's always very late, yeah. sadly. Yeah. Uh, so we've got another top here, and Brandon's got to be at this point just digging for an out because we don't really have much here. Uh, like, yes, but he has a Nissa. Also, know, he when, you, Nissa. when you say out, what we mean is anything that can beat a 4 3 in combat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess it is a 4 3, so it's 3 3. It is literally a 4 3. Yeah. Like, there, it's not like play to your outs any percentage like anything with yeah. three power gets us there. Yeah. And hyphen points it out. Uh, Gush gets taken about I don't know seventy percent of the time, and usually two hundred second, second pick. Yeah, <gasps> two hundredth pick overall. So yeah. yeah, pretty pretty late there though. I'm staggered and impressed by the amount of data you all have on this format. It's there's a lot. It's inspiring. Yeah, so twenty fifth round in, in average. Uh. But yeah, no, like the, uh, I'm excited to drop some more pages onto the St. Lotus site because I think there's like some very exciting stuff we can put up there, like mm -hmm. average deck lists, uh, kind of like one yeah. of the best counter spells. There's lots of stuff I want to add there. Um, but yeah. Articles. Our articles are something that I don't have the energy to put up. If that's fair. <laughs> sure, but I've, with the community that you've put together and the dedication that each of these people have, it would not be that hard to source articles. As soon as you start publishing articles, I'm happy to put them up on our site. Uh, so. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> My first VRD experience. All right, so we're, we're, we're tapping here. We've got a Karn out. Oh, that's pretty good, I hear. And a Three Fairy. So we've got Karn and Three Fairy. We can't bounce the Mimic, but we can bounce the Sword, Neg on the Mimic, and we are scooping him up. So Brandon takes that one down. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so he found his out, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Three. And again, like, it's it's anything in the deck, exactly. right? Yeah. Three Fairies is a screwy little card. Yep. Yep. So Eric scoops there, so we're going to two. So and what are we expecting to see out of boards from these two? So we already saw some boarding, and it was pretty minimal. Okay. You know, we got Settle the Wreckage in from Brandon, and there wasn't a whole lot else. Settle, okay. Um, I mean, and such is the way with the two mid-range decks going at it. Yeah. I mean, your your sideboard pieces are going to be pretty generic most of the time. Right. Um, yeah, and especially since neither of these players are playing black base mid-range, where you need to, like, trim out all of your thought seeds effects post-board and things like that. Yeah. 
we've got Settle coming in, Tangle Wire, and Wenowar. That's what it is. Tangle okay. Wire. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon's yeah, always very good about showing his off. Yeah. Tangle Wire was another one that could work because he was able to Tangle Wire into Wenowar. And Eric just couldn't oh. bounce back because at that point, Nissa was on the board already. Okay. Which, sure. Right. I got a 3-3 three, three Vigilance, so I don't really know what you need. You know? Yeah, those those land creatures getting Vigilance, I think, is what pushes that it's card into good. genuinely yeah. good. Yeah, yep. for sure. Yeah, the fact that you can tap for 2 mana and also attack for 3 damage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very good. So, okay, so Brandon, we know what he's pulling in. Uh, yeah. Let's pull up, let's jump over to the draft uh, view a minute and see what, what you'd pull in here. Now that we have two expert commentators here, uh, yeah. BRD... Former champions, <laughs> maybe not like in actual BRDs, but in in, in mind. Yeah, in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I won every match I was thinking yeah. about. Eric, I think brings in. I don't know if he brings in De- abolish. Trinisphere doesn't do anything here for him. Rest in peace doesn't really do a whole lot. Thorn of Amethyst definitely comes in. Uh, I think the yeah. more you're able to slow down the Planeswalker deck, the better off you are. Um, I think. Probably the only thing he really has here. Oh, well, so uh, we have Heretic Cathar comes in. Scroll down. Oh, Her- Dahlia Heretic Cathar yeah. is criminally underrated in the white midrange decks. Yeah. Uh, that card is real good. Oh, and Gideon of the Trials. Yeah, it, so it was three cards each. It was Thorn, Thalia, and Gideon was what was boarded in last time by Eric. Okay. And we had the same three cards, Tangle Wire, Winter Orb, and what was the third one? Tangle Wire, Winter Orb. And uh, settle, settle the wreckage. Yep. Oh, and Elspeth. He boarded Elspeth is a sideboard. Yeah, Elspeth is a sideboard for him because it's, it's a hell like of a closer. A, yeah, it's a real good closer, and I'd want it main. Yeah, uh, and I think if you were to ask Brandon, he'd probably say, "Yeah, I want that main as a creature." Yeah, I think it's interesting that we have Leyline Helm as a combo here, but he's not running Leyline in the main. It's hard to to bring Elspeth into your main deck when there's a lot of like red deck and hyper aggressive decks for that's fair. Format. Yeah, I uh, it's scary. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. Can be a struggle, the yeah. thing that I'm I'm actually less concerned about the red deck when I'm making that consideration, and the things that I'm looking at with Elspeth is the density of creatures I expect to play against. The higher sure. the density, the more I want the Elspeth. Yeah, even and so at six mana. even at six mana, well, like in, I would probably take it out against the red deck, but I would say that the stronger reason to not main deck that card is you see we've got the Lotus Breach deck and we've got yeah. whatever the hell Kyle is doing and whatever <laughs> yeah. the hell I was doing. Yeah. But when you play in a field of creature mid range decks, yeah. I'm okay paying the opportunity cost of boarding Elspeth out versus the red deck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Brandon just looked at balance and gave it a side eye, so uh, No. No, wrong. Okay, he kept balance in. Okay, okay. Good. whatever other card out there was. Yeah. Bal- balance stays in. Yeah. Brandon needs to have the ability to play a bunch of planeswalkers, yep. deliberately lose combat, uh-huh. untap balance. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah, won in the game last time. Yeah. No, but it's it's a fantastic play pattern. Yeah. So Brandon and I like brainstorm about this deck a little bit, uh, no pun intended. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was really like, the, I tried to push him off of playing green. He wanted yeah. to be in green for Oko. And he was like, well, I, can, I can accelerate into uh, into other walkers and stuff. And obviously this has worked out great and he's in finals. So like he's right. Yeah. But <laughs> my argument was that uh, I don't want to be in a green deck that relies on creature acceleration when I'm playing balance to try to blow away all the creatures. Yeah. I was just like, I let's play a I shroud claim. You chose, I want stuff like that. More yeah. Than, but yeah. I don't even know if I want that because I feel like everyone's touched on it. I feel like Grixis is where you want to be for this. Uh, I just, I'm terrified of playing three color decks in VRD. And yeah. I'm probably wrong about it, but like the idea Grixis of I'm, but, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to spend an additional 10 picks on lands when I could be taking those cards as acid rain instead. Like, precisely. what am I doing? Well, and, and here we have Eric playing land hate dot deck in right. the finals. Yes. Yeah. So I, I just love playing. Really low uh, mana intensity decks where you can you can take five lands instead of taking fifteen, and then all of a sudden you just have like fifteen picks open with like some of the best sideboard cards of all time, and you can just like yeah I'm gonna spend three three cards to rule Jason Thurston's day. Right, that sounds yeah. like a great solution. Yeah, no, that's yeah. yeah. Uh, I, w- destroy one or- I will say though, if I was building the Bant pile, I'm I am in Bant over Blue White every day of the week, not for. Nissa or I mean Oko obviously. But, oh, wow. Sylvan Library. This is what I was gonna say. Yeah. The first green card I want is Sylvan Library, and the second one is Uro. I don't know. Yeah. Is that is I haven't seen it all day. Is he playing Uro? Nobody drafted Uro. Unbelievable. I don't yeah. think Uro's. Good. If you're in the what? In the mid range pile? 
because uh, Guru requires you to have double blue and double green. Uh, and if you're playing a three-color deck, getting both of those is hard. And then even then, you need to have ways to, like, fill up your graveyard. You don't have fetch lands to do it. You're just, like, in a okay. weird spot where, like, you don't have the consistency that you have in Vintage and Legacy to guarantee that you get there. Yeah. Okay. And, and you're That's playing fair. a three-minute explore that, and the super late game can come back. That's fair. You don't think that's playable and limited? Oh, I think it's incredibly playable. I think it's like a 40th pick, though. I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that it's something you should address yeah. in a draft. But you would you would estimate Oko is significantly better. Oh, Oko is incredibly better. O- okay. Oko is, Oko is a top 10 pick. I'm, I yeah. managed Oko should to be in not, the first five rounds. I managed to not play Magic during Oko, Astrolabe. Oh, you are so I, lucky. <laughs> like, that was just the era where I was not playing at all. Well, so As- Astrolabe was... I think the health of Legacy is directly tied to how good Wasteland is. The better yes. Wasteland is in the format, the better Legacy is, because yes. it's a format designed around greed, and you need to be able to punish that greed in order for the format to be balanced. Uh, also, we should reprint Wasteland into Modern to really, like, or Price of Progress. Either one's fine. But yeah. the, the Modern landscape is just a travesty. I, right? I would I would take Wasteland over Pop any day. This I I am tired of playing against Red Decks. I've had enough. Sure. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no, well, I, Blood I Moon does fine. But, yeah. like, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like there needs to be punishment for playing... Uh, multicolored decks and yeah. playing Snowlands. You need to have both. Both of those things should be punished. You should yeah. be able to do things for free. Yeah, I I am definitely oh, anti Snowland. From Brandon, so we have Oath of Nissa, Misty Rainforest, Balance, Mox Sapphire. Um, oh, so this this is this is incredible. Uh, this yeah, is this a is mulligan, a, right? He has to put one back. So he has to put one back. Um, it looks um, like he has two lands. Is that a snap? That's an mage? Oko. What's, what's in fourth position? Oh, it's an Oko. You're right. Yeah, that's an okay, Oko. so Oko so, can't go. No, Oko. So we've got two lands. Yeah, Mox Sapphire. Balance. Yeah, we... With we, Balance, it has to be. Yeah, we, we... Oh, I think you keep Balance here. I think you keep Balance. Really? I think, I think the seventh card that looks like a Manglehorn is yeah. probably the Oh, if it's Manglehorn, I mean, the hell with yeah, that. Yeah. Because no matter what you that. put... No matter what you put back, you have the fetch, so you get to shuffle it back into your deck. What's yeah. third from the right there? That's Balance. Over on the right, that's Oath of Nyssa. Yeah. I think you could put back an Oath because... I, I don't know. You Oath have the mana, not. but right. Oath is a really good cantrip. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah, probably whatever it's the left most card. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Manglehorn. Yeah, Manglehorn can't be good enough against Derek. Yeah, he has confirmed it. Yeah, not this early in the game at the very least. No. You, were, you really want to draw Manglehorn on like turn six. Yeah. This, this is a very easy keep and a very hard put back. Yes. Yeah. But Manglehorn's probably it. Yeah, Mang- I think Manglehorn. But, but come on, please, don't do it, Brandon. Don't do it, don't do it, Brandon, what are you oh, doing? Don't put back Oath. Don't Oath do it, don't of Nissa? No. Oh, that's your draw. Why would you do that? If Eric drops a mana vault in turn one, you're not going to feel very bad. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I will stand here in my wrongness and be wrong if he plays yeah. the turn one crypt. I'm fine with well, that. But even then, you're, you're still in a rough spot. No. Wait, wait, okay, what, so is, what is the Savannah doing? Yeah. yeah so this is, it's, it's, That's this the draw for turn. We've got oh, double Oh, the draw. I'm dumb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He put back the oath. Yeah, he put back oath. I didn't right. realize that was double fetch. I thought that was a savannah. With double fetch, I'm fine putting back oath. If Brandon's on the draw and Eric doesn't have a play on turn one, I'm actually everything worked out fine. That's regardless of whether it was good or bad. Be it out fine. Yeah, displacer yeah. comes down. So, are you interested in just snapping off the balance now, or do you want to see how much you can juice that for? Oh no, you need I, to you juice it. You yeah. juice the heck out of that. Card. Okay, a th- taking three damage doesn't matter. No, sure. I, I you're, you're, again, complete void of experience with that card. Uh-huh. Yeah, that card isn't good enough, uh, and that card is mostly a control deck, a control card against you in Eric's deck. Yeah, Th- there are decks where Eldrazi Displacer is like, I'm gonna like blink my thing and draw six cards, and like sure. that's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a card that no, is no. there to to deal with your token. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're using that offensively because the Absolutely. creatures come back tapped, right? They do come back tapped. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, if you're getting Mold Drifter triggers, doesn't matter that much. Well, yeah. sure, but we, we saw it in the game versus Kyle do just incredible work, but that is yeah. a different function of the card. Yeah, yes. for sure. Eldrathi Displacer is a super cool card, and I'm really we happy. Just make yep. the Mox a 3 3? Uh, it's um, tapped. To do what? I mean, get yeah, blinked tapped, by Displacer. Yeah. Well, it trades with Displacer, but not. If, yeah, it's tapped. Yeah, it trades with Displacer no, if Eric that, is willing to, to let get that a through. PP token. Yeah, yeah, there we go. go. Doctor Poo Poo PPMD. Eat that Brandon token. Doctor PP Poo Poo MD. Yeah. Uh, that's on TikTok. Yes. Uh, let's let's give him a little shout out here for the 
the 16 viewers that are hanging through this with yeah, us through the end of the it. night. Let's see if I can spell TikTok correctly. Yes. Or incorrectly, Dr. rather. P E Who Who M D. Yep, there, there we go. go. That's a TikTok. That took a lot of effort, and I yeah. hope you all appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so we got a, Slaved we got over a, a hot stove all day. On oh, Oko. God. Oh. That's brutal. Yes. And yet so satisfying uh, to see. Prismatic. And we are wasting the breeding pool, so we're off to the next one. And this is why we keep Oko Nissa. Yeah. This so is. Prismatic Ending is a card that I think a lot of people would be like, Eric, he's playing a one-color deck. What is he playing this card for? Painlands, baby! But if you talk to Eric Levine, he would look at you like you're stupid and tell you, I'm playing a five-color deck. Yeah. I just happen to have a bunch of uh, a bunch of Painlands. A bunch of yes. Painlands white cards uh, and an off-color Mox as well. Yeah. yeah. Really, this is just showing the genius of that first round Mox Jet for his mono white deck. Yes. Uh, uh, obviously, Eric was just trying to stay open and yeah. make good decisions, but it paid off right we here. Just got a winter orb from Brandon Ooh. off the top. This, he can't play it right now. He can't play it right now, though. He, he might. It's, it's Brandon's turn. <laughs> he shouldn't. He will not. Yeah. yeah. Not in the finals of a tournament where he looked like he was going to stab his opponent in round two. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seriously, like, he is the most happy, go lucky guy. Oh, yeah. He follows TikTok. He's just like exactly what you'd expect. Uh, but th- today, today at eleven a.m., Brandon was not feeling happy. No, he he was here. He meant business. Clearly. Yes, it was pretty ridiculous to watch that yeah. comparison. So, Brandon, uh, Brandon is he ready to to start putting the pressure down? He doesn't have anything on the board, and he's facing down an Eldrathi Displacer, but Eric's not exactly dropping a Reality Smasher next turn. No, he's not. Oh, and there we go. Minus Dovin on the Displacer. So it okay. begins. We're pushing into the long game now. What's yep. uh, what's uh, what's that Dovin starting loyalty? Five. Five. five and to five. Four. And oh, sure. It's down, down one. Yeah. yeah. One of those delightful Planeswalkers that have three abilities fewer than Jason Mind Sculptor. Yep. <laughs> Who is probably not even a top five. It's shameful that that is true. Yeah. Oh, no, every we, we are tapping out here for four mana for a sort of fire and ice. All right. Every time Jace gets muscled out of one of my legacy deck lists, I just cry a little harder. Yeah. Yep. I think Jace still is f- top five, but it, it's borderline. He's probably fifth. Yeah, yeah he's exactly. probably fifth. Right. I think it's kind of like Ren and Six yeah. uh, versus, and I think that's a lot of preference. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's what Ren and Six. Now we have three fairy. We have Oko. Narset. Oh, yeah, Narset, Teferi, and Oko are the probably the top three. Yeah. I will say though, Narset Narset is incredibly powerful. Oh, Karn, I would say sorry. it's a significant. In this format, Karn is probably the best walker. Oh yeah. Great sure. creator. Oh, and yes. there's yeah. Manglehorn on the Sword of Fire and Ice, which is huge. Got him. Yep. Yep. Got him. Gotta love the shuffle effects. Yeah. Uh also now interestingly, Displacer sticks around through balance. True. True, yeah. Bal- okay, balance sure. cannot uh not clear the board anymore. Yeah. It seems like Brandon is kind of just, I'm going to keep pressing my advantage and not needing to balance anymore. Yeah. Oh, and there we are shutting you off your other blue pool. Okay. Sure. Strip mine. Yep. Doing good work. Strip mine, uh, forgotten about until like pick 40 in last draft yeah. in Wasteland, which never got drafted. Both yep. doing good work in Eric's yeah. pick. So there we have a matter reshaper. So we are. The thing I would love to see to tie up his finals is Eric play in a crucible. Worlds next turn. Yep. That yeah, would be great. Because this is the thing, right? We were talking about how both of these decks are mid range decks, but at a certain point, Eric is just going to consistently top deck better because yeah. Brandon's Brandon's ability no, to play this game. The cards. Well, just Brandon's uh, ability to I, play this game I is contingent on duels. But. He just drew a Savannah, and Brandon, or sorry, he just drew a. He, he just uh, still has a Savannah and drew an Oath of Nissa. Okay. If Eric had strip mined the green source away, he would He'd be having be a much to better time. True. Yeah. I think that that is the ingrained heuristics of playing a game where blue is the best color for 20 True. plus years. Yes, yeah, no, for sure. It, you know, they, they started with time walk and recall, and they're like, we're just riding this gravy train into the ground. Precisely. And that's exactly what they did. We've got a spell queller. Finding, finding the third mana source, though. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's no big deal. That's what, well worth pointing out. But no, what I was saying is like, Brandon's ability to play this game is entirely contingent on his access to multiple colors of mana, which yeah. Eric has a deeply Very vested interest and pressure. solid ability to control. Yes, yeah, for sure. 
The Matter of Shaper is an interesting card in this matchup, too. Uh, a lot of other matchups, there's a lot more creature combat happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, the Matter of Shaper is not very likely to die, which in some ways is, is nice for Eric because he can keep putting the pressure yeah. on Dovin. But in other ways, is is kind of sad because I think he'd like to see what comes off well, the top. Yeah. So, sorry, what's the stat line on Manglehorn? Manglehorn, I believe, is a 2-2. Two, two. Two. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Is it a 3-2? I thought it was a 2-2. Two, two. I'm sure I just, you're right. This Winter Orb two, two. Yeah. feels ill-advised. Yes. No? I this, agree, because we have a jet out. Um, and we only had two tap lands. Yeah, and... and Additionally, just, we're not missing any land drops here. Yeah. Right, and Eric, I mean... I don't know, I feel like Eric can play this board a little bit better than Brandon. We're just as it stands. pretty hard here. Yeah. Let's find the bear. Oh, Storm yes, bring, we have simply got to find the bear. God, I love revised. The faded out cards absolutely look worse, uh, but they have so much nostalgia for me. Yeah, I don't. I can't account for it because I. I mean, I have no nostalgia. Revised was printed before I was born, but there's something about specifically Children. revised that just does it for me. <laughs> We're old. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I. I like. It's clean. It's crisp. Like I just. Yeah. For me, it's it's very much nostalgia. That's why I love Starfoils. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same. That's the reason that I was saying earlier. I'm. I dislike this trend towards, um, having wow. strictly better snowlands. I uh, yeah. just straight up beats uh, from yep. those. Features completely unblocked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Minghorn tapped to swing, yeah. so we we may see Eric take this one down. This is what I'm saying: is Brandon really cut himself out of his outs with the winner orb? I, f- yeah. I feel like that was a punt. Yeah. Oh, there's a Karn, which is still not great with a winner orb out. Yeah. No, it shovel. sure isn't. Yeah. I mean, it shuts off the Mox. Shuts off. I mean, it blows it up, right? Doesn't he animate? Uh, or he minuses. Yeah. I don't know if he has any zero drops on his board. I don't think so, though. No, he does not. Yeah. Just oh, he can animate the orb. This is the best way to deal with your own winter orb. Is you animate it into a two-two that can lose block, it in combat, and then you dies in combat. There you go. See, there this, we is, go. this is even better than. There you go. Recovering hey, from Eric's the punt. Like, what is what does this do? Wait, that's a thing. <laughs> this card does that. I didn't know yeah. this card did that. Nobody uses that. This one. card is demonic tutor for Microsynth Lattice. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Basically, I, I do like this line that he's taking though, where he's basically just <laughs> saying, "I don't." I can't beat my own winter orb. Let's oh, get rid of it. We're blinking the winter orb with Eldrazi Displacer. Oh, wow. <laughs> comes in tapped, yep. which is comes extremely tap. important. Uh, and winter orb does have the errata yeah. that it it's does. only when yes. it's continuous. Yes, that's why it works that's, with yeah. Aura or with Aura. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, so now we have to go back up to the Oracle. World that, this card. We can actually hear the sound of Brandon realizing what's just happened to him. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sad. As long as Winter Orb is untapped, which guess what? It's tapped. Right. So we get to just straight oh, up man. untap all our lands. You don't have a blocker. I can kill your Karn. This is this is Eric showing off why uh, despite being a judge means you can't play magic, sometimes it does mean that you can make side plays that yeah. you might not yeah. expect. So now we are blinking the Manglehorn. We're just throwing up the Mox Jet. Which was useless I mean, anyway. Yeah. That's what the original Tricks deck was, right? Isn't that why it's called that? It was yeah. deliberately hard to understand rules interactions. Well, Tricks tricks was based around... Uh, delusions of grandeur, grandeur, right? Yeah. D- delusions of grandeur. Or illusions of grandeur. Or, yeah, it's illusions. delusions. Or no, illusions with a cumulative upkeep from Ice Age. Because you, it, when it comes in, you gain 20. When yeah, yeah. Means you lose I know. I know what the card does. It's oh, different. I thought it was delusions for sure. Delusions, delusions is a different. later one that only yeah. does ten. Oh, that, that was from Saga or oh. no, Legacy. That card's reserved, isn't it? Illusions of Grandeur. Yes, illusions is. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah. So illusions. Or oh no, it's delusions of mediocrity. Is the ten life one? Fascinating. There's no it's delusions top, of Grandeur. Top left. Yep. It's just illusions of mediocrity is there the ten go. life one. Fascinating. Yes, that's the reprint that came out in Urza Legacy. Legacy, sure. Uh, We're going to block the reshaper. Eric's going to try to get a free card off of this, obviously. And we get Winter- Athalia. That's a good one to get. There you go. The Winter Orb is still in play untapped, right? Yes, it is yes. untapped now. But Steven just... St- or Eric got that whole untapped step. Just uh, ready Eric to go. And Brandon both did. Because it untapped yeah. and Brandon's untapped. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. That's how magic Which, works. Unfortunately, Brandon is... I have no permanence left, so this is a good time for balance. Right. Uh, but that's about it that it's good for. I mean, I mean if he can resolve He has balance, it, right? We didn't, he, he didn't bend it earlier? Yeah. 
It's time to slam. So Welcome to the jam. He went, he went yep. from having the win to having an even game. Yeah. Yeah. That's there's our balance. Great. So we're second. Oh, yep, yeah, we're paying an extra for the balance. And I mean, you can call it an even game if you want, but to my eye, Brandon's down by eleven. I'm not sure yeah. that this is life trouble wise, yeah. Like he's he's yeah. still out He's definitely on the ropes. Right. He, and we have one of card in hand, so Eric's got to discard quite a bit here as well. Uh and Eric needs a reality smasher plus something else. Like you can't win in one swing. Yeah. Right, right, right. We're we're at least two turns away from the end of the game. Right. And one card in hand, I'm thought not about. probably yeah. closes this game out entirely. After getting bodied by this uh, Eldrazi Displacer, I'm pretty happy to have There's a turns. Crucible of Worlds for Strip Mine. Oh, God. Oh, no. All That's right. That's brutal. Night, night, everybody. Yeah. Brandon has had two turns to build up. So he has he has three mana now? Four. Because he's got Four a mana. Oh, that's a Sylvan Library. Tap, tap. Boom, Sylvan Library. We're going to try to draw out of this. He's just leaving that food token sitting there behind yeah. the Sylvan Library. Yeah, Brandon's not in a great spot. But no. Eric will take out one land per turn. So we're not, we're not like, ended. Yeah. Brandon also does have land tax in the list. It's entirely possible for him to make it up to that. True. Oh, and there's there's a noble. So we actually noble prismatic. What's the third card? I couldn't see what the third one was. It, it looked like a land. It looks like a fetch land to me. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Brandon also could pay noble life card. one more time. Yeah. yeah. You could draw two cards in a turn. Let's yeah, pull some library here in a minute. Always take with eight. with the no. I mean, it's. It, um, knowing that the shadow of Reality Smasher looms so large in this matchup, I would not pay yeah, four for any card other Skyclave. than exactly oh. Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, Skyclave on Winter Orb is pretty brutal here. Do you take Don't Winter give Orb it to you. you take I take Sylvan Library. library. Yeah. If, if it's me, I take Sylvan Library. Yeah, sense. every single time. That card's but Winter gross. Orb also, like, I don't have parity right now in Brandon's life. Sure. Uh, or, yeah, he's broken parity now. Oh, that spell too. Skyclave just has a two as a three mana two two is pretty good right it's now. Pretty good well, right spell, now yeah. What what is spell pierce still doing in this deck after sideboards? I mean That's seriously. Strange yeah. to me. That's a very good question. Trying to catch the early uh the early crucible version. Try early yeah. crucible. Oh, I got your turn one mox, like okay. And then yeah, sure. sometimes you draw it on turn nine and you sit there and well, you feel he, like he a didn't even have it on turn one. This, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. He's like it's, that is the only reason that you would conceivably play that card. Uh, on the play, I could see keeping it there. I don't know. That is maybe super Brandon sees aggressive. In, yeah, it could be something in Eric's list that we don't we don't see right now. But yeah, it does feel strange to me too. I mean, it, getting you said these two have, vaults could, but these I, two have played like before, right? Yeah, they played before. In so, two vaults. so okay, and so there there is a chance that he saw like Gideon of the Trials or something like that yeah. and trying to hedge that out with the spell Pierce. I yeah. still don't agree with it. All right, so Brandon's down to four. Sylvan Library is now turned off, other than as a as a, as a t extra top. Oh, and there's a thought knots here. That's that's game. Down to three. Yeah. Like what? What can you possibly rip here? There's no terminus, no verdict, right? Nope. Uh, I think we're gonna get it. For balance. No, uh, knowing Brandon, we are going does to he get have a shock land into okay. play untapped, and we are gonna find a way to kill it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're at, gonna at go this out point, on our own terms. Death or glory. You can. If, if he you can, that, he could have just paid the life off the soul right now. You can yeah. shock. Well, he can't pay it now. No, what you can do Not is anymore. shock, oh. crack the food, pay for for Sylvan. Ooh, yeah, that's good. I like that. I wonder if he knows that line. <laughs> <laughs> this he has is four mana. He has four mana. There's, there's, there's five mana. There's tons of cards he could draw. Yeah. For a turn. Yes. Yeah, but this is no. This is not a salvageable board yeah, position. This, this is. He's in a pretty bad spot. Yeah, that that thought knot here was brutal. Like, what are you gonna do? Get three fairy, bounce the thought knot, get thought knotted again, draw yeah. one card that is likely blank paper. Oh, he has a swords there. That allows him to answer the thought knot and draw a card. It's a redraw. Yeah, yeah. Go to one. Yep. Okay. But he still has the food up after that too, so he can draw or he can gain there. True. The question is, he's tucked that food so deep. Like, there's a very good chance that he is not paying attention to that. <laughs> yeah. People die with their food on the table all the time. Because food tokens are just generally so bad unless you're doing something else with them. Yeah. Like the Jund food lists. Precisely. Or the, the whatever oh, is, flavor is that... Is Council's Judgment? Yeah, it's a Council's Judgment. Jess Kaya for a while. Is, is that Council's Plus? No, he doesn't have the extra white mana, so he can't... Council's and Swords. Yeah. 
The council of judgment chooses. Okay. Aaron and we get to draw chose. a sword. Okay. Bet. Yep, we're drawing a sword. Okay. Uh, Eric wisely wisely chose to uh, to pick his own choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same choice. Do you remember that moment on Moto when this card came out where you couldn't see what your opponent chose and there was yep. a fun little shell game? Yeah. Once. Where I had to I would choose something and I would purposely choose the wrong thing so my yep. opponent would choose the right thing. We just stripped no. off of white. It was delightful. It was really So we, we have Noble, but that's basically that's that the is only, your only white source source. we have. But he's got the sword splashers in hand, right? So I mean you, yeah, we can we can oh, play magic. Is that your Narset? Because he gets a two two out of that deal. No, he doesn't have Narset. Teferi, maybe? That was a three two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which he can't cast because oh no, he can. He have, we have Mox Sapphire. And yeah, we have the noble, yeah. Mox Sapphire, and two, and two lands. lands. Yeah. So I mean you can you can plow that Skyclave and then play three fairy. No you, can't, can't. no, you can't. There's not. There's not the additional white, white source. The double white. You're yeah, right. He's double yeah. green right now. But he could plow the, plow the, the apparition and get a creature into play to go along with his, noble. You start getting those sweet, sweet exalted triggers. And then next turn, play to fairy. Okay, so he's gonna bounce. No. So that's interesting. That seems bad. It's an incredible way to get your Teferi sky claved. Uh, so he gives it gives the, him an extra dude, though. It does give him an extra dude. Yeah, there we but go. you get you get the get the actual token. You get the dude no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, that bouncing the bouncing the skyclave versus swording it is strange to me. Yeah, I I would uh, I would swords all day. Especially yeah, especially wants since extra card. Well, I could be. We did see what I, the top three were. That feels impatient to me, though, because it's yeah, not sure. like you can hold up the sword or anything like that, and it's not like Eric is trying to play a tricky instant speed game. He has, no. what, exactly Aven Mind Sensor, and yep. then nothing past that to play <laughs> yeah. that game with you? That sounds right. I mean, other than onboard tricks, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the onboard tricks, it's it's your responsibility as a player to play around those. That doesn't mean that I will. But no, I, not I appreciate a, Oh, and, and I would never claim that <laughs> I would either. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, Skyclave comes in, taking out the Teferi. Uh, I mean, he got his got a two for one there. I Ish. suppose, and he's gonna get a three three when he plows this. Right. Is that a treasure cruise? No. What's the what's the bottom? Nobody card drafted there? DC this time last year. That's is that Tanglewire at the bottom? Oh, I think it is. Yeah, it is a Tanglewire. God, Tanglewire. Yeah, this hey, is Gonzo, nothing. Hey Gonzo, thanks for the follow. Appreciate Yo, that. hey Gonzo. Yeah, Tanglewire is not great. No. It's a whole lot better when there's a winner with it. <laughs> True. He has oh. a Tangle Fire plus two islands, which is not. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's not. There's a mentor. Oh, wait, where did the mentor come from? That's a good card. That's in his hand. It's a Magic the Gathering card. The hell? That is. It's a very good one. He's so moved Noble back to the lands. <laughs> it's funny. I, I mean, feel like we swords here. I don't think we mentor. Or no, because we can mentor and then swords and get a token? Or is that just cute? Double white. Well, I mean, like, we can mentor this turn and then and next untap turn and Yeah. It feels scary to let that uh, that two damage come at you when you're at one life. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you're blocking with. Can you just not attack this turn, maybe? I mean, he has a 2-2 two -two token off the Skyclave. No! Never mind. He would rather get busy. Swords. Yeah. That's a 3-3 three -three attacker. What is happening right now? No, yeah, because it's exalted. Mana. The sword's the creature. There we go. And get a 3-3 three -three token. So he offered the trade, and then now is taking care of business. Okay. To get another uh, three, physician three. token. Yes. Yep. This one's untapped. Yep. Yep. Yes. Because we're dead to Reality Smasher here. Absolutely. Yeah. Brandon Fine. knows he can't beat You're, Reality You are dead to Reality Smasher no matter what here. Oh, yes. yeah, because Trample. Yep. Uh, <laughs> interestingly, he's not. Cause, or, yeah, he's not anymore, because now he can crack with food. Oh, True. Fascinating. Yeah. Again, I am. Oh no, he can't. We're stripping. Oh yes, he can because we still have. We still have <laughs> sapphire. sapphire. Yeah. I'm this... riveted to know whether he is cognizantly aware of that yeah, uh, yeah. food token's existence. This food is making this far more interesting to commentate, despite not yeah. being very relevant. In the Absolutely. Match. No. <laughs> oh, settle the wreckage. That's a good card. That's a fantastic draw if you had the yeah. second white mana to go with it. Yeah. Uh, true. Hey, there's a second white mana. There you go. You can't have both, right? He's he's yeah. clocking on one garden end. Yeah. I mean, he has five power now. I mean, er Eric's on a four-turn clock. I think he's but only swinging with four, though. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, hold it back so you can stay alive through a Reality Smasher. Yeah. I think you actually can only swing with three, because you have to hold 
Oh, you, you have, have to hold, hold three back the three three. three. In order to sack the food token. You're right. That's my understanding of it. Yeah, yeah. that gets you up to six. Yeah. Okay. Nope, we're swinging. No. Oh, wow. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Keep back uh, the two two. No. Because the two two can absorb two from the reality smash, you're taking three damage, you're gaining three off the food token. Yeah. And then you stay neutral. This is this is what I was saying earlier about the shadow of reality smasher. It's kind of like days in a weird way, like yeah. a hyper aggressive days, in yeah. that you just have to respect its existence yep. for the entire match. You know, people yeah. born before when you were born called it the force spike effect, but I oh, sure. days is the new modern version. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> modern if they, version if, for a card. If they, about 20 if years they printed member, that into which modern got cast? Oh, I'm wait, done. Which, Dismember? D- that is the member that just got cast wow. on the three three. This number is a super work. cool card. I really love I, I love the flexibility. Speaking of instant speed cards that interact with your opponent, there's one. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah. And in our five color deck, it's even better. People really played Force Spike? Uh, oh, not yeah. in this format, no. Well, just in Magic's history. Yes. People have Force Spike's incredibly good. I, yeah. I I mean you say that, but like we have mana type. I mean, plays that. Yeah. R- Randy Bueller won a Lord Pro Tour off of it and won the Hall of Fame off of it. Uh, Force Spike was like one of the primary cards to cast in Legends. I don't know. Yep. It was very good. <laughs> it yeah, was we a good were time t- for everyone that wasn't that was playing Force Spike. A bad time for everybody. Yes. Yeah, we Eric and I were having a good laugh about some of the cards in Legends earlier. We were looking at like the six and seven mana legendary yep. mana dorks. Yep, G- fantastically designed set. Yeah. Speaking of Randy Bueller, best known I think for the running the Vintage Super League. Yeah, the, the only reason I know who he is uh, directly was a, a, a descendant of. Shotgun Lotus, which is the inspiration of the Saint Lotus tournament. Yep. Oh, really? Shotgun Lotus is, is the thing that inspired the Super League. Okay. Yeah. Like Dwayne St. Arnold and uh, and Paul uh, Waitfield and all of them mm-hmm. uh, ran that tournament, which is the original Vintage of History draft. Yeah. And that's what created the Vintage Super League. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. So we've got a Tango Wire at four now. So obviously Crucible gets tapped down. You're just tapping down your basics, right? Yeah. I don't think you really care. Yeah. Yeah. Land, lands whatever. are not the way this game wins or loses. Yeah, I, I don't oh, know. Oh, wow. If, if I'm in Brandon's seat, Brandon I'm just... He won Woo! finals after we all thought we were We counted him out back. so hard. We counted him out. Unbelievable. So can we, can we talk One about month? this? Can One we talk month? about this? He said, "I'm. this is miserable. I'm not doing this again. And then won. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is wild. That is And the wild. tightest I have ever seen Brandon play. It, it by, was... by a wide margin. The amount of good I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, come over here. Sit down between Don't us. Sit. Yeah, get over here. We need to. We need to hear hear all about us. How are you feeling in this moment, sir? I uh, the the word. If there is only to be one, I cannot decide whether it is elated, euphoric, just. Amongst those two, I, you won the vintage history draft. Yeah. You're a Saint Lotus champion. That. It feel like I knew I was going to happen. Yeah, of course, of I knew, course. But, you know, of course, I, but naturally. honestly, I didn't. And like, I am clearly not the best Magic player. But like, I tonight can't, you are. But tonight yeah. I was. But like, I care so much about this format, and I enjoy it so much. And oh. you guys have had to put up with me for like five or six of these in a row, and uh, it just it feels so cool. Because, like, Eric is obviously an insanely good Magic player. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody else I played against tonight is insanely good. And so... By merit of us not having played. You know, it's just <laughs> one of those things where, like, if you're playing in the NFL and you keep talking about how great everyone is around you, you might be with them. Yeah. Right? Uh, Brandon, you did an amazing job tonight. You played incredibly tight. You did a bunch of stuff that I honestly had no expectation that oh. you'd be able to pull off. And yeah. you did it, and it was really great. I have. I can't I have two believe questions. I just won that game. <laughs> yeah, I, I have two questions for you. Yeah. Were you consciously aware of that food token sitting on your board for that whole thing? Because it got tucked into, tucked into the Silver yeah. Library. We weren't sure you were paying attention to it. Yeah. You were. You were like I factoring tr- that in the I whole was, time. I was trying not to alert Eric to the fact that I knew that a Reality Smasher would not put me. At, good. At good. 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 Nice. Good. Yeah, I um, I'm a, a frequent practitioner of the cast brazen borrower. Hope my opponent doesn't read it. Plan. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, they do every single time. Yeah. But okay, so that's good. And then I have to know about the winter orb. It felt like playing a winter orb into a mana denial deck that was currently denying your mana was a wild move. I. But here we are. I uh, I talked it over with uh, a friend of mine, my friend Elliot. Okay. And 
Uh, shout out to Elliot who always helps me out when I prepare for these things and he tells me my ideas are stupid. I'm like, well, I have to meme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and today he said, no, this is a good idea. Wait, so when is he going to come play? Uh, well, he lives in Boston. He's on, okay. He's Planes on, exist. Yeah. Sure. I, I would, if, listen, if, if as my ticket from the, you know, my, my return, whatever, if I can vouch for Elliot in any way, yeah. uh, he's a tremendous magic player and, yeah. uh, yeah, you but, better believe if I get another invite, I'm coming down from Michigan. I'll clear my schedule, oh, whatever. <laughs> I am here. Excellent. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, just, I'm Brandon, so stoked. We know you're going to be here next time. Yeah. Because first and second place. Get an yeah. invite back for the next tournament. Yeah, you're, you're never getting rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm also excited. You're repping Carly Ryan Jepsen. Yeah. Uh, blasting our music this whole day. It's been, it's yeah. been really carrying the whole yeah. tournament. Well, see... Chats, uh, chats, giving you shout outs. Uh, it's just the people's champion, really. I'm, I'm. Th- like this does actually mean like a huge amount. To yeah, me. yeah. So uh, I, you've come out on top of the most complicated magic format I've seen in my entire life. That 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 yes, that does feel great. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited to get this whiskey. Uh, oh, I'm, is that what are you first picking? This is just I'm choice. I'm picking Eric's okay. because the, okay. the Japanese whiskey is just incredible. Um, Eric was telling me about this whiskey. It's it's a whiskey that is uh, it's taken from Japan, put into oak casks, and then sailed around the South China Sea so that it gets uh, so it gets seawater splashed up into it. Is it Jefferson's Ocean? No, they have a bar- they have a brand of that too. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's the only bourbon I've ever given my mother that she hasn't hated. So because this is apparently like absorbing the, yeah. the seawater, yeah, the seawater like leaches something. through. Yeah, you, it it is better, a genuinely unique experience. You better believe that. It least half of that is going to be gone by tomorrow. I, <laughs> uh, I, gotta, uh, I gotta give shout outs to Sam who came here and yep. joined me for the entire day. My girlfriend, um, she's awesome. She told me she uh, want to play in the next one. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, I can try to train her up. I we, she ha- she didn't learn how to play Magic until within the last like five or six weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's a I would say um, it's a pretty short ramp up to vintage. Or- amount to catch uh, up on. No, what? It's, a, it's baby steps. You get yeah. your free intro deck from the store. You buy, like, a challenger deck, right? And then you do the vintage rotisserie draft. That's how that works. That's roughly the three steps. In, yeah. In perhaps one of the cutest things I've ever seen in Magic, uh, when we were, like, getting our decks ready, it was like, oh, you know, we got some good cards. So we'll put them in sleeves. It's just, you know, the standard way to do it. And I come back, and all of the sleeves are different. She's like, it's a pretty rainbow. And I'm like, that is adorable, and that is not, not turning okay. illegal. Get it out of here. I love it. Yep. Also, I really appreciate the Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo MD uh, tokens we were able to use today. Yep. Uh, your TikTok, we've already shouted it out on stream, and I'm sure you're going to have lots of more followers. But. Yep. Yeah, the, the recent content is not what I will be putting out, people. <laughs> just, I've been, it's it's been kind of a little bit mopey. But yep. The very opposite end of the... I can't use this accessory spectrum. Yeah. My friends who do not play magic but do love tormenting me for their mm-hmm. personal sport got me one of those Ahegao play mats. Ooh. And I had to very gently say that I appreciated it and not say, this is actually an unsportsmanlike conduct minor and I can't play with this Correct. thing. Yes. It's, so hard, it, it's hard to break it. It's, through, it's my desk mat at home. I use it yeah. as like a mouse pad so whenever I take selfies it's in there. But I... They can never know the extent to which that can't see the light of day. Well, it's good you didn't tell anybody on public stream or anything. Yeah. So. No, not at all. Uh, yeah, I'm let sh- you go pick your bottle. I, though. Yeah, go yeah, nuts. Uh, you actually are going to take home three bottles today because of a, a, a prize split that ended up happening, where you yeah. agreed to give away one of them to a, a, a split down in fourth position. Like, so. the, there's three, four, and threes. Yes. And the idea that like one of them wouldn't be walking away with anything. That it, that's got to feel like super yeah. poopy because right. it's like it's so tight. Like we had you and I have both been in those tiebreaker spots. Yeah, and they always suck, and it, it's awful every I time. Like yeah. I I don't need four bottles of liquor. I like, <laughs> honestly like just, just win, like just winning and like you know I don't know, getting the first place. Whatever it doesn't really it's matter, huge. but like it's so cool. So uh, I'm gonna it's go. Great, it's great to have. I'm one gonna of go grab it. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. Go do it and right. come back here with your bottles so we can uh, we can close it out. But right, we'll do. Uh, anybody want to hop over here? Absolutely. All right. Set that down. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what actually ends up happening uh, as mm-hmm. far as the picks. But it is, it's really exciting to see Brandon win. He's, he's been trying uh, he's been trying kind of like half-heartedly for a long time. Okay. So seeing him actually like pull the trigger, buckle down, and uh, do 
do the thing that's really hard to do is really cool to see. Yeah, I, I think I've gotten my I've gotten my taste of what playing a meme deck feels like. Yeah. It feels bad. <laughs> so I'm a I'm gonna buckle down so if I get that second invite I have something properly ready to go. I was thinking about trying to put Pox together. That seems like it'd be pretty easy to do. So I mean I could wax poetic about my previous times playing. Okay. Uh, in VRD one I took second place and I should have taken first, but I made a bad decision and audibled into red. Okay. Anyway, uh, it was on a, it was on like a Pakula style uh black green not pox but as about as close as you can get okay so you're playing like hateful the rock yeah yeah Yeah, i mean it's it's like low curve though i think my highest card was four cost and okay my average cmc for non-lands was something like one and a half to two the determining pox question is are you on sinkhole yes okay Okay, great that's pox enough for me yep uh, land denial, mana denial. It's just like d- denial of things, but don't bo- don't go so deep that you're casting small pox. Right. Well, and, and you're not playing like cursed scroll. No. That's no. that's how you know you've fully gone. I was joking with uh, Dan Zelinsky about this because yep. I was uh, sleeping. Uh, up. Stephen, yes. Uh, Brandon got it uh, off of a really like he was at one life for what six turns in a row, and an dodging reality long smashers. Time. Yeah. Like he was like holding back toughness in order to be able to crack his uh, food token. It was a wild finals. You need to go back and rewatch that one. Uh, it, it was one of the most interesting finals I could imagine. But so, I was talking to Zelensky about this, where I was building the Shark Still Legacy deck, uh-huh. and I was putting... I took my Disenchant out of sleeves and put in Seal of Cleansing. Oh, okay. Because it, it makes sense in that deck, because I'm playing Restore... or um, whatever that card is called, Refurbish. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can reanimate them and all that. Yeah, and I play, got Hall of Healing Generosity... But that card is awful. Yes. And there comes this moment when you're deck building, and you look at a, you have to have this moment with yourself where you look at the card and you go, "Am I really playing this?" Yeah. Like contextually, it's the right decision. But if you've put yourself in that context, you probably screwed up like four or five steps ago. And that's what cursed scroll is for Pox players. I played a Goblin Charbelcher for a long time, and Ooh. the entire deck is that. Right? There's no cards that are good. There's not no, ritual. Not if you're playing not the green black version. Right. And then you're playing a worse version of the deck. Yeah. Well, and I. Can, Lion's Eye Diamond's a pretty good card. Is it, though? It, it, even Storm doesn't like playing that card. It just happens to work in the deck. Um, I mean, I guess. I, I don't have much... All of my all of my Storm experience is playing Blue Red Storm and Mono. It's a crushingly boring play oh, experience. We have Jason tapping in here. Jason, are, are they in the middle of drafting right now? They they have finished their draft. Okay. Ooh, is, is it visible? Can you have them put it underneath the camera? Yes. Okay. Right. Mostly we have a whole bunch of cards scattered Splendid here. housekeeping here. Yep. Uh... I'm looking forward to spending all of tomorrow so resorting this, this all of our is Brandon. This is Brandon's prizes. Okay. okay. They're going under the camera right now. Very exciting. We're moving cards. It's a whole group of basics. Yeah, he picked a bunch of basics. Which is a strange choice. Probably. Who the, who would be playing Maelstrom Pulse? Nobody tonight. There wasn't okay. one. But, uh, I do like Maelstrom Pulse. So I just picked the wrong card. Okay, so that's a bottle of bourbon whiskey from my hometown. Okay, and then the Japanese one that they had the first pick. Yep. Uh, and Elijah Craig. Oh, so he's just taking all of the bourbon. No, that he is. He did get the that's a, Okay, okay. So, okay, so oh, there, there's the the okay, Freeman. So Eric grabbed the Michigan Rye. Okay. And and yeah, so Brandon took the uh, the two bottles, and then also the twelve pack of homemade salsa. So those are twelve uh, half pints of salsa that Kevin Freeman made. So. I've heard that each batch of that took 24 hours to make. We can't we can't see Eric's other bottle. Can we? There we go. They got us. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. oh and the Glenmore or whatever. So yeah. those, yep. those are Eric's now that just got put on top. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So, yeah, so a bottle of scotch uh, for Eric's, uh, the cookie bars, and another uh, another bottle there. So this is great. Thank you everyone for coming in. Uh, it's been... 11 hours and 22 minutes, which feels like a right around the time that a stream is supposed to run. Yes. Eric, a- any uh, good for self-respecting critical. stream. Thank you. Here, what, no, why don't we have Let Eric me, hop in here a minute and, and talk about uh, taking second place in a vintage right. history draft. Uh, Mark, I'm going to head out. All right, thank Steve, you so much, Kyle. I appreciate it. Yeah. Kill me. Mine is safe. Draft safe. Yeah, safe. Uh, do, you, do you need... I, have, uh, I can't smoke. I have some... Like, I'll, migraine I'll be good. I'm only like 10 minutes away. Okay, draft safe. Yeah. So, Eric. Yes. You came in here and said, I'm going to have a good time. I yeah. commentate. I guess I'll, like, try to get a positive record. Yeah. You were playing in finals. Yeah. That's not the same thing. It's different. Yeah. No, I, um... You also started off with, like, 
never losing a match. I 306 would the first three matches. I was <laughs> extremely fortunate. Extremely fortunate. I drew very well. My opponents drew very poorly. Yep. Um, I lost to Mason. Um, Naturally. Uh, Mason played very well. Uh, I played okay. <laughs> uh, I, was un- I would say I was unfortunate in that match. I think Brandon's deck... Just absolutely beats the hell out of mine. See, I had you picked as the winner for that match. I, you'd think that. Yeah. Looking at the decks, you'd Brent's absolutely. Like you could put pressure on. You can stop him from doing his right. thing. Right. But the thing about the El Terrazi deck is that unless I get one of those explosive hands, right? Yeah. Unless I'm in full on ancient tomb mode, or or El Terrazi Temple, right? Which you've got up here on the screen. I am scrapping. Right? I am absolutely scrapped, and I need every little bit of edge I get out of every single card. And I need... Once he sticks one of his powerful Planeswalkers, which he did with terrifying regularity, yeah. right? He has yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. he has a lot. He's like, got three lot. Fairy, Oko, yeah. and, Nis- or, and Elspeth are all three. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. El- well, Elspeth was out of the board, but Nissa, yeah. three Fairy, and Oko in the main. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So he's incredibly consistent. Then you had Elspeth out of the board, and that's just... Backbreaking. And Dovin's no slouch against yeah. my 10 artifacts yeah. either. And yeah. like if I want to try to prismatic ending something, well, it's a little, it's not as hard. But if I if I want to cast my other instance, like it's, that's more frustrating. Um, like, and it's hard for me to justify in that matchup mulliganing super, like turbo mulliganing to, yeah. A, yeah. to a soul soul ring land. Um, because one of the ways that his deck defeats me is just burying me in card advantage. Right, and so yeah. I can mull the six, but I can't mull the five. Yeah. No. That's yeah. not realistic. Uh, unless you're smashing in with a, like a thought not seer on turn two or three. Like, right. Yeah. It's just and you'll notice happening. that so so a lot of what happened in my first three matches was just like, you know, turn three reality smashers and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And that simply didn't happen like you you didn't really see that on camera for me, right? Yeah. There one of the I, I think that the Eldrazi and Taxes deck is pretty fantastic. It's it's equipped to deal with a lot of things. I think there were... I mean, I, I made mistakes I could talk about for hours, but I was underprepared for Brandon's deck, and I paid for it, right? Sure. I was not prepared. I did not have good answers for his threats, and that was what sunk me, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I really don't feel like I lost anything, no. right? Like, I got to play... You went to Disney World. All day. I went to Disney World yeah. all day. I sat around, and I, 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 I enjoyed some beers, and I talked to friends, and I watched Brandon, someone who I have rooted for from yes. this seat many yeah. times. I got the best seat in the house to watch him <laughs> win a VRD. Yeah. It, it was, watch, you, need, you need to watch his post game. He was elated. Oh, yeah. I absolutely will. But, yeah. like, I don't, like, you didn't see the look on his face. Yeah, you didn't see the look yeah. on his face when I conceded. Yeah, I saw the look on his face when I conceded. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna forget that. Yeah, the I saw I saw my friend so so happy. Yeah, <laughs> the one thing I'm gonna point out is your brilliance in first round picking an off color mox so that you could cast prismatic ending for three. Yeah, uh, it really just like it was incredible. Doing that 13 hours before you needed to make the play. Yeah, I just yeah. I, I bow to your excellence. We're not even play. we're not even going to talk about Phyrexian metamorph on grindstone. Yes. Excuse no, me, that was Excuse incredible. Yes. That Literally, was such a good play. The absolute best play of my entire human life, and it will not be eclipsed. That moment was the moment I I, I couldn't I kept like babbling about. That is the most VRD play in the world. It could never happen in another format. There's no format. No, where never that would ever occur. happen. No. Uh, it was great. Uh, yes, uh, Nick Mason and Cody's match finally ended. <laughs> Finals were over. Eric uh, Eric took second place I overall. Did. You made some good picks in the in, in your in your bottles. I and feel very good about that. It was just a wonderful time. I'm looking forward to doing this again. Yeah. The next VRD is going to be on January 8th. Mm-hmm. So hopefully the the rest of y'all that are still here can block out of your calendar. Uh, we need to figure out the lineup still, but January 8th, uh, we're going to have a couple months to figure out what's going on for the next one. But Thank you all for joining. This was delightful. Yeah. I'm Mark Kaderberg. I'm Eric Levine, for some reason. Jason Thurston. <laughs> and we are the best ever death metal band out of death. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks all for tuning in and staying with us for this whole time, and it's been a delight. We'll sign off after 12 hours.